Welcome to the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast. If you, you like, like a lot, lot of wrestling on your YouTube, Matthew's Jordan. dead. No, no, he's Come not. on. He's in bloody Germany, he's isn't he? He's excited to be in <laughs> Uberhausen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bobby Guns and Gunter. Yeah, and Hayden Vancey Wansen. <laughs> uh, Matthew's away. Matthew is over in Germany for, is it 16 karat gold or is it the Tag League? I think it's 16, 16 karat gold, yeah. yeah. Um, hope he's having a good time and all that. Um, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. So I did hear well, he was worried was about the transport with, strikes. Yeah, transport strikes and everything on the way there. Yeah. So if he can get there, he's going to have a great time. Hopefully. Anyway, I'm joined by Ross and also Sam Driver stepping in as well. It's been a while, lads, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> I don't know anymore. <laughs> Sorry, Joe. I mean, that was when I was clapping there. He just turned it down very <laughs> slightly. Right. Um, yeah, it's been a while. Sam has been yeah. thrown in the deep end slightly. He's had a lot of wrestling to catch up on. Oh, yeah. It's also been a pay per view week. Don't worry if you've not seen quite everything. I've seen seen almost everything mm-hmm. so i i it's just been a lot to like i'm trying to keep it all in my brain yeah. and not let any of it dissipate well don't worry if it um if any of it slips out because me and ross are experts <laughs> i bring a laptop i can't remember it all <laughs> no, he doesn't, no, he, it's he impossible. i was gonna make notes and then i was like halfway through the third or fourth show and i was like there's no point making notes now is there oh there's You'll every point right. yeah um how are we doing how are you ross fine mm-hmm. nothing to report absolutely fine sam yeah i'm all right yeah nothing to report, yeah, nothing to report. Fine. joel <laughs> Yeah, fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> She's got, got a mic now. Shut up, Joel. <laughs> you've missed this. I, I've missed this. Since, side since it, the yeah. last time you've been here, Joel is he's like the it's, it's he's like the 2014 Daniel Bryan. Right. His popularity's right. just skyrocketed. Okay. And the viewership love him. Well, I mean, it's it's only a, a positive thing. Maybe we should just move him to this side. And, and well, I'd love if I could it. sit where yeah. you are, Joel, <laughs> four hours, that'd be lovely. It is nice. Over here. I don't know how he pays attention for the full for the full length of the podcast. Right, let's jump in with um, the wrestling news. Mm. A lot of stuff we often talk about we cover in this week in wrestling, but I thought this particular story, even though it did take place on one of the shows, was too big to save for this week in wrestling. We've got to talk about it now. Uh, it seems as though all signs point to the WrestleMania night one main event being The Rock and Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins. We'll talk about the segment where the challenge was thrown out on SmackDown in a bit, but um, if the faces win, the bloodline are banned from ringside for the main event of night two, but if the heels win, what is it? Bloodline rules. Bloodline rules. <laughs> Which means there are no Probably rules. Are yeah. no rules. <laughs> um, that's a that's what we kind of that's what everyone suspected, I think, that this yeah. would be the match. They'll get beat on night one, won't they? Yeah. The baby faces and then have their backs against the wall. It's not really much of a stipulation to say Bloodline isn't allowed at ringside because we've had that a hundred times and they always find a way to ringside. True. So I think it's... They just wear a hoodie. Yeah. And that, that lets them... To get away with it. Um, Where's the Gronk security woman? That's We just need her. Oh, remember her. The ring. What was she called? Like Shirley or something? <laughs> she was Emma? Brilliant. Jane. Six foot name. seven. She didn't care. She was in his way. Um, yeah, it seems like everybody sort of suspected this would mm. be... Th- Who takes the pinfall? If, if the faces do lose. Rollins, there was a little bit on the Raw segment we'll talk about later where Roll, they had the two shot. So Rollins was mm. behind Cody when mm-hmm. he was like um, addressing the camera and Rollins just looked a bit peeved because Cody changed the subject without committing. But then he committed, but he changed the subject first. Do you not think that means that Cody's more likely to take the <laughs> Rollins could turn on him. I don't know, and Rollins did that, didn't he? He was like, what? Dwayne's been doing that, hasn't he? Been thrown up oh, the air. Oh, they're part of a secret. I, I don't know how stable. that makes sense, Rollins and Rock being in cahoots. No. But the he did that was like Meh. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm raw. laughs> um they could they could do a bit of a wrestlemania 10 mm. where cody loses the first match he takes the pinfall and then the hero- then his victory is yet more heroic it'd be the thing that people are completely like least expected oh, i think for cody oh, to take no, it like but be, I, yeah. I think if you, if you have seth like i guess in a way with what he says uh, which we'll get on to in a bit uh, but in the when he was saying, like, I'm always, I'm already kind of tied to this story anyway. Mm-hmm. It's not just your story that needs to end. So he could, I guess, be the sacrificial lamb for Roman to put down. But Maybe. I, mm-hmm. It's a strange one. It is a strange one. It, it opens up a lot of different possibilities. I think we can all agree that it's a big, it's a big main event. Oh, it's, it's a big. juicy. Oh, yeah. Like several big boys. And we don't know which way the big boys are going to go. <laughs> I feel slightly bad for... Presumably Becky Lynch and Ronda, uh, Ronda Rousey, Rhea Ripley, Jack. Come on. Come on. And Liv Morgan. She's going to get thrown in there now after all, do you not think? 
Oh, I don't know. Potentially. Oh, but there's the still scene. some time for shenanigans. Mm. But, yeah. Mm. I think she might be a post-Mania feud. Feud one. Yeah. Mm. I will say this has been the best build to a WrestleMania for many a year. Yes. Many a year. I would agree. But at the same time, it doesn't always correlate. WrestleMania no. 30, bad build, good show. Actually, the build turned out all right in the end. WrestleMania 31, bad build, really good show. Yeah. <sighs> I think a good build gives it more of a chance, though. Yes. Mm. Um, in other news, uh, Ethan Renner of Figure Four Weekly Online has written, according to an SEC filing from Monday, Vince McMahon is selling 5.36 million shares of TKO stock in a transaction being handled by Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. Uh, McMahon is expected to pocket more than f- $400 million from the sale. TKO stock closed on Monday at $81.67 a share. Uh, while the sale represents approximately 25% of the stock McMahon still owns in TKO, Dave Meltzer reported in Monday's daily update that Vince will still own roughly 8.3% of the company. Um, the interesting part of this story is what the TKO president, Mark Shapiro, said afterwards, because he was asked about this at the recent Morgan Stanley conference, and is quoted as saying... <clears throat> We did not participate in the recent sale on Vince McMahon's load that he dropped off. This is now his second time. He's gone from 28 million shares to 15 million shares. He now roughly has 8.5%. We are not in conversation with him. We don't talk to him. We don't know his motive, his plan, his timeline. What, if any, he doesn't consult with us. He doesn't work for the company. He doesn't work at the company. He doesn't come into the offices. He's not coming back to the company. (laughs) I've got a feeling Vince might not be going back. He's a bit, of a, a bit of a full stop, isn't it? <laughs> he really wanted to make that clear, though, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. As you would do with the allegations uh-huh. that are still out there. Mm. Uh, still ongoing, obviously, but this is the second load that Vince McMahon has sold fairly recently. Me and Tom were on the news on Tuesday. He sold 700 millions worth. I forget how long ago it was, but it mm. wasn't too long ago. So, so he's taken over month. a billion now. Yeah, over a billion in his pocket. I assume he's going to have to spend a fair chunk of change on that on legal things. Which yeah, is, is Jerry McDevitt representing him as well? Because I think he was retiring. He wasn't came he? out of retirement, didn't he, for him, for right. something. I can't right. remember what it was now, okay. but that was a year or two But ago. either way, yeah, his, his legal fees are going to be astronomical, at even a base level, but it, it's still sickening to see him pocket that much money. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, but, uh, well... Never mind. But that seemed pretty newsworthy. Um, in brighter news for fans of Paul Heyman, he's been officially announced as the first inductee into this year's Hall of Fame class. It's deserved. If you get the silly yeah. up in Philly as well, it's in Philly. Uh, who, who was it who said that first? <laughs> I can't remember. Roman? No. It could be a babyface Roman. That sounds like a very 90s thing. We're getting silly, silly up in Philly. Philly. I think it was... Make him say ho! I think it was the big dog. I think it was babyface Roman Reigns. It's it's tater tot level, isn't it? It's better than tater. Yeah. I like silly oh. up in Philly. <laughs> there was one this week that was proper. Oh, it was Rollins. It was diarrhea. Diarrhea. Right? Yeah. That was oh. yeah. Um, More on that later though. Who did, he was trying to get a diarrhea chant going. He got oh, it going. It was, he God. did. He got it yeah. going. He got it running. Got it running. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> who inducts Paul? Pa. Sandman. An only Sandman. It no. could be a lot of people. Tommy there, Dreamer. Yeah. We'll be there, <laughs> locked and loaded, ready with a <laughs> wonderful speech. <laughs> Get Paul in. I, mm, who, who could be many people? There's so many different phases of his career. Right? It could be like, Punk. He's a Paul Heyman guy. Yeah, yeah. it could Ryback. be Ryback. Ryback, <laughs> Curtis Cesaro could Curtis come Axel. back. Yeah. yeah, get the whole lads back together. The Dangerous Alliance, get them in there. Yeah, yeah. there's a little. What Michael Cole was saying on Raw this week made me feel he might do it just as a safer option, right? Because he was saying that the right at the start of SmackDown it was uh, Cole and Taz. Paul mm. Heyman would drill them. I think he used the word um, mm. on their commentary skills. So. Mm-hmm. Taker was probably the first real Heyman guy, I guess. If you go back to like ninety two, was he? Mean yeah, Mark. He was, yeah. he was Mean Mark Callis oh, of the Dangerous right. Alliance. Yeah. And that. He's one of them. Um, but, I wonder if I, I kind of miss the. I don't know if this is a, a. I'm in the minority here, but I miss the old the old Hall of Fame in the hall, not in the ring. I thought you were gonna say I miss I miss the ponytail, and I was about to be like I me too. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the big phone. Yeah. Um, no, I miss the. I don't really like it in the ring. You know, the novelty's worn off fast for me. It's a bit weird, but it feels right to do it in the ring. I, I guess, guess so. it's it's just it's odd. But I guess it, it saves them as well because then they've already got the room set up for wrestling, yeah. right? You, you just turn all the chairs. We didn't go. I don't know if you. you I definitely did. Went to I the did Hall one on where it was the stage. It was the uh, Cornette went in. I've and, never been in the Hall of Fame, no. But mm. it was it was good. But I I don't think I could attend one in person every year. I could maybe do it if I was going to Mania every year. I'd maybe do it every three or four years. Right. Because okay. it was just a lot. It yeah. was So much. But I think to put it in the ring, it does feel a little bit kind of. Yeah. Now, I think it's for it? length as well, isn't it? Because they do it straight after a SmackDown recording. Mm. Yeah. So when Hillbilly Jim walks out and tries <laughs> to take seven hours, he just can't do that anymore. <laughs> that was Beth Phoenix. <laughs> Beth Phoenix was the one where I I, I remember she just wouldn't wrap up, and I was just like. Mm. 
That's a be like, fan. Being yeah, like 50 on. minutes. And I'm just going, and then she's like, and of course, and out walked Edge. And I was like, oh, they've yeah, got like yeah. another, we've got another like 10, 15 minutes of this now. I guarantee Edge wrote the entirety of that thing. <laughs> Beth, why don't you say this soliloquy <laughs> in the cabin on the mountain in the snow? Um, also, uh, Haku has been rumored as yes. another possible inductee. Dave Meltzer, I believe, said that he'd heard those rumors, <coughs> but he wasn't actually certain if they were true or not. Um, he'd be a good one. They want to be true yeah. now, otherwise he's going to rock up and just declare himself anyway. Yeah, just pull your teeth out. Yeah. We were all in the same hotel as Haku in Las hmm. Vegas. Not to flex on anyone. <laughs> <laughs> in the and, same room. You know, <laughs> <laughs> just walking. Do you remember those lovely fire pits outside or yes. whatever? And I remember him just sort of walking around there, looking like a dad on holiday. And he seemed like a lovely man. And all of a sudden he went like that, and it just flames appeared. It was incredible. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> I wasn't scared of him after that. <laughs> oh, he's just a nice bloke, isn't he? It was odd just seeing like it'd be like, oh, it's just the Rock and Roll Express, or just sat around having a natter. And yeah, we're like, what? what, you you mean? what? <laughs> yeah, it was we're crazy. just trying to like eat um, breakfast. Yeah, Haku's deserved to be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Had the run initially with Harley Race and what that... Like me and mm. Tom were saying the other day, it's a shame that most of the people who associate with him in the WWE sense of his career aren't around anymore. So mm. maybe Tamatonga, there were the, the rumours he was going over to the World Wrestling Entertainments, wasn't there? Yes, there's been a bit of a development. I think if he is signing with them, apparently it's not going to become clear until after WrestleMania. So it's not going to be like a big... He could do the Hall of Fame, though. I think with Kishi? with with oh, Rikishi might be a good yeah. show. I, I think that just with him generally being like the most feared man in wrestling, right? It's, it's such an Induct easy himself. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's it's like a it's a, it's a very easy entertaining uh, induction, isn't yeah. it? And every Hall of Fame needs a couple of inductions that are like you know spirited and and fun to and engaging to listen yeah. to. After the recent footage of him reacting to the Shockmasters, did oh, you could yeah. get him to? I can't him. believe he didn't. He'd never seen it. <laughs> no, because wrestlers don't remember wrestling as much as us freaks do yeah they just they just i got to wear that helmet for real did you yeah like the actual in one London? yeah couldn't see a thing out of it i don't know how he it, well he didn't no <laughs> but they they drilled holes into it and apparently the glitter from the paint then went in his eyes and he was like guys i can't like keep should he not have taken it off tiny, before they drilled tiny, the holes <laughs> tiny, <shot> little, <laughs> <laughs> tiny little holes to see out of and he's like so they came up with a plan to get rid of the glitter getting in my eyes and it was to stick uh women's tights over the holes and he's like now that makes the holes unsee throughable yeah. so now it's just it's it's aerated but I'm just as blind as I was and then he goes through but oh, there's a chip it. on the mask where it hits the floor and everything it's the real one yeah. it's one of one wow yeah. that's amazing and he's still got it um, ah in other news earlier this week Fightful reported that Sammy Guevara has again been suspended from AEW uh, he's been in trouble twice once for offensive comments he made before he ever signed with AEW that then emerged mm. uh, and the other time was for this backstage altercation with Andrade that was reported um, now he's been suspended I think for 30 days following the match with Jeff Hardy at the February 14th Rampage tapings uh, and then in a detail that was added by Meltzer apparently it's because he was th there was the was it a shooting star press you need Jeff in the you head you need him in the head by accident yeah. and then he was told apparently to just pin him but he hit the uh, GTH first. Going against con concussion protocol. Got to yeah. get you S word in, brother. Wow. Unless someone's in. concussed on the other side of the ring. Yeah. I it's... was saying this with Tom on the news, and I just I was sort of playing devil's advocate, really, because, it, yeah, obviously he should have just done what they said, but it's not on him to stop the match. No, it's not, but I think it goes back to what we're told about wrestling from wrestlers when you hear them talk a lot. It's, it's always about protecting your opponent and, mm. and going through that. So I guess in an instance like this, maybe that kind of flies in the face of it's a little bit. It's nearly the end of the match anyway. Yeah. He'll just pin him and we'll get out of it. Yeah, I guess so. But um, yeah, that's what's going on with Sammy Guevara at the moment. And uh, in other AEW news, Santana is uh, also gone from AEW, according mm. to Fightful Select. Uh, he's been removed from the official roster page and has been active elsewhere in the North American wrestling scene uh, and hasn't apparently been backstage at an AEW show in months. I don't know if that'll ever come to light, whatever's happened no, there. No, it, it's bizarre, isn't it? It just mm. feels like it, it's it's something when we're likely going to hear about way, 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 way down the road, but it just feels like as a company to lose him, it, it's he's a great talent. They never really explained the breakup between him and Ortiz. No, it Conan just seemed to, to come to why. blows. We need Conan well, Yeah, because Conan was the one who put the news out there saying they don't get along. He just, Ortiz, the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just was there just saying they don't get along and it never got elaborated on, mm. did it? Sven? But it is, especially after that first year of them being in the company, how they didn't get a tag team title ring was no, a bit of a shame. Insane, yeah. wasn't it? Um, and I've not written it down, uh, but there is serious news to end on as well because a former Tough Enough competitor by the name of Daniel Rodimer is a suspect in a murder case, which is insane. I don't know what, how much we can really elaborate on it because it's all it's ongoing. He's a wanted guess, man, isn't he? In, yeah, is it in Florida? In yeah. Vegas, I think. Vegas. Um, he's meant to be running for office of some description there. 
it's a crazy story. So yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, there's not that many details out there at the minute, but apparently the victim uh, was someone who'd come out of jail and had been wrongfully in prison before and had become a campaigner for wrongful incarcerations. Making oh, a God. murderous season four, well, three. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like it's, um, yeah it's mad. It's the second so, one, isn't it? Fairly recent times mm -hmm. after Billy, what's his Billy Jack Haynes. Billy Jack Haynes, that's yeah. the one. Yeah. So that's bad news there. Matthew normally ends on a light one. Um, hey, it's not been wrestling this God. week. It's quite funny. Oh, I like. <laughs> oh, I've got some news. I've got some news about Joel. What happened on Valentine's Day, Joel? Oh! <laughs> That's a big remember. development. You told me when you said it with the news the other day. <gasps> what did I say? Who happened, what happened on Valentine's oh Day, Joel? God. Come on, Joel. <laughs> Relating to this very podcast, Joel. Uh, <laughs> Rebecca messaged me on Twitter. Oh! Hey! Hey! Oh! Rebecca's Joel's admirer. <laughs> Yeah, she emailed him once. Okay. Yeah. And what did you do, yeah. Joel? Uh, <laughs> oh, no. I just, that was sinister. <laughs> I, just, I just liked it. He's oh, all bashful. I just liked it. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> there you go. There's the light on. That is the end of the news. <laughs> thank you, Ross. The flame is not going out. <laughs> yeah. And thank you, Rebecca. As and well. Thank you, Rebecca. Yeah. Thanks, Rebecca. Everybody get excited for the Cultaholic Hall of Fame. It's time for everyone's favorite segment, the Hall of Fame. I wasn't here last week, um, so this is a mystery to me, but the results are in third place, this got to be Tom Campbell. Alex Booth's food intolerance test, 11%. Alex Booth is his fiance. Yes, I believe she can only, what was it? She can only eat horse and pigeon. She has wait. intolerance to like everything. What kind, oh right, that made it sound like they are often feasting upon <laughs> horse and pigeon. We were saying if you go to Iceland or Tesco, they used to do the ready meals with horse meat, didn't they? That came out when I was at oh, Tesco burgers, yeah, yeah I remember yeah, that. Yeah. Tasty. If the horses are dying in a natural way, just put them in a burger, who cares? <laughs> but that's the, that's the problem is you can't, when the, the horse is old. It, it, the meat's not good enough, I guess. Stringy. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I've never eaten that. Would in, there. Um, in second place, the return of lemon Coca-Cola after 18 long years, 13%. That was mine, yeah. Um, I, well, I would agree with that. I feel like that's been a thing. Only available in Waitrose, though. I really? had to step inside of a wait, the one on Osborne Road in Jasmine. They do the, they do the, uh, like the lime one. I've seen that. Oh, yeah, like, it's Pepsi yeah. Max. This is like Coca-Cola. Oh, really? Yeah. Ooh. The lime one just tastes like Drinking, just nights out, just like you know what I mean. <laughs> it's got that just, that, that, just that. that vibe to it. But the lemon one, I would fully agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, Delicious. it used to be like oh four. I remember the Euros around there. That was when it was at its pump, wow. and then it's it like went when away. Vanilla first came in oh, and that yeah. as well. Just, oh, man. great days, yeah. the glory days of soft drinks. The vanilla one, Panda Pop was still a thing. The vanilla oh. one's back, but only in like the Z Coke Zero vanilla. Coke yeah. Zero can go to hell as far as I I'm think concerned. It, it's all we're going to see in eventually will be zero. All really? together because they're just going to tax and tax and tax sugar, aren't they? That is true. So stockpile your coke now, build a bunker for it so it survives. You know, any coming. not like Tom Campbell though, not that kind of coke bunker. Bloody hell! <laughs> <laughs> oh dearie, dearie me! Oh, and Matthew went the cheap route. He did. I I didn't realize how big a news this this story oh, this was. It's been inescapable. It's gone global. Uh, in first place. The Willy Wonka Glasgow experience. Oh, We've all yes. seen it. I don't know if I need to elaborate. 76% no. of the voters. Yeah. Are. No, yeah, you can't <laughs> escape it. I even saw a clip of Limmy, the comedian, uh, on his on his stream, and it was him saying, like, right, let's put a cap on this pattern now. Like, it's gone too far, <laughs> and we'll set a date. And at 9 a.m. on that day, that's the end <laughs> of, the, of the Willy Wonka experience pattern. So, yeah. I saw the two went below Mike this one. <laughs> this end of lockdown song when he's specified oh, a specific day. Oh, yeah. of June. <laughs> and then it went beyond that. Yeah. Um, it's what, sorry? The two lasses who were playing the Umpa Lumbers were on Good Morning Britain or whatever it's called. Yeah, they've yeah. given some interviews in a, a fascinating read because uh, as well, the person who did the, uh, whatever it is that comes from behind the mask, the, the unknown. unknown. The unknown, yeah. Sam. Uh, so the, <laughs> feature, the, feature the unknown has too. given, the unknown has given an interview as well. Uh, but it just sounds like an absolute like mm. nightmare. I never want to see nightmare. the unknowns in if you want the mystique to stay there. Because he's a, hey, just kill me, baby. Was, was it a woman? <laughs> I can't. I, I, I just. I Sorry, I was reading like, about Scottish text. accent. That, that. Oh right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if the unknown's like, hey, you got to be at the street now. Hey, <laughs> scare the weans. The unknown was my favourite bit because you hear the kids go, no. It's <laughs> it, it's it is just that that sad pit. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, I can't be the unknown. <laughs> but Matthew went for it. Um, I think even though I was off last week, I saw his message in the chat, which was like, mm. okay, is it all right if I go for the Willy Wonka mm. Glasgow experience? <laughs> Was there any more? Um, I meant to ask actually last week because week before last, I had like a harrowing realization that my whole friendship with Matthew's a lie. 
Right. Because he asked Ross, kind of off the cuff, he went, got any favourite Star Wars moments, Ross? And then about two hours later, he's on his notes, like, ask the lads about Star Wars. Oh, sorry, I did that before. <laughs> and I was like, so has there been any more, like, revelations about Matthew's intensely scripted life? Uh, no, last week was free-flowing and fun. Oh, damn it. All kinds of fun. All the fun in the world. And he got crisis. caught the week before, so he's doubled down. Oh, You're never going to know now. Is is it's it's it, the protection's gone up around it. It was, it was insane. It felt like the Truman Show. I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> um, right now, it's time for. Well, I guess I'll do Matthew's one. Yeah, you're yeah. in his seat. Right then, um, I'm going to nominate proper proper literature. So proper comma proper literature because um, did English at uni. Took a break from reading for about a decade. Mm. Just watched wrestling instead. Maybe an unwise decision. Rotty brain a bit. Yeah, yeah, and I thought, you know what? I'll get. I'll try and counteract that. I'll get back into reading fiction because I've read nonfiction a bit since then in the past decade. But um, no, I've I've I've, so I've started reading like novels and that again. Mm. Didn't know where really where to start. I've got a lot of blind spots. Like I specialized in uh, post-war American literature at uni, but anything seventies onwards, I don't know any really much about. And then anything before the war, I'm also a bit shaky on. So I was like, I'm going to look at some YouTube channels, try and get some recommendations just from what booktubers have been saying, right? Is that a word, is it? Booktubers, yeah. Ooh. No, there's a lass I went to uni with who's a booktuber, and she's now written her own novel. <laughs> shout, out, shout out to Katie Lumsden, check out her novel. I've not read it myself, but uh, <laughs> That's she, she's very good at Victorian literature, so I think it's like based on, it's like inspired mm. by a lot of like Dickens and stuff, so she's really good. But apart from her, it's impossible to find a booktuber recommendation that doesn't have a vampire or a sexy wizard or a alien. I always like uh, fall down a Wikipedia hole and that's how I end up adult, finding a book. I don't want young adult fiction. I want modern classics with meaning and no, ma no magic at all. So this is a, a nomination for proper, comma, proper literature. Literary fiction is the term. <laughs> I can respect it. Thank you. Yeah. I'm a snob. I'm being a snob. Yeah, I'm being you, a snob. you're being, I'm being snobby, a snob. but it's it's an important thing. Thank you. Like I'm trying my hardest to get back into reading, mm. and I'm trying. I started to jump back in. I was like, oh, I've read Terry Pratchett before. I'll read some more Terry Pratchett. Get Wizards. bored. Get bored. Wizards. Get bored though, because it was like I, I already no, know how it is. He's he's but, an exception I'd make because it, he's. He's spoofing it, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, and he's, he's a fantastic writer. And then I was like, oh, I can't really be bothered. Maybe I'll try Lord of the Rings again. And it's, no, that's not going to double down if I can't do the non-serious. So I went and I got a really non-serious book called The Gulag, uh, Gulag Archipelago. Oh. And it's, it's going to be really, really sad. Is that? Uh, and it's, it's just a massive, massive like uh, examination of the Gulag system. Oh, is it non-fiction? Yeah, yeah. Sounds interesting, though. It's, oh, yeah, but it's going to be well, just like, oh. Well, if you like, win, oh. <laughs> you get back in the game, don't you? Yeah. In the gulag. Yeah, I guess. That's fair enough. Yeah. Call of Duty reference there for everyone. Thank you. Did you mm, enjoy that, yeah. Joel? Yeah, yeah. A little Warzone reference. A Warzone, yeah. yeah. I know that there was a certain, I wasn't part of it, but there was a certain group in this office who apparently over lockdown played many a game of Warzone. I wasn't part of it. Were you either? not part of it? No, no, no. Mm. I don't think I was. We, did, we sometimes so. did Friday even in Fortnite when, right. when, like, after lockdown. But uh, like the wars, I would hear it was when I lived with Owen. I've never I'd done hear him in his though. bedroom. No. Oh! <laughs> well, it wasn't quite. He wasn't quite. We need to have an expose. Yeah. <laughs> um, so proper, proper literature. None of this. None of this fun literature. You know, a book's good if you've really had to struggle and it's been hard to read. <laughs> if it's been unpleasant to read, you've Just read a classic. Like sellotape a Dof uh, Dostoevsky to your face mm. or something. Big Fedor. Yeah. Yeah. I've not read any of him. It's impenetrable. Right. It's, it's, that's a good book. It's, that's what you want. It's like that's you kind of you chip mean. away a little bit of it and you're like, I don't, I can't even follow uh, this I've anymore. Been, I've been reading one called Life A User's Manual, which sounds like a self help book. It's not. Mm. It's um it's uh, fiction. It's by a French author called uh Georges Perec. Nice. And it's about uh, one apartment block in Paris. And first half of the book, I've just finished the first half. He goes through every build every room in the building in excruciating detail. But now it's sort of starting to come together. <laughs> And um, I've, it feels like I've really earned it. I've earned the story. What? Not, not a wizard in sight. Where does something like Naked Lunch sit for you? I've never ever read it. Because it's that, like, somebody was like, oh, you've got to read that. It's like one of the crazy books. You've got to read Naked mm. Lunch. You've got to, like, none of it makes sense. You turn pages and you can read it in any Sounds order. Sounds like a bit of J.G. Ballard, but the atrocity it's, it's just like, I, 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 I can't, like, fathom it. I can't not, I'll understand it. Go. Or, yeah. If it's hard, it's good. Wait, that's <laughs> uh, Ross. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Ross. Yeah. Bart Simpson's Guy to Life's also a great book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, was, that was like class A drugs in primary school. If someone yeah. brought that in, everyone would be like... <gasps> that was like oh, prime, yes. If you had that in year mm. six, you were getting all of the ladies, right? Because you knew what you were doing. Give us a lend of that. No. Oh. Yeah. And they'll rip your little cover. With the oh. green and book. Yeah, green yeah. And blue cover. Yeah, mm. yeah. Class. 
Really good. What's your Hall <laughs> <laughs> of Fame nomination? Uh, the concept of scrolling through Instagram reels. Oh, um, no, the yin to the no, yang no. here. Because uh, it, it, people say it's bad for you, but the amount of good stuff that I've done recently off the back of just it happening on Instagram and going, oh, go and have a look at that. Like, for example, last Sunday, I went to a dairy farm to pet some cows. Look and that, that happened because of Instagram. I got a nice bottle of milk straight from the cow. Pasteurized as well, not raw. I was going to say, yeah. yeah. You can't <laughs> raw buy raw. <laughs> but it, apparently you have to have, like, apparently a shot of raw and then work your way up from a shot. Yeah. Otherwise you'll die. Oh. Uh, yeah. Not die. You'll just have to, the runs. Make you really oh, ill. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I went straight to a dairy farm. That's the, an example. I've, I've booked up to go goat walking. Um, nice. Uber farm does goat walking. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to go goat walking because of Instagram reels. Lots Where of good stuff. Just around I don't the, know, down there somewhere. I guess it'll be around the back under the bridges and stuff. Well, the in, rats are... Into yeah. the Clooney? Actual into rats. The, yeah, just yeah. drive them into the Clooney. Yeah. <laughs> but I get to walk goats. Wow. So I, the, reading's all right, but scrolling through Instagram. <laughs> Reels is a lot more productive, horizon. you know? It, you've actually done some of these things. Are these from seeing the local things advertised or is it just the gen then you google the general idea like it's my algorithm for some reason I'll, I watch a lot of pet videos because mm -hmm. I can't have one at the moment because I live in a building where you're not allowed the yeah. sacrilege uh, so I just scroll through looking at pets and just uh, uh, I saw one about cows and saw one about goats chickens is next I imagine but yeah you just get recommended stuff and you go and do them it's a great time this is the <laughs> this is the seed this is the start of Tweddle's farm that's what's <laughs> oh, gonna God. that's and what we're gonna get we'd all watch that I'd we'd watch, watch that. like five seasons yeah, of that of after yeah. that dairy farm I want to open a dairy farm because the queue to get this milk because you could put syrup in the milk they had machines where was it uh, oh god NE15 I forget where oh, the place was called just out up the A1 and off, off a bit I've only ever oh, been to yeah, a whole hill oh, farm. Yeah, past Hexham and then off. Oh, right. Um, but yeah, dairy farm. I forget what the farm was even called. Something, I can't remember. I'll have a look. Worth it. I'll though. have a look when Sam's talking. But yeah, they have machines where you just fill it up with a little bit of syrup and then they put the milk in, raw or pasteurized, but straight from the cow. And it was sensational. So wow. yeah, that's going to be Cultaholic Farms. I think it's a worthwhile business venture just based off that. Because <laughs> the queue was massive. Clark and you got to see a bull <laughs> and a cow. Clarkson was um, <laughs> Clarkson was waving the checkered flag at the uh, season opening Grand Prix, <laughs> and he got interviewed earlier, like uh, before the Grand Prix. Martin Brundle does a pit walk mm. where he, or grid walk where he walks around and tries to interview celebrities, and it's always chaos. Um, who he, was it that pied him off last year? Maybe Shaquille O'Neal. No, it wasn't Shaquille O'Neal. Uh, oh, I can't remember who it was now. Doesn't matter. Uh, um, and he always asks, "Who are you rooting? Who are you rooting for?" And the, all the celebrities go, "Lewis Hamilton." Um, Clarkson is gurning his face off. <laughs> He's like proper. Like, what, like drug fueled? Gurns. Well, but they're in the Middle East where. I mean, yeah. it's illegal everywhere, but. but I mean, it's especially illegal right. there. And I just don't know. Surely he can't, though. Why? Morally? Just because he's a bit older and he's, you know. Yeah. I don't know. The granddad from Little Miss Sunshine's like, well, if I'm not going to do it when I'm like 60, 70, <laughs> when am I going to do it? He, he was, it might have been an accident. But it's an accident. He's like the girl. Oh. The girl. <laughs> I thought I'd brought the paracetamol. I just brought the meth. No, it was weird seeing him there. Right. It was. But then I realized. I'm gonna have to look into this well, now. It's it was. Sound, it sound like he's Tom, being replaced. Tom said he was going to Bahrain, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so he's, I, doing, yeah. <laughs> he's the new Richard Hammond. <laughs> Um, Need for speed. Oh, <laughs> different kind of speed. <laughs> Sam, have you got a Hall of Fame? Uh, yeah, so I I, uh, I went out. I saw one of my cousins for the first time in ages the other night and just went around town. Was it the one I've uh, met? Uh, no, oh. but uh, it, it was another cousin called Jack. Uh, and Jack... Uh, That's <laughs> yeah. not allowed. No, 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 it's yeah. my name. Gimmick <laughs> infringement. Uh, but we went, uh, went for a couple of pints and one of the places we went was Dat Bar. And I've always liked Dat Bar. I think Dat Bar is a really nice place, but it's gone out of business. Never. Mm. This Saturday it ends for good. Dat bar. Really? Yeah. So I'm putting Dat bar in just for all the good times and nice beers. Richard Tubman took me there once, and obviously yeah. all the walls are plastered with hip hop and happening things, aren't they? Oh yeah. Is it the, quite, quite punk? Quite yeah. It's punk the one. Where, yeah, they had the motorbike on the stairs and they stuff. They did good and, pizzas. Yeah, as well. they had like the big wall. They, they were attached to like a restaurant, and they what? did like some of the best. I'm not like a big vegan food guy, but they did like artichokes, and they were like unreal. Oh. What did Richard but, tell you? That? So Richard went in there, you know, the, the deck all uh, like mm. in there, but then Richard leaned. He leaned. He Richard leaned. merely leaned, but looking like Richard. Oh, I, was just, I was just stood there like, oh, bloody hell, look at this. You're here to, <laughs> to see Richard. Right. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. It is farm overall. I'm, 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 his bucket of milk. I'm, <laughs> his, I'm, his, I'm his carer, by the way. He's the star, Richard Tubman. Yeah. Uh, these Richard trousers. Would fit, Richard would fit in there. Yeah. <laughs> What's it being replaced by, do you know? Uh, no idea. It was just the staff were like, oh, yeah, that's, that's it. So Saturday's like the final day. Did but, you get any freebies? Uh, no, but they said that it's cheaper. There's percentages of, of prices were off. Fair but enough. I was a bit 
drunk by the that's time that's not I got why there. you so went I was like just no no we just bumped, went in because it was like oh not been that bar in ages and then yeah gone that is a shame so Newcastle's losing institutions man we I've... lost Coop which was heartbreaking mm -hmm. mm. losing that bar lost Stack Stack's coming back by the arena oh, is uh, it? the arena by the stadium arena? Stadium. No Wait, it's a Newcastle there. version, isn't it? Uh, Wait, it's, it's going to be family friendly. Fun. They've put up all the big billboards saying like uh, stacks come in, it's going to be all new. But it's you know where the metro is for St James's. Mm -hmm. You know all that wasteland out front. They're just leveling that and putting. Yeah, it there. I was going to make a joke about the pitch, but Newcastle <laughs> are like far better than my two. Right. Um, right. Yeah. Uh, but. So a dab bar, I feel like I didn't make the most of it when it was there. No, I think get, get, get yourself along on Saturday and just get absolutely trashed. This Saturday, is it? Yeah. Oh, I'll be in enough. Leeds seeing Knocked Loose, so I can't. Someone Joel, who are Knocked Loose. Someone else is oh, going. Luke's going, out. Yeah. 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 Right. Well, fun. You forget the names of Joel's <laughs> bands from very recently. Joel. It's like Farty Pants or something. What was it? Uh, <laughs> cheek yeah. Face. Cheek Face. Cheek Face. <laughs> I yeah. heard a cheek I listen, I've never heard a cheek face. I listened to them. He was doing indie boy voice. He was right. doing like bard on purpose singing. Yeah, but sometimes you, that can be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know. yeah it's fine. We've got oh, libertines coming on to a point that. of that soon. Hey, let's not slander the libertines right now. Playing NX. Are they? Yeah. Oh They're God. doing the, the, that new balcony. All that fancy oh, so stand wherever you want. They're too nonsense. Good. What? Yeah. What with the NX like nonsense, the gigs I've been to? Say? Nonsense. Yeah. No. 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 Like all the nonsense where you just pay one price for a ticket and do whatever you want. Just yeah, just go on right. the balcony or stand at the front. Well, there you. What a journey <laughs> we've just been on. I can't remember what the, the those are the three picks for this week's Hall of Fame. We've got proper proper literature. Mm. Uh, Ross. The concept of scrolling through Instagram reels at a place that I used to like getting drunk in. Dart bar. Yeah. Uh, there you have it. What does Matthew say? These picks are yours and yours alone. Uh, if you go on patreon.com forward slash coldaholic and cast your votes there. That says this week in the wrestling. It's this bloody week in the wrestling. Ah. 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 This, ooh, ooh, ooh. this week in wrestling. Oh. <laughs> well, we're talking about the week of wrestling that happened over the past seven days. Smackdown. As Ross just mentioned off camera, this opening segment 40 minutes oh, something like yeah. that oh yeah. yeah I might be the only person in the world who's not seen the Twitter promo I'll watch the first minute now just I can't be asked to sit here for another I, 90 I, I actually <laughs> downloaded it double speeded it and watched it that way because it was just it was too much I feel like I've the missed out the fact that though. I needed 20 odd minutes to lead into 40 odd minutes was it, 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 you, uh. Sam you're the only person on this podcast who's watched the promo because I also <laughs> have watched the Twitter promo because I thought he rambles. Yeah, I can't remember much of it because he just oh, says the same things really over and over bad. again. We're, <laughs> we're bad podcast hosts. People were saying it was an old timer. Do you want to watch it live on the podcast? Have you seen it? Yeah. <laughs> it's on social. It, no. Surely we yeah, can. Yeah, we'll be fine. How long it? is it? 20 minutes. 20 minutes. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, we'll just talk about the SmackDown one. Um, so the Bloodline arrived to open the show. Roman tells the crowd to acknowledge him, but they're more interested in seeing The Rock, which doesn't seem to sit well with him. Mm. The Rock arrives and insults the Arizona crowd for being drug addicts. He also takes credit for making wrestling cool again for the first time in decades. Uh, the Rock, I'm massively paraphrasing here, by the way, because it was... Well, should we minutes. break it down? Break so, it down! So, so far? Yeah, I like The Rock's new red eyes on his Tron. Okay. Because that means he's a heel now. Yep. You'll know, being a fan of high literature... And highbrow things. Oh, no. What was the sculpture on the back of his shirt that you made a big point of getting right in the camera? Because could, oh. could it foreshadow what's about to happen in the story? I don't story? know what it was, actually. Me neither. There I was a sculpture? A on his shirt, shirt, yeah. I only ever noticed he's got his little rock, the old bull with his new pattern in it. Like yeah, his, I have a Google. His, it was like a, a Versace-looking number. It was obviously a different brand now. I said Versace. But oh, yeah, yeah like the, a, the overshirt. Yeah, yeah I don't know. And like a, a sculpture on the back, which maybe he was telling us a clue for mania. Maybe he was... Maybe he was. <laughs> I thought he was just maybe saying, like, look how designer this is. Mm -hmm. Potentially as well, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, before we get on to what The Rock said, Roman not happy with The Rock being all... Better than him in every way. More popular, certainly. He did look like a little tiny C-U-C-K. <laughs> that and uh, it's the next to his cousin. Heyman leads into it a bit too heavy, though, because I think Roman already sort of steps aside, mm -hmm. looking a bit annoyed, and I'm sure he tells the audience, like, you know, I, I can leave, like, my obligation's done now. Yes, he does. Um, but then Heyman is, like, the biggest movie star ever, like, really hyping The Rock, and that's when you see Roman really get that mm. taste in his mouth. And fair play to those drug addicts in Arizona, yeah. the, the, the cactus-loving <clears throat> crackheads. They got um, a baby face pop. 
Because they, <laughs> they fed into that story by cheering The Rock and not really cheering Roman when he asked, him, asked them yeah. to acknowledge him. So they fed into the story as well. Well done, you, you meth using crackheads. <laughs> yeah. I didn't, I didn't feel like we needed the clarification of like, well, we're in Glendale, but Phoenix is nearby, but we could like... Cocaine and meth use is the number one... <laughs> no, Arizona is the number one city for cocaine and meth Phoenix. use. The, Phoenix, yeah. Phoenix. Uh, um, yes, Phoenix. Number one, cocaine, meth. Uh, the Rock <laughs> rejects Cody Rhodes' challenge of a singles match, but suggests a tag match on night one of WrestleMania, which we talked about in the news. Rock and Roman versus Cody and Seth. If the faces win, the bloodline are barred from Cody's title shot. If the bloodline win, it becomes bloodline rules. And The Rock wants their answer next week. Uh, the Rock then, inter- sorry, Roman then interrupts The Rock's sign off and says, Can you acknowledge me, please? Actually. Oh, yeah. And uh, they have a long stare down, but The Rock says, You're my cousin. I love you. I do acknowledge you. And they hug. And, uh, oh, but it's all going to kick Then off. he did the thing again. He did the L. But well, it's he, all popping he, up. He tucked it in. He did it a few weeks ago and I did that <laughs> yeah, video yeah, about yeah, the rock. The yeah, he did that and he went, whoops, <laughs> towards the end. So it, there is a chance that he is just doing it wrong and realised he was doing it wrong. But also, he might be saying to Roman, like he said in that promo, I'll make you walk out of WrestleMania what you are, which is a loser. It's like a Freemason's handshake. I know, it it's is. incredible. Wow. Um, but wheels I'm, within wheels. For the story, I am glad that the rock just acknowledged him because you weren't expecting that, were you? You were expecting the dissension to be there as well on that side of the tracks. I don't want them to be too much dissension because, yeah, then it's too telegraphed, isn't mm-hmm. it? Yeah, I agree. But I did like putting the hand, just, just stopping him doing the if you smell. Mm. was just, oh, man. Mm. Yeah, so good. It was good, but it was long. It was Very good, long. though. So long that Naomi didn't get a rent rinse. Yeah. Nearly as long as The Rock's phallus. Uh, 22 <laughs> inches. No, it wasn't. I couldn't make eye contact with him. <laughs> just the line of 22 inches of heaven no 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 it's not my winky arms. it's the size of my guns on my arms yeah, that would be inconvenient 22 inches long oh good. <laughs> how have we got a tape measure Joey got a tape measure it's like uh, it's no, foot, I imagine so. it's got to be somewhere close to <laughs> <laughs> well, that's about an inch right You're, the end of your thumb's about an inch is it I think I well, was always told trying that. to imagine that 22 times 22 yeah. times 22 yeah. times yeah. Did, 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 did. Oh my god! <laughs> Incredible one, scenes. No, wait, we just his arms. Three. Oh four. yeah, but it's hard to look oh, at the circumference. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. If we could just peel his skin off and just lay it flat, <laughs> that'd be good. <laughs> um, <laughs> good promo. Uh, Triple H. This is like his ultimate fantasy. This. Mm. Or no wrestling. All storytelling. All the time. He loves yeah. The Wire. He loves The Sopranos. He loves Breaking Bad. And he loves heels. And he does love heels. Baby yeah. faces chasing heels. Mm-hmm. But it is nice that Rock say, like, you know, professional wrestling's cool again. It's been decades. Professional wrestling's finally exciting because I'm here. Very. I know, yeah. It's that terrible, isn't it? But at least he did acknowledge Jimmy and Solo as part of the bloodline this week. And it did feel <laughs> time, yeah. it did feel as well a bit like he was just, you know, just just quickly push all of that history aside, all of the recent just anything from the past, just get rid of it. Wrestling's cool again. <laughs> the Rock's an amazing talker and everything. <clears throat> I do wish, and it was worse when he was a face, mm. but I do wish that he, he would learn to just just streamline his promos a little bit. I feel like he's, now that he's gone off to Hollywood, his promos need to be Okada, like, like match length. No, like no, he no. no, I don't feel they have to be, but I feel that he feels they have to be. Right, I see. And I think that he's, and while he is captivating to Does watch, and he's, he's very he's charismatic, a, but like, it, it feels still to me like we're not getting The Rock at times like it doesn't feel oh, like oh no getting... Sam 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 since he's turned heel since he's turned heel yeah, yeah. but yeah, like yeah, yeah. It's, it's still even then when he's doing the if you smell it's just, sometimes it's just doesn't, it doesn't feel right oh, no. doesn't, oh, doesn't like doesn't connect he's right back. here oh he's back the last two weeks have been sensational they have been good I need to watch that promo I'm, I'm, I'm regretting the fact I didn't but I, I think it's a, it's, it's, really it's a bad podcasting it's a more <laughs> it's a more company thing I think than a rock thing because I thought the rest of the show really did suffer because they clearly went long mm-hmm. a lot of yeah. stuff was rushed yeah. but why don't they just plan for the rock doing what he always does and that is going long by having less coming afterwards maybe he goes oh, Paul I promise I won't go too long this time <laughs> And Paul's like, you've hey, done it he's done well, it if, if he gets told off he can be like I'm your boss yes he is do what I want um Backstage, Austin Theory and Grice and Waller are laughing about the finish to the men's elimination chamber match. They're watching it on their phone. LA Knight passes by, looking for revenge on AJ Styles as he walks off. Randy Orton's in the background and overhears the heels laughing about him and challenges. And he does the really sarcastic thing and says, that's really funny, and challenges either of them to a match tonight. Waller says, 
Theory's been uh, really wanting a match with you. Throws him under the bus, and Randy says he'll see him later on. And then Theory calls out Waller. First yeah, Australia and now this. Yeah, so yeah. What, what could that mean for WrestleMania? <laughs> well, do you not think this is just... Under the bus match. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Oh go out on the street. <laughs> the ramp is just a big travelator, right? And there's a bus. <laughs> Have you seen the new Gladiators? Yeah, no. it's amazing. Is really? it? It's, no, it's don't. It's captured. <laughs> I need it to watch captured it. captured the essence of the 90s right, so in a 2024 what's, package. What's the contention here, then? Mark Clattenburg. Right. The, oh, he, he's the worst part by a mile. He, he doesn't have the, the, the gravity in his voice to... He's not Let John or whatever he was called, the yeah. Scottish yeah. one. He was amazing. He's not got the range. He says the wrong Oh, they should just... They should Gladiators just... ready. <laughs> he does do Contenders that. ready. He sounds like Deck from Island Deck. <laughs> no, they should have just recorded the original guy and used that. And, he, and he, for some reason, they've got his countdown, but they also have like bleeps, like bloop, 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 but he doesn't know when that's going to start. So he goes, three, two, and he's like, yeah. Oh, and no. He also, you know, like the famous, you will go on my first whistle. Yeah. So he goes, contenders, you will go on my first whistle. He emphasizes whistle, not the number. Gladiators, it's you like will go the, on my second whistle. Oh, sure, it's a whistle this time. But it's, it's surely like the cushiest job in the world, that, because you've just got to copy oh, I, what John did. Raises his arm, right? You've just got to see, copy see exactly what he said. Because <laughs> he ref the Champions League final. final. So he got all the World Cup. He's got, a world, he got both on his oh, arm. Oh, wow. Yeah. Tribal chief. <laughs> um, all on about wrestling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Randy <laughs> Orton. Tiffany Stratton wins a singles match against Naomi, who, as Sam mentioned, did not get her entrance. Mm. She so, got a proper job or entrance. Tiffy got half a job or entrance because mm. of Dwayne, but Naomi already this soon after her return gets a proper job or entrance. Yes. Yeah, as we came back, Tiffy was like right by the ring, right? She was already entering. But uh, hang on, it is Tiffy time still. Mm. Yes, it uh, is. Which is a good thing, I think we can all agree. Yeah. My thoughts are with Naomi at this time, though. Yeah. Because everyone was going, Tiffy time, Tiffy time. Then Naomi, you can hear her shouting, no, no, it's glow time. Oh. Silence. <laughs> and then yeah, she she did that and everything. And it felt like you could hear that like it, it was like glowed. this. Oh, like it's go it time. Was, it was almost. No, like... The theme's got glow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah. Is she doing also a play on words? Or... Oh, potentially. Yeah. Or was it just she just... might read books as well? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> um, I did enjoy the match though. I thought yes. it was just a big old dick swinging contest, for want of a better phrase. Well, the Rock mm. was there. Yeah, he was there. Naomi's a brave woman for trying to do more athletic things than Tiffy Strats, who was a gymnast. Yes. Of Olympic standard. What? Maybe, I don't know, oh, right, just okay. made that up. Because um, <laughs> they were clearly cramming in as much as possible in at the time they were given because Dwayne and Roman went long. And it was a shockingly easy win for Tif Tiffy because she's only a 79 on the game. Right, <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I do agree with them continuing Tiffany's push and having her beat established mm. names, but I don't think one of them should have been Naomi this early. This early, yeah. yeah. Especially so soon since she's come back from TNA. And that and then also you combine it with the probably accidental run over the... Oh God, we're just gonna have to put her in the ring. Mm -hmm. Just get straight out there, job or entrance, and it just feels a bit like. Oh. I'm sure it was the first not the chamber. I think wasn't she Naomi? She was. Yeah. Was it Tiffy who eliminated her? I think so. Yeah, possibly. Oh dear. I guess you can't get in the way of an organic push sometimes. Mm. On the flip side of things. Yeah. Looking for the best of this situation. For I Naomi. mean, glow time. Tiffy is really. In his club stuff. Tiffy is really good, to be fair. Um, Bailey and Dakota Kai face the Kabuki Warriors in a non title match, I believe. Mm. It goes down, it goes to a no contest after Dakota betrays Bailey and Eo Sky joins in to beat her challenger down. Backstage, Eo runs into Jade Cargill, but Nick Aldis whisks her away uh, before anything can kick off. Uh, are we glad that Dakota's turn has been revealed before WrestleMania? It just shouldn't have been a like. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> she came back you had like the awkward like goes to hit Bailey with the chair then there's the miscommunication Bailey moves out the way now she's sided with Bailey then she rocks up like the week before uh, like last week going or not like the, the, the episode before this yeah, one yeah. um and she's like, Bailey, look, I'm I'm injured. Like, I I need you to help me in some way. Just watch my back. Just mm -hmm. make sure you're there. Can you make and Bailey's like, nah. You look after yourself and everything. And then Well, she was right. Not to but, Yeah, and then we get the, the eventual turn. It's like, oh, you could have just not done any of that and had her just side with them. <laughs> I know they were fully on board last week. They re they finally were like on yeah. the same page last week. And then it's just been it's one one of those shame up man's one uh, the storylines, which way will he go? Or which mm, way will yeah. she go? Um I like that the the tease of it. I don't know if uh, I don't know, because if if the turn would have happened at WrestleMania and Bailey still came out on top, would that not have been more effective potentially for Bailey? <laughs> Well, I was thinking, does the, yeah, does this telegraph, does this make it more obvious that Bailey's going to win? Could, I could look like an idiot if Eo wins. I don't know, because Jade Cargill's an interesting one, because she's coming for Eo, mm. but Eo's already got the match booked. <coughs> so how does Jade get in the match when she's having meetings with Aldis and whatnot? What could this mean for WrestleMania? I think she might just have a, 
some sort of other showcase at WrestleMania, not necessarily the ma- the title yet. I'm half expecting Charlotte back, just because it's Charlotte. She is uh, the modern day John Cena in terms of recovery. Can you not see Jade eventually taking the title off Bailey or another babyface? Yes. Yes. So maybe, yes. So she might not do anything. Oh, Charlotte comes back for Jade. Yeah, yeah, WrestleMania. Oh, she's injured. Well, she's uh, posting workout she's... videos and stuff now. Oh, isn't really? She, yeah, like oh, she's rehabbing she's... the leg and that. The modern day John Cena in terms of recovery. But like again, the tag team match itself, the Kabukis versus Bailey and Dakota, it all felt rushed again. Bloody Dwayne and Dwayne. Roman. Uh, but there was a sick code breaker, neck breaker combo by the Kabukis. Yes. Um, uh, yeah, that's all I've got to follow up to say. It was fine. <laughs> and I, I, am, I don't know how I feel about the, the turn, the, 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 the next turn. I don't know either. Um, maybe it'll become better or worse after WrestleMania. We don't know. Yeah, maybe there's an element to be thrown into it yet. Uh, run it straight, everyone. Because Zion Quinn's back. The X Factor. Yes. To give him his full title from NXT. Not which back I never for very understood. long. <laughs> I don't well, know. Well, Simon, NXT, he was called the X Factor. Yeah. He wasn't very good there. In terms no. Of K-Fair, no his I mean. name began with an X. But I, I remember, <laughs> <laughs> I remember, like, toward the end of my, uh, like, covering NXT for Graded, he was starting to come through and get some interesting showings. And then, like, that was ages ago. Yeah. And then I've sort of, and now, it's unless I'm doing podcast, I've got to kind of just try and stay on top of everything. So NXT, unfortunately, seems to fall. Oh, he's not by been the there for ages. For he's not been there He's for been ages. missing. Because yeah. they said on commentary, <coughs> Zion's been making waves in NXT. And I was like, that's a lie. That's what weird. Kind so of I was waves? like, hold on. <laughs> waves goodbye? Mm. Mm, am I right? Um, but this is all Bron Breaker matches need to be at the moment. He flattered him, and that was it. Yeah. Yeah, Bron Breaker beat him in seconds, one, just one spear. Yeah. Um, Zion, I remember he used to be a, a, a chivalrous gent. He would hold the door open for ladies. Mm-hmm. One time someone didn't hold the door open for a woman and Zion went, that's not very good. And he beat him or wrestled him, certainly. Mm. Then he started saying, run it straight, <laughs> which I didn't realize was a rugby term. Right, okay. Because he's from New Zealand. I think. Yeah, yeah. Running, run the ball at me straight so I can let's see who more of a man is. Yeah. But Bron did that. And flattened him. Yeah, Brian. Oh, God, I said Brian Obama there. <laughs> <laughs> South African international Brian Obama. Oh, Brian Street. Havana. 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 Yeah. Havana. Yeah. Havana. Yeah. Havana. Yeah. Jesus. Jonah Lowen. <laughs> um, Legado del Fantasma interfere in Santos Escobar's street fight against Carlito, but the LWO run out to even the odds. The heels are still on top, but then Rey Mysterio comes back from injury and attacks them with a crutch. He does the fake hobble and then goes, just kidding. Uh, and Carlito gets the win. I, <laughs> I giggled a bit when Ray came up because it was just. He was there was a point where he clearly takes like two or three steps while just holding the 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 um they were crutches. massive the, they were the crutches up the crutches are huge yeah. so it's sort of like this but like he's just stood there as they're sprinting at him full pelt and then the camera just cuts back to them sprinting at him so and, until you get that cut back where you see he's already like he's, yeah. he's obviously carried on there's just that kind of almost like Kurt Angle about to get punched in the face by Triple H <laughs> about it. like where he's just like. <laughs> it was, he was quick to snap into action. Yeah, I good. thought he looked good though. He's, apparently, that was a Muda tribute mask he had on. Yeah, I was going to say it's uh, like the big molded, yeah. thick mask. And mm. His little grey beard. I'm enjoying his, the fact he's not dying his beard. It makes him look wise. He is like Yoda. <laughs> wise, <laughs> yeah. And he is a bit like Yoda. If there was, if Yoda was a wrestler, he'd be Rey Mysterio. Yeah. 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 I mean, imparting wisdom. Yeah. 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 I just got to say it out I didn't of order. You said imparting wisdom. I thought you were going to list more qualities. Impart <laughs> wisdom. Also, athleticism. Yeah. Hurt my knee is. <laughs> is that a good one? Hey, hey. He didn't play too much of a part in the one I've seen. Good mm, old Yoda. Mm. Nine, nine, six, one. <laughs> um, oh, but I thought God. the street fight was good. You knew it was a street fight because the lads were wearing jeans. Mm. Yeah. Santos especially it was a street fight because he had his knee pads on top of his jeans. Yes. I like the Kavorka of the match because it was just a brawl from the get-go. They were just mounting each other and pounding each other. It was... <laughs> um, I really enjoyed the shoot tope from Santos to Carlito. Um, and then Santos picks up the apple that Carlito had yeah. and starts going... <laughs> Which is a noise I didn't expect to come he's out of his evil. mouth. He's yeah, evil. but not that. He was. He sounded like a proper <laughs> evil. Yeah. <laughs> the LWO though, I've got a question. Their tactics, because they were missing in action for well, ages, shagging each other. Probably, <laughs> no, no, yeah. that's the other ones. No, yeah, the, 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 the shagging ones came out and attacked. Yeah, of course. Um, uh, Carlito, but then the LWO lads weren't there for ages. Mm, Had true. to get saved by Ray. What were they doing backstage? Maybe they started shagging now. When they did <laughs> come out though, they hit a massive like stereo dive, and it was class though. They are good. Yeah. They are good. Um, Just missing for ages for some reason. I'm a bit sad that Santos lost. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But it was Ray coming back. We can't, I, I think the storyline's been hampered by Ray being injured for the longest time because it feels like we've just been spinning my wheels for a Sandos long time. Sandos will yeah. surely get a win over him or something. Kickoff yeah. show, WrestleMania. Oh, oh, oh no, the SmackDown before show. WrestleMania, sorry. Mask versus hair. Oh, Ray yeah, loses his mask. SmackDown now is like the, the, the kickoff, kickoff show, isn't we it? We did yeah. get a pre show match at Elimination Chamber. So will we? Maybe we'll get one at WrestleMania. It'd be okay. interesting to see if it wasn't Indy Hartwell, if that would have still happened. Yeah, true. Because it just would feel like they got all the Australian and people they could on have, there. They could have easily fit that match on the main show mm. because that was the gaps between those matches were long. Um, New Catch Republic, Toyler and Peter ask Nick Aldis for a chance to earn a tag title rematch at WrestleMania, which I think's arrogant because they lost. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he tells them that he and Adam Pearce will have an announcement soon regarding the tag title situation. Uh, then gets interrupted by an angry LA Knight. Aldous tells LA Knight that AJ Styles isn't here this week. Knight says he's going to get revenge on AJ and there isn't anything anyone could do about it. Yeah. He's drunk on their power, but guess what? The hangover's coming. Ah, yeah. ah, what a line. Custom fitting for a hat with a steel chair. Yeah, Bosh. Yeah. The rock must have the actual the, the actual rock must have been sweating. <laughs> the actual rock. Because <laughs> the the spiritual successor to him is just cutting bars that he couldn't mm. cut right in front and of in, his face backstage. In a tenth of the time exactly. that it takes, yeah, yeah. The LA Knight's better than gassed rock. as well. Without it, getting yeah. gassed, yeah. <laughs> um, no, yeah, He's a really, big softy, that rock. <laughs> really good stuff from LA Knight. I enjoy that he acknowledged that yes, AJ did what we all thought. He wasn't actually meant to be there in Australia. He caught a flight across the world. To uh, to cost him in the thousands, years. That yeah. Pay. yeah, thousands of dollars would cost him. Um, and I like that because that was probably the same chair that he beat him up with. So him getting that back through customs is a funny visual as well. <laughs> I just get this on the plane, please. <laughs> Taping up the jagged edges. <laughs> yeah. And then him and AJ might have been like a few rows apart, just yeah. like oh. <laughs> for twenty hours on the tag team titles. It looks like they're going to make them maybe brand specific again because they've got an announcement about the tag team titles. What else could that uh... announcement be? Because they're fine, nobody's injured. So what could it be, the announcement? They have been unified for a long time now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, the NCR are just silly, silly billies, aren't they? Why did they deserve a rematch? I yeah. did like how Nick was like, oh, WrestleMania, it might be a bit of a tall order for you lads. <laughs> you're, you're, you're not that, you're not just lost. Yeah, you are a bit crap. Maybe it's a recency thing for them. They're like, when you? So, well, you're not really new, but mm. when you? Give us a shot again. Here, Tyler Bates probably still about 90. It feels like he's still really young. No, he's been yeah. in limbo for ages. But he's been signed for, what, seven years, and he's like 23 or something. He went like from just... having arguably a match of the year against, what it's called, Walter in NXT mm. UK, and then they made him into Matthew's favorite NXT gimmick, which is Tyler Bates, toadstool, sitting, woodland creature. Right. Because he's always like... <laughs> that guy just goes, right. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah okay, yeah. what? what? And he's always like... <laughs> He, was, he, he loves meditation. Yeah. There was weed references at the start, but they right. sort of died out. He's always he was like, oh, peace, love, and hugs, man. Uh, yeah, he's like a hippie. Oh, okay. But right. like, Matthew's confused that with like Enid Blyton. <laughs> um, <laughs> I would love movie. to see like, uh, yeah, British Strong Style end up getting uh, together a, a fan, like, was it Fantastic? No, Famous Five. Oh, the Famous, famous yeah. Five. I was thinking yeah. like Faraway Tree. Oh, Mr. No. Saucepan. Mr. Saucepan Head, what are you doing? I want really, really naff like mysteries where they're going to solve who like put out the church windows. I, was more, I had some Secret Seven. And it's always Tony D'Angelo. Not Famous always. Five. Um, I remember the Secret Seven had a clubhouse and they used to change the password every week. What Secret Seven world? I had a couple of, I think. But they oh. were just the same books. She could have just written the same thing and added two characters to each scene. Well, not. One time <laughs> they were in a circus. Anyway, um, <laughs> these ones live in a cove. These ones live at the coast. Yeah, one of them solved crimes. The other one's gone on adventures <laughs> <coughs> and just happened to solve crimes. No, uh, next segment. Oh, it's the main event. Kevin Owens Proper joins the in. Comma. <laughs> Kevin Owens joins. <laughs> Proper literature. Kevin I'm going to spell that P-R-O-P-E. <laughs> Proper. Proper, comma. Kevin Owens joins the announced team for the main event, which sees Randy Orton beat Austin Theory despite an, an attempted interference from Grayson Waller. Waller blindsides Orton after the bell, but Owens helps him beat the heels down, and they stand tall to end the show. Kind of wary of each other still, but, yes. but they've helped each other out. I really enjoyed Waller doing the Orton thing on the announce table to Orton, mm -hmm. the backdrop on the announce table. I thought the highlight of the match was Theory doing really well to save the spot in the corner. It was going to be a superplex by Orton, but he went down, but Theory was still on the top turnbuckle, and Theory just went for it and sort of made it look like a half suplex, but to me, it looked like more of a blockbuster on his 
on his behalf. Yeah, okay. But it still yeah, worked yeah. as a spot, though. Yeah. Um, he's, he's, he's good in the ring theory. It's just the character stuff that's crap. Yes, he is good in the ring, and it's a shame that he's yeah. more bland. And he was made to look good here by Orton. He got lots of offense in, in his favor. And there was a lovely finish with the rolling stunner attempt mm-hmm. turned into an RKO. Into an RKO. You've got to have done your homework there if you're theory. You know that's a possible reversal to your weird forward roll. Mm. Mm, yeah. Uh, yeah, good, good <laughs> ending of the show. And I guess the Twinks are trying to get the job done for their boy, Logan, when the he's twinks. not there. Oh, Theory and Waller. Theory and Waller, the Twinks. Yeah, the oh, bloody Twinks. I saw they caught Waller being a right, real-life baby face in the behind-the-scenes of Elimination Chamber. Really? Where uh, Indy's looking out, like, peeking out the side of the arena, the crowd. Yeah. She's crying because it's Australia and everything. He gives her a nice little hug. And then he's like, you've got me crying as well. Should be fired for that. Yeah. Disgusting Can't behavior. Cry. It doesn't not. <laughs> it, it, it slightly it's perturb- not crying in wrestling. No, no, no. Slightly not perturbs crying. me when he used to always like reference him as a former school teacher. I don't want yeah. to know that about him. No. So I just I just picture what's her face from Matilda. The star. Trunchbull. Miss no, Trunchbull. not Trunchbull. Miss Honey. Honey. Why Miss Honey? But imagine Waller being Honey. What is in a nice in that teacher? role? Yeah, yeah, the nice yeah, role. yeah, yeah. But then I. There, couldn't it, you? In his nice little polo shirt. But at the same time, everybody's got teachers they hate. It. Yeah. My mom. Loves that scene in Matilda where the Trunchbull lobs that girl over. Oh, the it's class. Yeah, really but she good. finds it so funny every time. I think it's the shot where it goes to the it goes to the wide. It goes to the wide shot, and yeah. she's got her like proper by the, and she's flying out there. But yeah. the, the 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 last lands, and then she's just completely fine she as well. She picks some flowers. Yeah, she slides along. It's, it's just like she's like Henri against Tottenham. You just got absolutely <laughs> lobbed over a spiky fence. Yeah, yeah. Grass um, though, <laughs> been raining the night before. Nice soft land. <laughs> What Buy a skull, Ross. Buy a skull. <laughs> that's a that's a good. <laughs> Matilda's a great one. It's a good film. Mm. It is a good film. Danny DeVito doing double duty. Yeah, he's the dad and the narrator. And he directed it, didn't he? Did he? I think so. You're joking. Yeah. He he procured the rights, I think, for the screenplay. I'm sure he he had a hand in the screenplay and directed it as well. I'm sure. What a guy. I saw a scene from a film this week. Robert <laughs> Robert De Niro in the film 1900. Right. Okay. Full on gets a, a handy J, right? By this woman while in a bed with Gerard Depardieu. Oh, is it She's unsimulated? Doing a double handy J. It's it's, the... it's a, a a shoot handy J. It's, it's a shoot handy J. <laughs> in this it? film, it's not even a. a oh, no, so I, I I when when I did can oh, I had to see a film. It's a real film. Yeah. Google it, Joel. I don't not not actually seen. <laughs> it's not like short on the 1900, screen. the numbers, but uh, with starring Robert De Niro in it. It's from like 1978 or something. Me and Alex got um, summoned to this like morning premiere when we were uh, in, in France. Yeah. yeah, and and it was like, oh, it's Gaspar Noé's careful, new careful, film. Careful, 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 because you see <laughs> b- 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 boobies. It's Gaspar Noé's new film, <laughs> Love. Uh, and I was sat next to a woman from like the it was like the Midwest Christian Post or something, oh, and no. she was just this lovely little old woman. And people were getting up within the first ten minutes and leaving because oh. it was all just unsimulated, and there was a lot of it in three D. They do that in films. Yeah, and then I she can't my eyes and then she was she just like. Yep, and she's just making diligent notes, and I'm like, oh, so many leave. people like left, and she's still just sat there like. Fair play to her. Yeah, yeah. just back to the Hardy Jays though. I don't, <laughs> know what the story, I don't know what the story is, but like the, she, the lady sat in the middle of De Niro and Gerard Depardieu, and then there's a little bit where she sort of goes he 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 and drags De Niro's hand over, and he touches Gerard Depardieu's. Oh, <laughs> yeah, and you see oh, every yeah. there it is in the bottom corner, Joel. Be careful. Uh, bottom right corner there. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're fine showing that picture because you can't see anything there. Um, but yeah, there you go. that's well, basically what I saw. Well, yeah. yeah. Look at young Gerard. Look at young Robert. He had a kid recently as well, didn't he, Robert De Niro? 80 years old. He's... Did he? Yeah. Oh, is, no. Is Gerard Depardieu still uh, living in Russia? as like a full-blown tax avoided. Really? Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. sure he, he's like one of Putin's best mates now. What's what? This... Gerard Depardieu, yeah. <laughs> What's this film about? I don't know. Oh, you saw the scene. I just saw the scene. Yeah. (laughs) How did you see the scene? What were you looking for, Ross? I saw the news about Robert De Niro getting, you know, popping out a child. Right. Himself. So you wanted to see if if he physically could. I was just looking down his films and I was just clicking on a few of them and I ended up on that one. Robert De Niro (laughs) cock. (laughs) Um, Don't do that at home, kids. (laughs) AW Collision. (laughs) Uh, Mark Briscoe attacks Buddy Matthews during his entrance and puts him through a table. He tries to attack him with a railroad spike, but the rest of the House of Black run out to stop him. He fights them off with a chair and then tries to burn Buddy with <laughs> really the pyro good. controls. Security run out and stop him just before he can. And then he does it. And had Buddy still been there, well, he would have been ablaze. Even well, more so. There's... The ginger bugger. <laughs> 
He... I can say that because I'm one of him. Up the gingers. No, you're not really. <laughs> not like him. <laughs> mm. The I don't first know if the real gingers would. I don't know if they'd fully have you. <laughs> The first instance of it, like, obviously Buddy's nowhere near, but the camera angle, had it been a little bit, like, different, would have looked really scary. Mm. But the camera angle that it was on, when it first happens, Buddy's, like, so far away, obviously, for safety. Yeah. But it was just really bizarre to kind of have that shot and then go to the shot and then the fire happens and then he goes, Ah! I wonder if they used the shoot, like, controls in the squabble, you know, when Mark gets tackled by all the personnel. Mm -hmm. Imagine if they just hit it by mistake. I don't uh, think he I did, because he kept doing this. Yeah. And, and so once it goes off, and then the second time it goes off, and then he goes mm -hmm. really quickly afterwards. Yeah, it wasn't the smoothest, but I enjoyed the intensity. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you remember a certain incident in WCPW with Drew McIntyre? So... I saw this happen, but I don't know if you were probably you were probably at the desk. Yeah, it was. I was gonna. I was. I was part of the segment, guys. So I was getting ready <laughs> was to go. It was a pretty out. big deal. I had to go out and be like, hand something to the ref and be like, no, no, no the match isn't going to be this. It's going to be Pacini. general manager Martin like, Kirby. It was like, <laughs> no, it was Pacini's barred from ringside or right. something, and it was Bully Ray, okay, member of Pacini Club, um, and I was helping out Drew. Or whatever the match was, but it was Drew was definitely involved because me and Drew, me and my just my pal Drew McIntyre, right? yeah, waiting behind the curtain, and we see from miles away the promoter, and he's like, it was the bowlers, so you've got that bit to block off the whole thing from the crowd. Oh yeah, and he's coming down this long, like the length of the hall, <laughs> and he's like slowly coming, in, and then he uh, Drew's about to go out, and he gets there, and he goes, Drew, uh, don't cross the line on the floor, Pyro, and Drew went, oh my god, <laughs> and we nearly burned Drew McIntyre. <laughs> So that would have been good. There was, a, there was a couple of times where I got really worried. It was always when people had elaborate entrance robes and like elaborate okay. entrance gimmicks. And we had fire. I'd always just be like, they're going to go up. They're well, Drew was wearing his up. like Game of Thrones. Yeah. And I'm cool. like, it's, it's just, I would always panic so yeah, much. It was, yeah, it was bad. Yeah. And they've all got, you know, oily hair. And and you, you, I'd see Simon with like the key or the pyro people with the key and the buttons and everything. Oh, not but Simon it was like, Miller, yeah. No, but it was, it was like, you'd, you'd have a... Uh, it was all like locked and safe. Like you could bang the button like all, all over the desk the if you wanted, it wouldn't go no, off. But it's terrifying. There, yeah. Yeah. Imagine Simon. Simon being a pyro guy now. I'll make you feel warm and fuzzy in your tum tum. <laughs> <laughs> Set them on fire. <laughs> I miss him. I miss Simon. He's yeah, a nice good lad. man. He is. I don't know how he's got. I don't know how he's. I don't know. How he's, how is he so good at so working? How is he so good at so many? How's he? <laughs> no. <laughs> How is he so good at so many things, is what I was going to say. You know? I'm looking forward to seeing, hopefully there's footage released of that musical thingy-majig he's in next year. Musical? He's in, he's a fight, like a wrestling hybrid theatre production. He's playing the role that Matt Cardona played last year, and I can't remember what it's oh, called. Ah, from an actor. Yeah. He might get a handy J or two. <laughs> <laughs> if he's lucky. <laughs> I liked Mark Briscoe bringing the spike back in, because that's how Malachi tried to end his life last week. Oh, right? yes, it was. Yeah. I thought it was a really good opening segment. It was. Yeah. Um, get things back on track. Swerve Strickland <laughs> says that he learned his lesson on Dynamite, and he'll never take his eyes off Hangman again, because Hangman was faking the injury. As for Samoa Joe, on Sunday... He'll take his championship. And he, he was wrong. He was, yeah, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. But uh, he was, I don't know, to be more pissed off at Hangman or the fact he ripped his $2,000 Jeff Hamilton exclusive jacket. Yeah, he was, was yeah. <laughs> now, would, uh, no, it wasn't the one he was wearing because it got ripped. What am I talking about? Sorry. sorry. I'm so that's, sorry. That's sorry. sorry. <laughs> and yeah, he wants he to be could have been wearing a duplicate of it. I'm, I'm so annoyed that I've done that. It was such a stupid question. <laughs> How does Matthew do this? Dante Martin wins a triple threat match against Penta and Brian Keith to qualify for the All-Star Scramble. Before this match, I would have wagered that Dante Martin was the least likely to win. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, yeah, maybe Brian Keith would be last. I need, we need segments about Brian Keith. He's just that gimmick and look he has. The bounty hunter. The bounty hunter. I need to know more about why he is the bounty hunter, because then that may, that'll the make money. people care. He's collecting bounties. Yeah, but show me. Show me yeah, dead you know, bodies we can have, and we Brian can have, Keith. <laughs> but you can have, like, acolyte level stuff where it doesn't need to be super complex, but it just shows, hey, he's like... That's his gimmick, well, right? That's his whole thing. So, so far, he has Because like the APA up. were that, weren't they? They were basically bodyguards yeah, and bounty hunters. he hasn't done any of that, has Yeah, he's he just rocked up and wrestled and been quite likeable, but he would be even more likeable if we knew what he was about. Well, he wears yeah. a hat. And he's good and in ring, so it, I just want that little bit extra, like, just, just focus on him. Yeah, but then I'm worried that if, if you take the bounty hunter gimmick too far and actually acquire a target, yeah. then you become the elite hunter Frankie Kazarian. Mm. And we know that that 
Not if you take it a step further and you do the TNA and it's it's people that you know the company's never going to work with again. <laughs> and he he, <laughs> he, 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 yeah, like Sependigo. he gets rid of them. <laughs> yeah. Well, sorry, no offense to Sependigo. <laughs> but like he, he'll just, he takes them out and everybody's, oh God, he's actually a bounty hunter. Like for real. I think bounty hunters in real life don't kill. No, no, they got to capture. Yeah. Dog the bounty hunter. Dog just gives me. them talks about God. Gives them a cigarette and pats them on the back and lets them walk in. I used to be know. in prison years ah. ago. Look at me now. But Look beforehand, he does spray them down with bear mace yeah. and stuff. Yeah, he does. Yeah, which is cool. Steve Blackman, <laughs> bounty hunter as well. Get out. Steven Seagal, <laughs> bounty hunter. Get down here, you fat bitch. What was Steve, that? <laughs> Steve didn't mean to say that. He, did. he was caught up in the heat of the moment. <laughs> Um, about the match, though, it was a really even three-way, which I was a bit... Sur- it's weird to see Penta just be another lad in the match. I know, it's Penta, I know. Um, the lo- he did a lovely fear factor f- um, on the apron, which was then followed by a destroyer by Dante, also on the apron, which What's set the up the fear factor again? The package pile, pile driver on, oh, the, yes. on the hardest part of the ring. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that was a nice build-up to the finish there for Dante, but yeah. Yeah, uh, Dante qualifies for the meat match, which, to be fair, wasn't the meat match by this point, so... The championship scramble. Yeah. Well, the all star the all star scramble. Um we see an interview with Hangman Page after he revealed that he faked his injury on Dynamite. He says he had to lie in order to hurt Swerve and weaken him before the title match at Revolution. Any thoughts on this? Really good justified arsehole stuff, mm-hmm. very much like Drew McIntyre, but a bit more adult. That doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? A bit more intense. Yeah. You wouldn't say it on the WWE because it was a bit more Drew's post more, watershed. He was unhinged. <laughs> Drew's, yes, Drew's yeah. more composed about yes, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas he's just <clears throat> straight up obsessed with that, Swerve and not wanting him to be the world and, champion. And I'm just living for the Magnum TA look. Like yeah. it's just, it's, it looks yeah. really good. That's a Dutch yeah. tickler if I ever saw one. But I just find it hard to. I just like him so much. I just want to cheer him. But I, I, I really want to be able to boo him. Okay. I really want to be able to see, like, so I'm, I'm hoping that we. He's we a good get, heel as well. Yeah. To be fair, like he's doing, he's doing really well. I think it was really easy to boom oh, last week. Mm. Also a former teacher. Uh huh. Mm. Honey. But I can imagine him being a nice teacher. <laughs> Couple of former honeys in the wrestling. <laughs> um, Mariah May <laughs> wins a singles match against a woman named Angelica Risk. Her Angelica, birth name. Angelica Risk. Her birth name. On her birth certificate. Angelica I Risk. can't tell. Are you joking? <laughs> no, 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 oh. I don't know. It's just a great name. Isn't it is. It? Um, Apparently, it was a 15th AEW match that they were saying on I've commentary. never seen this one before. Me neither, yeah. <laughs> uh, her celebration, though, is interrupted by Tony Storm, who she goes for a hug, and Tony goes, no, and just ducks it straight away, which is good, and uh, calls out Diona Perrazzo. Perrazzo arrives, and Tony asks if their ruined friendship was worth it. Tony says she loves Diona, but there's only room for one at the top, and it'll never be you. Diona says that she's Tony's best friend, but also her worst enemy, and she'll break both of her arms. I hope you've got a bidet because mm. you're not be able to wipe your ass when I break both your arms. The Great crowd, line. The crowd got it before the second half. She mm. hope you got a bidet, and they went, "Oh, <laughs> she's going to break her arms." Apparently, they're very common in America. They're not common here. No, no. not at all. It's it always a novelty be. on holiday when you're like, "Oh, they." I mean, just Japanese robot toilets, man. Yeah, like, I never was they were the greatest in Japan. Thing. Oh, no, really? We were in places where they had the toilets. Right, had so many buttons, and you can I didn't get want one for like six hundred quid now over here right. with like a, a, a bidet function on it and everything. <sighs> Is that it? Yeah, you're gonna have to pay like, out of the arse for an install, <laughs> literally. What, what does it give you? <laughs> it any functions like oh, I was a trying to work. There was, so there, was, yeah, there was, I was trying to say. Reach up between the legs. There was. <laughs> I tried to think what did there, there was one that played white noise. There was one that played uh, well, like cough, that, cough yeah. noises. <laughs> <laughs> plays cough noises. Uh, Joel liked that one. <laughs> he loved the disclosure reference there. there was, <laughs> I can see Joel popping the pills at the disclosure. <laughs> so game. Can I? Just no. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I just think the the best. It's all in one, and it doesn't. It's not an you, additional thing next uh, to your toilet. Japanese robot toilets on your Sam Driver bingo car. You can take. <laughs> if there was something I had to guess, you would bring up. It would be yeah. probably Japanese, Japanese robot toilet. toilets. Yeah. Bush did nine eleven. You know. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Sam. You ruined the pod. He was a teacher at the time when the towers were shut down. <laughs> no, he wasn't. A teacher. <laughs> he was reading a book to kids in the classroom. Oh. Uh, there was. Uh, I thought it was a nice match. I'm going to get things back. <laughs> there was well, a couple of a, a couple of big strikes and a May Day for the win. I thought Maria, Mariah May looked like the dog's bollocks yeah, in that good. match. She's good. I like Nigel flopping to the floor after Maria blew him a kiss. He's a, <laughs> he took a bump. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, Tony Steele in the spotlight, I think, is a thing that's going to get bigger and bigger mm. as the weeks go on because she looked um, a bit a bit perturbed. After the match, and then Deonna's come out and everything, Tony kisses Deonna on the cheek, which sparks a brawl. Mariah tries to help Tony, but takes a pile driver for her troubles while Tony runs away in Luther's arms. And I thought the split screen was art. No, I find the split screen, I, 
they're it feels like AEW are really pleased with themselves whenever they do it. Like, I would be. Like, Sam, yeah. tell us why they should be pleased. <laughs> you technical wizard. No, I think Sam was about to agree with. He looked like he was going to agree. I agree that I think it's crap. Oh, it's oh. crap. I think it's hokey. I think that that's it, the point. It though. is meant to be. I, I know it is. I know it is. But, <laughs> but it's it's often, it's though. it's like it's it's there's a level of hokiness that you can do. And but it's it's redoing it again and again. I want to I want to see more. I want to have them make her somehow entirely black and white, and and well, and everything Rob else Piper is in color. Tried that and it, the no, year no, no, is twenty twenty four. Sam, she thinks she's Julie Thingy off the Wizard of Oz. I've forgotten her name. Well, what? No. no, Andrews. Andrews. Julie Andrews. Julie Andrews. Wait, I'm trying to think of all that. What's her name? Julie Andrews. Judy Garland. Judy Garland. Judy Garland. Judy Garland. Judy Garland. Yeah. Who's Julie Andrews? Julie, Julie Andrews. Andrews. That's there uh, from the she's an English lady off Dinner Ladies and that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, Jay McDonald. Do you think she's Jay McDonald? <laughs> no, I like. I I get it, and I I think it's really smart, and I like the way that it the the split screen looks cool, but I don't. Part of me like do I've a seen lot. a lot of like cosplay stuff where people are literally just painted grey. Oh. And they just, they look like they're black and white and all their clothes are kind of in those That's tones. That's a bit too good for Tony, though. It What's is. that got to do with Tony Storm? But... <laughs> Because she she thinks she's eternally like in the 20s. Yeah. Like make her that. Just make her black and white somehow. <laughs> make her like grayscale. Did the... Like, <laughs> you know the Black Dahlia murder? Yeah. Right? In old Hollywood, right? Yeah, yeah. Didn't she... Was she found bisected? Yeah. If Tony could find a way to operate her legs independently of... So she, her torso like hovers... And yeah. then if anyone tries to crossbody her, she can just do this? Yes. Genius. That's what wrestling's going to be like in sort of only about 20 years. Of... But I, I get, I see both sides of it, but I think it's really cool. Mm. I, I like that they're committed to it, but at the same time, it's a bit I like... I think they're self-satisfied. Yeah. Um, guns up, everyone. The Bang Bang Scissor Gang arrive with Jay White accidentally distracting Max... Accidentally distracting Max Caster during his uh, rap attempt... Austin Gunn teams with the acclaimed to win a six-man against Reynolds, Uno, and Silver of the Dark Order, a.k.a. the Friends of Matthew. What's going on with the interrupting right. the raps? So I think he legitimately balls one up, and now yeah. they've made it a storyline where he's sort of either getting distracted by Jay White or he just hates Jay White that he's getting distracted from being Max Caster. Because my favorite part of it was that uh, it was just sort of brushed over and it was very awkward. And then it was like, oh, just forget the rap. Who cares about that? Let's crack on in the ring. Mm. And it just it mm. almost just made him... Like, because he's lost. It, all it's his almost like they were just like, yeah, he's lost his confidence. Yeah, he's lost everything. Yeah. Why is he so uptight, man? He's only, <laughs> he's only an arm around the shoulder. That's all it was, Max. For goodness' sake, I'm, I'm not fully enjoying the Bang Bang Scissor Gang. I'm ready for it to be over. Me too. I'm ready for the Bang Bang the Bang Bang Gang to be back on their own. And, uh, I think and the acclaimed. Yeah. What, yeah. what happened to calling teams like the Eliminators? Oh no! Everyone was waiting for these boys to. <laughs> or like, or like the face punchers. The Bang Bang Scissor Gang, Sam. <laughs> Was hype at the start. It was week yeah. one. I get it, but it just... then they just did a couple of segments where all they did was their catchphrases. They yeah. sort of like, right, let's do something yeah. now. Yeah, and now they are. To be fair, we are playing the the, the long game with uh -huh. Max's sort of dissension into no confidence, and then see if he just mm. batters Jay. Because there was a little bit of a, a tease in this, wasn't there? Where Jay was cutting the promo at the end. Was that this match? Of a, a... might have been on the pre-show of. Um, oh yes, right, yes. yeah. Um, right. In a backstage interview, Stokely Hathaway tries to apologise to Willow Nightingale and Chris Statlander because he's been trying to get them to cheat in matches and stuff. Uh, Willow says, "Stop! This isn't the time for apologies. It's time for revolution." <laughs> She did that on the camera, didn't she, to show that she's She's hard, intense, yeah. <laughs> she, I don't think it suited her at all. Um, <laughs> she, she's too nice, isn't she? Yeah. She's really nice. <laughs> just sounded she, like she was having an asthma attack rather than being like, I'm going to say, if I had to do that, I just sound like it was weird. She <laughs> and Chris are going to kick Sky Blue and Julia Hart's asses. Now, I'm not, a, I'm not a film man at all, but uh, Stokely saying he's a Whoopi Goldberg stan, so he's sorry. What does that mean? don't know. Oh. I'm Joel? not... A, I uh, don't know. Sam. Oh. Sam, uh, film man, I Sam. I, I, I like Whoopi Goldberg. Though. She's really cool. He says, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I've only ever seen Sister Act, I think, back in like 1999. I maybe mm. watched it. Oh, I'll tell you what was on the other night, right? Whoopi, Whoopi Goldberg's irrelevant, but it's such a good... Wait, is it? Is that where th she's undercover as a nun? She's a nun. Oh, she I, is a nun. I've not seen it since 1999. Well, Sister <laughs> Act. She's got a... I think she's... She undercover? She's, yeah, it's like a witness she'll protection it, thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Miss Congeniality was on... Over the weekend. Which is a good film. Sandra Bullock undercover as a as yeah. a Miss World contestant or Miss United States. Mm. What a film. It's really good, isn't, isn't it? Isn't it still? Yeah. It's held up so well. She's Miss United States. Right. <laughs> 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 William Shatner's brilliant in it. And and what's he called? Master Wine. She was only... Michael, Michael Caine. Caine. He's yeah. fantastic in she it. She was only well. 15 <laughs> years old. 
He's good in miscongeniality, <laughs> really good. He plays like the stylist. And he like she's like a rough policewoman and he dresses her up and makes her this like she can pass for a Miss World contestant and he goes, By God, I'm good. Are you really saying good. she he makes her a pretty woman? Oh, it's Jay films. I'm, I'm on board today, I'm see? That's another film she was in. <laughs> <laughs> We've come a long way since episode one, haven't let's, we, Ross? Um, let's hey, five years <laughs> I've sat here watching Jack and Matthew play tennis <laughs> with films and I'm the next. Let's now it's a game of doubles. Speed on. Oh, oh, oh. Is that another film she was in? She's in speed. Yeah. What was she in Cruise about? Control? Don't know. I've, only I, seen I, speed. I've seen Cruise Control once. There, was there a Speed 3? I feel it was a Speed 3 and it was crap. Maybe. Because Cruise Control was ridiculous. I've never, I've it's like, it's a cruise control. ship out of control speed this one. time. Good concept. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Don't slow the bus down. No, and an even better parody with the, the, the milk float. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Tony Schiavone introduces Wardlow, who is confident of finally getting his world title shot after winning tomorrow's All Star Scramble match. I'm going to burp. Do it in the mic, don't waste it. Do it into oh. the, the <laughs> can by the mic so it's even echoier. <laughs> he outlines why he'll beat any of the three possible world champions after Revolution, uh, but is interrupted by Chrissy J, brother of Handy. <laughs> Jericho says he hasn't gotten near the world title since losing it to Moxley, but he knows he's good enough to win it again. Maybe Wardlow is always overlooked because you're just not good enough, Mike. And he calls oh. him his shoot name as well. As soon as Government Jericho names, said that, man. he should have gone, NDA, bitch, mic drop, and then mm. walked out the ring, making mm. things real like Chrissy J. Wardlow <laughs> talks instead. He doesn't say that, but he talks about how the lack of opportunities ruined his personal life for a time, made him forget who he is. He lost his best friend. Is that a real thing? or is that Does he mean MJ? I couldn't tell. Uh, but now he's remembered who he is, and he's done eating scraps. He challenges, challenges Jericho to a fight who seems keen, but then gets attacked from behind by Powerhouse Hobbs. It was another fan. The rocket they were match. Slam Ted. He was heads upside down. That's what he just, said in his promo. Just, 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 so he went up. Because if he strapped it upwards, he would go down. <laughs> I just... Whichever way, I, strap it on I, I just want to see him ripping people's heads <laughs> off. <laughs> Got out the rocket pointing down. <laughs> what? The, the, That's what he said in his promo. He went... What? So either strapped it on, because if he strapped it on the right... No, it would go eh? up if it was the What did he say movie? upside down? He said, he said a couple of weeks ago, he went, when they strapped the rocket to me, I guess they put it on upside down. Oh, that makes sense. Because I've been going <laughs> oh through the floor God. since then. Because he did the flame at the bottom, but if, if he said, yeah, whatever. He said, yeah. Wardlow's promo was really good, though, it I thought. Was I. Yeah. Yeah. These, the line's like, I'll slap the cowboy's mustache into third run, send him back into depression. Mm. Yeah. Oh. Very nice. All the driving references to swerve, get back in your own lane, dance to the back of the line. That's a no no reference, I guess. Mm -hmm. I'm going to kick your front door down and beat you from the basement of the attic. Wartish. Then I let out an audible FFS. When Chrissy J walked out, he's a leech, isn't he? Yeah. He's, well, we're all waxing lyrical about Wardlow's promo a couple of weeks ago, so Chris has gone, meh, I see he's getting popular. Gets on there, doesn't he? He everyone, did it again Everyone this likes week. Hook, and he's... Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, yeah, it's, it's a job Cock for the bounty rush. hunter, and he's, he's, right, double, he's double guns, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he needs to... He's just he's next time Jericho, Jericho comes out, out comes Keith, and he, he just he uses the zip ties on him and it, Jericho's oh, like trying to run away. Oh. Like no, like like Dog the Bounty Hunter. Oh, like Dog the I want Hunter. I want bear mace being used. If if crowds getting glass in their eyes on front row, they're getting oh. bear mace as oh, well. Oh yeah, that was they get told they get told they're at risk. They get a big disclaimer exactly. on the tron. Here. I get to do what I want. Out yeah. he comes, just spraying the whole front. Row. Just wear sunglasses. Um, but I, I thought well, I believed everything Wardlow said, and I guess I'm being harsh on Jericho because we're sat here the next week and it hasn't continued. Yeah. Jericho does that thing when he's cutting a promo on someone from the ramp, and he always does it, and I can't unsee it now. Where he like kind of gestures with one hand like a politician. Is it that? Yeah, it's like that. Yeah. It's like a Savile. Well, no, it's not. It's, <laughs> it's not, like it's not, it's not like that. What was like, that? Like, that? With his cigar. But oh, it's all not. right. No, no, no. Oh God, what's next, Christ? Serena Deeb. <laughs> He's interviewed backstage and is disappointed with the competition since she's returned. She throws out an open challenge. To, and she, well, she called herself the final boss. Mm -hmm. What's next oh, with uh, Mercedes Monet? Possibly. She was talking to her saying, test yourself against the best. Uh, she's undefeated and undeniable and unstoppable. Mm -hmm. uh, See, so I think that was a little throw down to what Mercedes Monet's first match will be. Possibly, yeah. Fair yeah. enough. Um, oh my God, is that private party? It is. And they win a tag match against... 
Right. An so actual bona fide tag team. No. They had a, they had, no, they had a tag team no, entrance. No, they're not a tag team. They did. They appeared at the top of the ramp, like, by, my, like, by magic. Christopher Daniels <laughs> and Matt Seidel. Poof! And they were there. After, yeah, they were a team. <laughs> but Private Party only win after interference from Team Jarrett, and they all, they're all in cahoots. They celebrate mm. together afterwards. I got excited and thought it was going to be Daniels and uh, Kazarian. I thought they were back. Ah, oh, it's TNA's now. Isn't I know it? he's the not Kazarian. even there. Yeah, yeah I know. and then it was uh, it was bloody Sidal, wasn't it's now it? The Impact Hunter. I don't know what he does <laughs> in TNA. To be fair. Yeah, I think he's turned heel. Has he? I saw him cut up where he introduces oh, Killian Dane. I think he's feuding with Eric Young. Dane, big demo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's what? He had a match with. Yeah. He, he turned up there, didn't he? Who? Demo. Demo. Yeah. I forget who Kazarian's on the ramp and he introduces uh, someone from Eric Young's. Eric Young's past. Mm. Mm. Big demo. Anyway, there was oh, a double. Sanity. Right. Yeah. Matt Seidel does a double shoot Hurricane Rana, which is in the conversation for my move of the week because it was fantastic. He did two men at one time. Um, I thought it was a bit of a shame to see Jarrett and the lads have to save Private Party against a team like Daniels and Seidel, mm -hmm. but I guess they're heels, so that's all right. Um, I thought, what was I going to say? Every lad was looking very, very good in there. I've written down Seidel wrestling from page two of the Lucha Wrestling Handbook. Page two? Yeah. What does that so, mean? Just so crisp in his Lucha offense. It was all textbook. <laughs> no, page two. I don't know. It's just slightly the deeper. They're the not, your, yeah. not, not your standard moves. It's, yeah. it's, it's, he's just read that oh, extra right, page. Contents. Page two. Uh, <laughs> private party were looking very good as well, but Daniels can run. <laughs> Daniels was like the Claude McAuley of the piece. Yeah, the glue. Just the hold of midfield, just letting everyone else shine while he yeah. does the dirty stuff. Yeah, of course. But it was, it was good, I thought. I'm, I'm glad to see private party getting going again. Yes, uh, this would lead to further developments at Revolution. Uh, on the pre-show. Wait, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Thunder Rosa wins a quick match against Cassandra Golden. Uh, Thunder Rosa cuts a promo into the camera afterwards, so not on the mic, but it's for the audience at home, saying she won't be pushed aside. And she did that again. She did the fist. Yeah. The L-I-J, cool, tranquilo fist. Thunder Rosa, are we ever going to learn what happened? She had a sore back. I, and that's fair, I think we'll probably learn when a statute of limitations ends and we've got shoots in 10 years. Maybe. I don't think there's going to be... Well, I want to know what happened to Santana. I don't want to know what happened to Thunder Rosa. But either way, I'm happy we've got Thunder Rosa back oh, and looking yeah. strong. But it, it does feel odd that it's just kind of been pushed aside or glazed over. It's yeah. a bit like, And even hey. though she's being presented as strong when she does wrestle, yeah. it's few and far between and she's never on Dynamite. No, it feels like the opportunities have sort of changed. It's like, weird. I, it? I felt like she was going to be the central fixture pillar of that division for a long well, time. Well, she was and then she just yeah. wasn't. And that's it. That's I, I never thought there'd come a point where she'd sort of be moved from that. Mm. Well, like AEW All Access or whatever that show was called, mm. she had a sore back and that's reality TV. It's real. But then <laughs> when she... <laughs> When they were starting up Collision and Punk was going to be in charge of it and everything, and you had wrestlers going into Tony's office like Miro, Miro yeah. she was one of them, mm. saying, I'm not getting opportunities. Yeah. Well, you've been injured. That's what we were told. Mm. I want to know why Thunder Rosa, while wrestling Cassandra Golden, was more golden than Cassandra Golden. She was, she was very, very yeah, gold. She, she had gold, gold hair, time. gold attire from head to toe. Yeah. Cassandra, not as much gold. If you were showing someone that match and they'd never watched wrestling before, they would have assumed that she was Cassandra Golden. Yeah. What does it mean? Sounds like a Tom Campbell yeah. name for a wrestler. It does, yeah. I'm Cassandra Golden. Oh, I'm Tony <laughs> Red. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm Betty Puddings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite Tom name for a wrestler? Um, the team of... Christian Cage, Brian Cage, Killswitch, and Roderick Strong win an eight-man tag against Orange Cassidy, Trent Beretta, Danny Garcia, and Hook. The heels continue the attack after the bell. Daddy Magic Matt Menard leaves guest commentary to save Garcia from a chokeslam through a chair, but ends up taking the move himself. The faces fight back, and the, the show goes off the air with the brawl carrying on. The ramifications for Evolution were off the page. Yeah. So many. Roddy doing the end of hard take to hor Orange on the outside. God, that's a hard sentence to say. Softening him up. <laughs> No, but yeah, it made sense. And he does the attack, yeah, the tactics of eating up the back some more ahead of their match. Then we had the stuff with the patriarchy getting involved. Killswitch was attacking Daddy Magic, which got paid off on collision. Christian and Garcia were going at it. The heels were just stacking the deck against the faces at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, as for the match itself, I just thought Roddy Strong and Garcia carried the most of it, and that was good because it was those two. Yes, I would agree. It was a fun show ending. Big schmoz. It was. Yeah. Big fan of just chaotic show endings anyway, but I think that's just the night row in me. Yeah, you're uh, a WCW boy. Yeah, you're used to mm. everything just ending and then finding out two weeks later what happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're out of time. Yeah, Cage was beating up Hook as well at the end there, which ahead of their match. On Dynamite, yes. Yes. Um, right. AW Revolution, the big pay-per-view, mm. which 
Uh, has been referred to, but I've seen by many online, as one of the best AEW pay-per-views ever. It is? It was very it was good. Really it's the really Revolutions. Good. It's got a case of the Revolutions. Revolutions like the work rate one, isn't it? It's like the one with the good I matches. I missed the kickoff show. Okay, well... The, from what I saw of the main card, it was it was unreal. Oh, yeah. don't you worry. Yeah, we're, we're going to... Pre-show one. Max Caster, again. He's bloody... He's messed up his rap again. hey oh, He oh, choked again. Oh, he did. <laughs> It's an interesting Everybody story. Everybody from the 313. Aye, because right at the minute, he looks like a right dick. Mm. So it's going to be interesting to see how long we do the choking for before something happens. Well, yeah, him and Jay White are going to have an eight-mile rap battle. I hope not. I <laughs> hope so. <laughs> yeah. Um, he messes up the rap, but his team win as the Bang Bang Scissor Gang defeat Team Jarrett, Private Party, and Willie Mack, who's been kind of getting auditioned mm. to join the uh, Private Party. The Bar Highs. Yeah. Uh, Jay White cuts a post-match promo and says that in Boston, maybe he'll have some big business of his own. Huh. What does that mean? Darby big, Allen. Big poo. Darby. Oh, well, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. well, now it's been... <laughs> yeah, it's that been gets been revealed poo. later. <laughs> <laughs> the the beauty of doing these podcasts a few days later. But uh, yeah, the move of the match for me, and it came second in my move of the week this week, was the heel lads doing the strut alongside Double J. That was your second move, second that, place? The, the, the pop that left my being. Ha, ha, ha. That's what it was. I thought everyone got their stuff in apart from Willie and Lethal, who didn't do too much. Even Satnam pushed a few lads over. I was going to say, was, was it mainly Satnam that made the struts so Oh, yeah. Much yeah Willie yeah. was good as well, to be fair. But yes, I think... Uh, they all did the Jarrett. Sanjay yeah. was on the apron doing it. Oh, it was a great time. Uh, Very all nice. seven of them Sanjay fantastic. was dressed like a rapper? Yeah, he had a little do-rag yeah, on, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, what was that about? He's a rapper. Okay. Or maybe he's sending a message sublimely to Max Caster. Mm, mm. Mind game. Psyching him out. Uh, the guns got a lot of their action, but then uh, why are we always build into the hot tag being Billy Gunn? He's had his go. He's an old boy now. Yeah. Maybe. Jay then got another hot tag. Satnam kind of forgot to sell a chop block, mm. but then he did sell the fame master, so that's all right. Yeah. yeah. And in that promo after the match, Jay White goes, see, Max is not that hard when he's doing the crowd work at the start, so that's mm. the genesis of the breakup. Yeah, Max spent that whole post-match promo looking sad, annoyed. Jay White just basically said what's coming up on the show. Yeah. And then guns up and all that. Yeah. We did lambast... Well, I remember me lambasting his main event run yeah. with MJF quite a bit. But it is sad to see how far he's fallen down got, the cards. It got then. referenced by Derby on Dynamite yeah. as well, which we'll get to. Oh, this was exciting now, Sam. Okay. Have you heard of the Tyne Bridge? A yeah, little bit, yeah. Have you heard of Gray's Monument? Is that the uh, the big the big yep yeah high level bridge? Yeah. Oh, was it oh, the high level bridge? Definitely, definitely. Oh, yeah. 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 high level. It's high level. It's the one with the, the yes, oh, the, the yeah, arches. Yeah, the one yeah. where my yeah. kind was in the seventies. Oh, and he jumps over the side. Yeah, yeah, and he's on the little roof. And I walk up pink line and get a little handy J. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly, it used to happen in the mid noughties I wasn't so. there, but yeah. a lad I used to play football with used to go but there. Where so do you think? Know. Where do you think it got its name from as a street? No, I mean the 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 masseuse place at the top. It doesn't do it anymore. But my in the mid oh. in the mid noughties, my friend would go there. I've uh, I don't know I've, if it's the same that's business. That's very interesting because mm. I won't name who, but someone in this office told me recently, last the past year or two, that they went to a massage place on Pingley. <laughs> and got a massage. It wasn't him. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't him. Look at me. But I'm not going to reveal who that was. But There's a short that's list, thrown that that's now thrown <laughs> that into a different light. Very interested. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Kayla went there as well, and the, the signs, oh, right. the the signs on the wall now saying no handy J's. Yeah, no handy J's. Denied. No shoot handy J's anymore. No lads. shoot handy J. <laughs> that's how it ends. But oh. Pac, this promo was brilliant. So Pac's, right, so in, Pac, Pac's getting a Pac massage on Pink Lane, right? <laughs> oh, right. He's sat on the monument, not on top, on the platform. Okay. And he's on the high level bridge, and yeah, he's. Yeah. He's got, got a shirt that says "bastard," just spelt like how <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, yeah, how you for a joke. It. It's amazing. Nice. When he shouts <laughs> at the start of the promo, I am the forgotten bastard. <laughs> I let out another big chore that was fantastic. You sound like Clattenburg on Gladiators. He <laughs> <laughs> but he speaks about being isolated and blinded and broken because he takes his teeth out for this line alone. I think he goes, "How most puppy clock?" Yeah. But his teeth aren't there, so he looks bloody deranged, Scary, so he yeah. does them. Um, but then he goes, but I didn't. Yeah, he, he says he almost died, yeah. He's lost the plot, and it's good. I didn't expect the promo to take the turn of Tony Khan not wanting them. Because he was speaking like Tony Khan didn't want to use them. He shot on Tony Khan. Well, he worked. It was a work, clearly. But, yeah. yeah, but... I yeah. didn't expect to take that turn. And also, if you're Tony Khan, are you mad? I don't He's know. one of the best in the world. Anyway, it'll be very interesting to see. I mean, it seemed like a heel promo. It did. I think he's better as a heel. I really yeah, love yeah, yeah, seeing yeah, him yeah. as just like a, a monster. 
Let him go. I let would him, be let him go. Well. Absolutely wild. I love these Newcastle segments. I want one of those one jumpers. One if anyone's bastard. watching, where do you get one from? <laughs> I'm tempted to go to that place that well, I used to get me bollocks done for the reactions. Oh, Florida print. No, I forgot. No, not Florida. <laughs> logo bear. Oh, logo bear. Up the logo bear in Newcastle upon Tyne. They oh, do it. They do it? embroidery and everything. That's why I might come go to them for a, a bastard jumper. <laughs> B-A-S. Without the R. T-A-D. I like it. It was great. Um, and in the final pre-show match, Willow Nightingale and Chris Statlander beat Julia Hart and Sky Blue. After the match, it's quite heavily implied that Willow's going to go after Julia Hart for the TBS title, and then that gets further confirmed on Dynamite. So, yeah. I should a hell of a pounce Willow, which yeah. sets up the end of the match. Uh, Willow and Statlander doing the double fallaway slam on Sky Blue who jumped off the top. It was a good thing. I want to see more of Willow and Statlander be a team before there was the inevitable, like, yeah. oh, I've won the title and I'm not, now I'm jealous angle, which I think it might be going to. Is Chris Statlander capable of being a jealous I know they're, lady? Both, they're both very natural baby faces. Yeah. I liked it when they dressed up yeah. as Pulp Fiction. Mm. I feel like Statlander can go monstrously heel. But I just, it, it's the right set of circumstances you need but to... But she's got to, such a kind voice. Like Trish Stratus. You maybe need a a, a like a, a manager then? I don't know. Mm, maybe. How do you... Yeah, she is too nice, isn't she? Fourth place in my move of the week was the Gunter-like chop from Willow onto Julia. Oh, the one that got a big reaction. So hard. It was, she was down on one knee for like a, a 30, 40 seconds later was mm. Julia. I thought you were going to say double fall away slam because two people. No, I, no, no, no. I, I, that was the theme I was picking up on for your <laughs> moves of the week were all doubles. So I was like, oh. I always pay attention. I know if it's something that's happened, if it's been pre-recorded, I never skip it. I always pay full attention to Willow's entrances. She's captivating. Mm. She comes out, she's doing a happy face. Maybe I'm just a child. It's, <laughs> oh, she's happy to be there. She's doing her dance. She's for, a, for a brief moment, you get to escape crippling reality. Yeah, she yeah. goes, duh, 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 duh. and then and then like a, like she takes the shape of a star. She goes, duh, 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 boom, and does like a starburst with her body. <laughs> Wrestling. She's unbelievable. There's nothing like it. Yeah. Um... Right, the main show opens with Christian Cage versus Danny Garcia for the TNT title. Thanks to interference from other members of the patriarchy, though, Christian Cage retains the belt. Not yeah. before Garcia gets to hump him in the face, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. With his turtleneck over his head as well. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. Just properly, yeah. Mm. It was um, it was a good match. <laughs> his turtleneck <laughs> over his head. No, no, no. His genuine real turtleneck <laughs> over no, his no. cranium, <laughs> over his skull. Uh... <laughs> good opener. It, the show would scale higher peaks, but it was a good opener. It was really good, yeah. Daniel Garcia got a loud reaction when he came out, which was nice to see. Uh, Christian doing the classic heel bollocks of pretending to have his injured ankle. Yeah, you knew, you knew it was coming, but because it's him, it just works when, even when he does the expected. Mm -hmm. um, as we mentioned, mm -hmm. the turtleneck and the air hump. He is a sports entertainer, is Daniel Garcia. After mm -hmm. all this time, it was just a classic story of one man taking down an entire family. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> also... How massive is Shayna Wayne? She's so tall. She's a tall lady. Really tall. Uh, that bit where her and Daddy Magic are face to face. Yeah. And she tries to make it like a cinematic movie moment. Like she does this like saucy wink. Mm. And then why? Oh, I just thought you, you're not, you shouldn't be on this on the screen there, Mother Wayne. They kind of miscommunicated the block of the slap. In yeah. A way. Like, it was oh. better on paper than it was in practice. Um, yeah. There was lots of near falls and Christian Cage hanging onto the ropes to escape. I thought the crowd made those moments better because they were loud. Yeah. And it was, yeah, as you said, just a nice opening match to the show. When they were doing that stare down, uh, Matt Menard and, and Miss Mrs. Wayne, it was it reminded me of um, Floyd Mayweather, Conor McGregor, right? For a reason. Because <laughs> obviously McGregor had to drop weight to fight Mayweather. Right. Because he's naturally a bit of a bigger guy. And when they were face to face, you could see that McGregor's skull was so much bigger than Floyd Mayweather's <laughs> little boy head. Because <laughs> Mayweather's a little tiny man, right? Um, and even though McGregor's not very tall, he's got like a longer, bigger skull than yeah. little Floyd. <laughs> and, um, and that's what it reminded me of. Because Shayna Wayne is just a bigger person than Matt Menard. And I thought she could batter him if she wanted to. She probably could. Probably Maybe very, they should do it. heels as well. Like, but... Just let her. Yeah. I can't believe how small Floyd Mayweather is. <laughs> <laughs> um, next up, Eddie Kingston beats Brian Danielson. And as per the stipulation, Danielson does, after a couple of teasers, he does shake Eddie's hand afterwards. It does feel like he's being cheeky as well. Eddie takes it a bit too seriously initially when he mm. says to, well, he, he doesn't he doesn't shake his hand initially. And then he turns and he's like, no, no. And then he comes back and he's like, yeah. And then when he turns around again to walk off, Brian's like, oh, give over, man. 
<laughs> like, as in, like, oh, how are we? Look He's at still you, getting upset about this. Because that's the story, because Brian was annoyed at the potential not being realised by Eddie. <laughs> yeah. So I guess this is now the potential mm. being realised mm. by Eddie, and Daniel's like, yeah. I'm sorry, Brian's like, yeah. But Brian's, you've done it, you've proven yourself. Yeah. Brian's still acting like a bit of a dick, isn't he? But he yeah. did He did raise his hand, and Eddie, because he's a pro wrestler, goes, not that hand, You've that one's so really good. Yeah. The match was... Hard hitting fun for everyone. Mm. That's I like the start where Brian's a bit like it's like a cat and mouse game, isn't it? Brian's a bit apprehensive because he noted in the promos that Eddie's a much better striker than he is. Mm. So he was wary of the strikes, and that's why he was hesitant to get involved. I thought it was a simple story of Brian getting like scared to be embarrassed at the start, then he got a bit too confident, and then Eddie fought back from underneath and, and it won. was like a side to Brian you don't usually see a lot of, which I think was quite nice. That we have that some we bit, have some times more, recently, but yeah. A bit more cautious though, with yeah. someone like oh, Kingston who you like you'd expect him to have a game plan and be working. right in there ah. and, and then but yeah I, I i think like i i could i could go for more of this like much yeah. more like with kingston especially i want to see where oh. they're gonna they're gonna push him eventually i too. was delighted that he won that tournament and everything yeah but i wasn't delighted that the prize was that belt because i thought this is gonna be an excuse for some reason tony khan doesn't want to put eddie kingston in the main event scene yeah. where i think he belongs because mm-hmm. he's one of the best promos in the world mm-hmm. and yeah, he's just kind of in his own little box. At Unless the moment. they're able to use it to further him into that picture, which I think you could catapult you could him do, through. But I don't think they will. I don't think they will, but yeah. it's one of them where, like, I think Brian Kingston, you could run that back and I'd watch it again. Well, again, they had again, a promo again, again. where, which kind of, it wasn't on any of these shows. It was more like, it was just on Twitter, wasn't it? Yeah. Right. But um, they're both sat in the medical room after, and um, Kingston sort of says, like, thanks for finally showing yeah. my hand and everything, and he leaves, and then Brian cuts, like, a hell of a promo himself. Um and it seems to suggest that this might be the last match between them for a while. Well, I was going to say, you kind of get that little pat on the back. Yeah. I think right before it cuts to black, you get that sort of, yeah. as if they're about to just sort of so, go over the back together. But they've had a few matches in the past few months, so I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be surprised to see him do it again. But yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe a, a break. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to acknowledge those promos just before the match where they had uh, Lexi Nair and Renee saying the words for the wrestlers while mm. they were warming up. I thought they created a big fight feel. And also Danielson let out a Tom, John, Tom Jones Ha! <laughs> Just as he was walking out. It reminded me of Megan O'Leary from the UFC. No idea. She stands, she stands there, right? Very good at her job and has really shiny hair. And uh, she stands there and goes, yeah, thanks, guys. Here comes the... And she, the camera, she stood right next to the entrance ramp. And then the fighter walks out with, its, with his entourage and the camera moves with the fighter. But she's still talking until she's just a speck in the horizon. And she never flubs her lines. She's amazing. So yeah. she's like the reverse Alfred Hayes from WrestleMania 1. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you see the wrestlers get smaller and smaller in that one. <laughs> he's in the way. He's so in the way. Um, As you see, the executioners just went down to the <laughs> ring and he's just fumbling around he's behind class, him, isn't falling he? over a fan. Um, Wardlow wins the All Star Scramble match against Chris Jericho, Powerhouse Hobbs, Hook, Brian Cage, Lance Archer, Dante Martin, and CMLL wrestler Magnus. Mm. We all love him. Guess. First time I see him, I think. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, in doing so, uh, Wardlow becomes the number one contender. Yeah, Wardlow does a shoot Hurricane Ronald during this match. You need to go watch it back because it is it's the good. best one I've seen since Naomi and Jimmy Uso <laughs> back in the day. It's better than that. that uh, one. Uh, I like how the match was sort of split in half at the start because it was just the big lads meat. versus the big lads. Meat. And, and the little lads meat. versus the little lads. Less enthusiastic meat chance for that yeah. second bit, which I think was 100% Jericho's idea. Yeah. It seemed to be. It did, yeah. (laughs) He was definitely directing the smaller lads portion of the match. That being said, though, the double line salt from him and Magnus on Archer was a cool spot, Mm -hmm. I thought. Uh, Hobbs was looking great as well, throwing around Lance Archer. And Dante, his work with Hobbs was good as well. He did a nice snap suplex. It was all right. It was that's what I remember from Revolution. It was an all right snap match. He did a nice snap (laughs) suplex. And at the end of the day, that's wrestling, that is. It was an all right match. It was probably one of like my less favorite matches on the show, but it was a very strong show, so that's mm. not saying a lot. But um, at least the right person won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you look good winning as well. Yes. You had a shiner as well to show yeah. you've been through war. The only bad thing about the match was uh, the fact you, when you're at the end of the show watching Sting's promo get cut off, you're like, ah. Mm. I know it might go somewhere because Wardlow's, I think he's now got a match against Joe, hasn't he? Booked for some time it's in the not too distant future. For... Is it Boston? It might be Boston or is it next week? Next week is Boston. Yeah. And maybe it is, yeah. It might be. But yeah. I guess at the time you didn't know that, that match was going to happen so soon, you're thinking, oh, that match was largely, largely inconsequential where we could add more time for the stinger. Yeah. yeah. True. Um, I think, 
how are they going to have this title match? They're going to have him walk in and win it. Right? Do they? Do they just and do he's that? Have, I'd, give I'd the love that. Call. How yeah. do they not? Yeah. <laughs> how do they not? How do they do this? It's Swerve whatever they do is yeah. going to make everything else messy, isn't it? So it's like I. Because you you have to after he, after you gave him that promo where he said I've never had a title shot and I've beaten everyone and he delivers to, it with such like great. gusto as well. Then how? I hope the Wardlow what are thing's gonna not going to happen. <laughs> what are they gonna do? I think they give him the belt and then just make it even more confusing. And I then the have people hangman and uh, sorry hangman and swerve for the title building towards the summer. That's where we're being and going. Then, and then in comes the 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 knackered like uh, like car you wouldn't expect who was sort of just pushed by the wayside <laughs> in the pit. A bit too much. Is that and then he comes out and he, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I hope it's not just... Wins. A, and everybody's like, what the fuck? What? <laughs> it, it's, it feels like it might be a Wardlow, like classic Wardlow thing of just getting it to a point and then going, whoa, I forgot about it. It does this feel like... I, I hope it's not for that reason. because it's not, just But at like, the same time, I don't want him to have the belt yet. No, but uh, why? Why would you put this situation there if it's I, not... I think we're all probably agree. Like, Swerve is probably going to end up with the belt. Yeah. All in. If we're going that far, that's why oh, I, I thought Osprey was going to be in for that. it at all. In. Oh my god! <laughs> There's so many people. <laughs> there are so many people. Um, so yes, that was the All Star Scramble. But are they going to do the meat madness in a, in the future? I, don't know. I think he 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 suggested that it would be it would done down the line. I okay. think in his Twitter. Who update. Tony? Yeah. Okay. I think was it a Twitter update? But I'm sure he said because it, it's not possible. Yeah. We're doing this instead for now. Okay. And then that'll happen. Um, Roddy Strong defeats a banged up Orange Cassidy to become the new international champion. Um, after the, we'll talk about the match first and then we'll do the, after, uh, good match. Yeah. Yeah. I thought Roddy's cape and paintball mask look was bad. <laughs> yeah. It was really bad. I don't know if it was on purpose bad, but it looked like it was. I didn't understand the reference. It's kind of, it's a I bit Death Stranding-y, but it, it sort of. I but... think it was some sort of super villain or comic book person. Oh, that really cool then. Hello, Ben Potter. <laughs> no! I, ben listens to ben the podcast, podcast yeah. <laughs> on, on his Mount of Omnipotence. And he's just been called a nerd there. No, yeah. no. I was I, stealing his catchphrase to call Roddy Strong a nerd off the back of your... Ben Potter calls people nerds as a catchphrase. Yeah. Nerds. Oh, like in that way, in the Homer Simpson way. Yeah. Well, as long as you've not <laughs> just insulted him. That's all... No, that's better what Ben, I'm saying that. will be a tribunal, Ross. <laughs> scaling mountains, as he so often does. Well, he's going to go do Everest before Darby Allen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope he comes back. Oh, more on that later. That pro yeah, was I'm terrifying. Darby, yeah. um, but Orange, obviously, was coming at the match with the sword back because he got battered in the thing we saw on the uh, on the thing, on the, yeah. on the on the collision. That's the one. That's the show. Uh, so he just focused all the attack on the back, and it was fantastic. That thing on the ropes was horrible. Oh, my God. But in the best possible way. And I thought there was a nice thrilling end of the match with Orange fighting back and Roddy going, no, nah, I'll just snap your spine instead. It was a good match. <laughs> yeah. It was it was proper uh, squeaky bum, though, mm. in the corner. That yes. was just bad. <laughs> I was like, oh. But I, I, on Friday night, I found myself watching Orange Cassidy's Twitch channel. Okay. Where Orange Cassidy sits there and plays YouTube videos of like just 80 songs. Just he'll, he'll fire up the music video. Like Belinda Carlisle was on what? last that week. That can't be what legal. He, he just sits there. <laughs> He's just like, yo, you should, I think we should listen to this song. And he plays the song and he's like, yeah, it was I cool. I guess you could say that and he's just goes, being a radio DJ. Yeah, yeah, but he's on Twitch just playing YouTube videos and we sat there for nearly two hours <laughs> watching him. <laughs> Did just you? play the hits from the 1980s, yeah. And a couple oh. from the 70s, it was good. Um, <laughs> that wow. key change in heaven is a place on earth, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ah, oh. The bit that gets me is the little distant... Hell. Yeah, that's the build-up before the... Do, up the Ooh, babe. Right. Um, after the match, though, who's that? It's Kyle O'Reilly, who jumps the guardrail and hugs Roddy. The Undisputed Kingdom offer him a T-shirt, signifying a spot in their stable, but he rejects it and whispers something to Strong before leaving. And he looks... Tired. Shattered, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I didn't realise it'd been... Uh, they said on Dynamite nearly two years. 2022? Oh, yeah, yeah. No wonder he looks a bit packed. I know. It really doesn't feel like it's been that long, does it? It's like, but it also... Maybe because we didn't really see much of him anyway. Yeah. yeah. So. But it also seems like a scary situation because I mm. read something about his arm and that that's the reason he's wearing that thing on the back of his arm because right. of something that happened to his arm where he that's, lost... Feet. That was a yeah. diabetic thing, wasn't it? Yeah, was it? Yeah, so my mm. sister has the... I'd, I'd asked her the specific thing because I showed her the picture and she was like, oh, it's that thing. It's like she knew the exact brand. Oh, right. But it's, they, if, it's if it is what I think it is, it's uh, essentially rather than having to inject yourself over and over again, 
Okay. It sort of automatically monitors it and sends it to your phone, and you can sort of divvy up your insulin via your phone straight through that. But there's a needle always in you when that's. It's only like that big. But it sounds like it's in. It sounds like his injury was scary as well. Oh like, god, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know what. I, I guess we'll learn more. There was a bit more of a hint mm. on. The, I've got that jumper, and so has Joel. Nice. I just I should have all worn it. We should have yeah, all we've, worn it. We've all got that yeah. jumper. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> have you? No, I've not got that one. Oh. No, 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 no. Right. Good to see Kyle. <laughs> but sorry, I couldn't. I had to say it once I remember. Once I realised, I was yeah. like, oh yeah, I've got that one. Thirty whole pounds. Adidas outlet. Banging. John Moxley. Bro, bro keys. Nah. Oh. Gretna. Oh, oh. Scotland. Is it Scotland? It, it, sort of, yeah. It's it is, isn't it? It's, it's like, <laughs> it's just over the line. John Moxley and Claudio Castagnoli <laughs> of the Blackpool Combat Club defeat FTR in a tag match. The Road Warriors tribute gear was tight. Yeah, yeah. spiky. <laughs> Come out of the crowd in spikes. <laughs> in North Carolina, though, uh -oh. you want to be careful. They're fighting the heroes. Although the crowd was more split than I thought. There was, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was a proper slow burner of a match, though. Like, BCC not think, because Moxley shouts in Cash's head, I think he says, I don't think you're poo. But the S word, so yeah, it sounds yeah, cooler. Yeah, yeah. But then Cash gets a shot in, and then Dax fights back, and it just turns into what you would expect a, ma a match between these two teams to be. There was doomsday devices going on mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. There was blood. There was blood. There are lots. Dax speared the ring pole head first. Yeah, And left did. the ring. I don't know if it was a shoot opening or a gigged yeah. one. I assume it was a giggy, giddy, giggy, giggity goo. Mm. It was just a mess, whatever it was by the end of it. Yeah. It was, yeah. Uh, and they lost in their home state. How dare they? Oh, dare. They can never return. No. I was a big fan of Claudio reversing the shatter machine into a big swing. Yes. And then Dax does the be one of the best Kurt Angle kickouts I've seen in recent times when yeah. Moxley kicks him and then it's like a two and three quarter kick out. But he still lost via, I think he could choke him out, didn't he? Yeah. Or did he tap out? Well, no, because there's a bit where Claudio tries to break it up. Is it Claudio? Yeah, Claudio. I think so. Cash mm. tries to... No. Claudio snatches Cash away when it looks like he's going to break yes. up Mox and thing. Yeah, so that was a hell of a finish. I'm, t I'm trying to... I've just realised, actually, a lot of submission finishes on this show. We're going back to the glory days of the early 2000s. All right, that was the first one. <laughs> I've got that a bit <laughs> wrong. <laughs> but there was more. Anyway... Thanks to a distraction from Luther and interference from Mariah May, dressed as an earlier version of her. That time got me. Yeah, I thought it was her. Uh, Timeless Tony Storm beats Diana Perrazzo to retain the AW Women's World Championship. Uh, not a lot of women dressing on the show. This was, I think, maybe maybe the shortest match. Yeah, could have potentially, been. Potentially, yeah. Um, I think so. But apart from pre-show, this was the only women's match on the show. And it wasn't what I wanted Why? it to be. Because I wanted them... Uh, the Tony gimmick is hilarious and a really good character, but I I wish she would tone it down for her actual matches. I thought that this is the most toned down it's been. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. I still feel more like more aggression could shine through, but I guess that's more my personal preference of like I like aggressive. Okay. Characters, right? Aggressive. So. Sound like aggressive women. Yeah, is what we've learned. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, it's. <laughs> um, but <laughs> but Diana, where do they go with her from here? She's lost now. Yeah. Well, she did make Tony tap, but uh, Luther was distracting the referee mm. at the time. That is where we're sort of uh, the Tony. Tony did visibly tap. Um, oh yeah, she did. Yeah, yeah. Was the, yeah, that is true. So I think we're going to be able to extend that a little bit. But mm. once we get Boston out of the way, or maybe the next show, then yeah, maybe it's the first in a series. Yeah. Although I think I think there's another lady who will beat her for the championship. Yeah, and it's. Bloody Sasha Banks. Mercedes Money. Mercedes so Money. Money. Mercedes Money. Money. I was a bit disappointed with the match in total, though. Just the, the two lasses involved, I thought the action would have been a bit more, to use mm. that word again, tight. They've probably had better matches themselves yeah. in the past between each other. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, it, it was still all right, though. It was okay. Um, in his first match as a full-time member of the AW roster, Will Ospreay beats stablemate Konosuke Takeshita. Kyle O'Reilly, uh, no, Kyle Fletcher celebrates with Osprey afterwards ahead of their match on Dynamite, which commentary announced. Now, this match was, I thought, excellent. R, R, R. Ron. It's time, Joel. Ron Seal does what he says on the tin. I don't know if you know this. Oh, Sam, um, have you seen it, Sam? Is this your shucky ducky quack? No. We'll have to show Sam, Joel, if you can. Is there a way of showing we Sam? Yes. Yeah, we, we've started calling matches Ron Seal because. Does, what it does exactly what it says on the tin. And that's what this match did here. 
Um, he's going to have to go scrolling, isn't he? He's going to have to go scrolling. <laughs> oh, dear, Joel. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Well, there you hey, go. You know, hey, there you go. Hey. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, he's gonna doubt. Just play it in, in Slack. Why not? It's a bit of. He's downloading it. Downloading it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's already done. Downloading it. God, all the people listening for this bit of the podcast specifically, and we're fanning around with this can of Ron Seal. Uh, <laughs> Sam's never seen it before. He's got to plug the speaker. Oh, in. <laughs> we're not prepared, Joel. Uh, this is amazing. This <laughs> oh. on. The speakers on. are not plugged oh, in. Well. Oh, well. So it's going it's to be silent. Who does that? Oh, Sam's plugging them in. We're, t- we're <laughs> going all the way with this, apparently. Uh, Could have showed you in post. I can't, <laughs> I can't wait for the, the break in the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It's probably not worth it now, is it? It's taken way oh, too God, long. Do you remember that God. era of the podcast where it would just break a lot yeah. of the time? It would just stop working. That was yeah. sad. One. That was Good bad. Work. It's not worth That's it. All right. That's all right. That's all right, Sam. It's, it's just it's a little that noise. We'll watch the silent version. Oh, I couldn't get it to work. That's anyway, right. right. This uh, was the. S- uh, There's no sound. It does what it says, and then it's here. Nice. Oh, damn. Anyway, <laughs> this is the sort of match. Sorry, everybody listening. This is the sort of match you show a non-wrestling fan to make them a wrestling fan of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was another scary, scary, scary moment in the corner. Oh, that, the that, brain that big thing. Brain, yeah, and he just... I think... Should have maybe caught more of the top turnbuckle, but it just go just straight vertical drop. Well, I think his head was meant to land on the top turnbuckle. Yeah, yeah. And it was just like, or well, the back of his shoulders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because uh, it was funny in the post-show press conference where he's like, I don't want to get me bloody arse hit. Yeah. But look, here's me arse. Not me full arse now, just half me arse. Yeah, he, he rolls over, though, like straight he, after that. He's, he's back, obviously just... Essex. You've got more like... That's all I can do. East End. All, all right, okay, do. fair enough, yeah. Essex. Yeah, I don't want to get off me, uh, half, half my ass, eh? Yeah, you oh. got, yeah, that's kind of that was better. <laughs> Let's go down the sugar hut and take some cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, to Kester. But then all space got more of that going on. All right. <laughs> <laughs> He's been sick everywhere, audio listening. Uh, to Kester. How is he talking like that all the time? It does seem to have mm. a lot more energy than like when you're from down there. You got to do more to just oh live. Oh boy! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what a giant ear! Mm. Uh, to catch yeah, If he was northern, <laughs> he'd just do headlocks. <laughs> he wouldn't do any of the moves he To catch has the best of the German suplexes. His mm. bridge is almost as good mm. as Alicia Fox's. He reminds oh. me of a horse. Like he's so powerful and tall. I just get real horse, but real. Equine vibes from him. He's, he's very elegant, very mysterious, but very powerful. Yes. Don't exactly. go behind him and start him. He'll kick you in the his face. His legs are massive. He did that. Um, there was like one move into the like the wheelbarrow thing. Yeah. But then Osprey went, <laughs> yeah. And that was the Booker T heel kick out of nowhere. He does a bit of that as well. But <laughs> that was when he did the forward <laughs> hidden blade. So like the non hit, like the obvious blade. He did yeah. the forwards one. The flashing blade. And then and then Takeshi kicked out. Of, <laughs> yeah. And then Takeshi kicked out of one. And yeah. everyone went, oh my God. And some people didn't like it on Twitter, but I did. Oh, I, I did. thought it was great. I think you know what you're signing up for when you see matches like this. So if they're not going to, if they're going to not sell it properly, like, you know, they did back in the 80s, mm-hmm. that's fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. These are two Power Rangers. Well, doing some cool yeah. flips and whatnot. Like you can just go make yourself a copper or get another can out. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's loads. There was the Oscar cutter reversal into the blue thunderbolt, oh, which is yes. amazing. Yeah. Oh, yes. How many, he was really strong to catch He is really strong. Yeah. It was uh, just too much. Yeah, I don't know what happened with the package pile driver thing. Then there was another thing into a flying thing by Osprey, followed by the kick out at one. That was the one. I think he kicked out one twice, did he? Or just once? Well, was I think Takeshita kicked out one yeah. at one point. Yeah. Oh, right. Maybe yeah. it was that thing. Yeah, that's yeah. what, yeah. And then there was a Tiger Driver 91. Mm. Which looks horrible, but, but the not hidden... as horrible as the Omega one. Yeah, yeah, but the hidden blade looked lovely. The strikes as well. They were laying them on thick, so they were just the, the forearms yeah. and whatnot. They were all making oh, noises. The catches were amazing. Mm. Yeah, they were really good. That was kind of the story of like the first half of the match, at least. Yeah, I felt like Robert De Niro and Gerard Depardieu <laughs> in that bed watching this match. Yeah, getting a shoot handy J <laughs> of wrestling action. Um, it was. Um, I don't know what we say good. to really convey how good it was. It was very, very good. It's got to be match of the year, surely already. Oh, wow! Oh, it's well, it's got to be. I think when I, when when you think of a standard Osprey match of the year candidate, fair, I think it goes above what I would expect out of that, okay. or what I've come to expect out of a standard well, Osprey match Osprey, of the year. Osprey had a another match that's been talked about as a match of the year contender last month mm. against Michael Oku and Rev Pro. Oh yeah, yeah, our one. Now I watched it. 
And I'm a big fan of Oku and Osprey. It just wasn't for me. It wasn't your sort of vibe. It wasn't for me. It was it was a bit too much. Right. They were telling like three stories at once. There was the stuff with Amira, uh, Oku's wife at ringside. But then there was also stuff harking back to their first match. And and it went 40 minutes and it was just, there was like, you know how Lord of the Rings has got like four endings? Yeah. And it just keeps going. It felt like that a bit. Is Osprey Whereas, Frank Zappa? Why is that? Like, he's just like a mentalist that can do things that nobody can do, and everybody in and around him brings this elite level performance to everything. Well, okay, was, and it's, were, it's like, what? Like, he's just. The work was really good in that Oki yeah. match. Obviously, they're both amazing in the ring. It was more just the story it told that I wasn't a huge fan yeah. of. But Melter's been like, it's one of the best matches he's ever seen. But this one, more stripped down, more strike. Mm. It was like, people don't like the way Osprey does too much sometimes, but this was like refined like it was just all for the benefit of having a good match like yeah. by the end of that Kyle Fletcher match on Dynamite I was like yeah this is one of those matches where it is too much a little bit yeah a little bit, a little bit, bit too bit, yeah. yeah the icing's too thick on the kick mm. um, but yeah this one on, on Revolution I just I want them to take them down the, the sperm bank the pair of them and just have them <laughs> provide a sample and mix it together mm. to make one super sample can spray to Kester can spray to Kester <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, and then have just Tony Khan should do that, and then just that should be his performance mm. center, just churning out wrestlers of these two's just mixed sperm. Well, yeah. if there's if there's, there's if probably there's, a lot of if there's game of girl bathwater, <laughs> if there's game of girl bathwater, oh just, just sell jars of it. If you had okay. game of girl bathwater on your Sam Driver, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, sorry, I don't know why I've done that there. Um, yeah, really good match. Uh, it's an early. It's up there for match of the year, but there's a lot. There's a lot. I know. Call there. the police. It's off. No, it's there's over. A lot of, there's a lot of. The, we don't know. <laughs> we don't know what Gunter could provide. We've got him winning the championship at Wembley as well. I look forward to mm, yeah. Possibly, possibly so. It's gotta happen. Maybe it's happening. Especially after put the reports, your mortgage on it. It's happening. Especially after the report. The reports of um, Dave Meltzer said that like legends backstage and that had never seen Osprey matches before. They just mm. heard how good he was and were like. Yeah, whatever. But then they saw him and they were like, oh, actually, no. Yeah, he is really good. I want him in That's there nice with Steamboat. That's nice to hear how Chris though. Jericho felt about the situation. <laughs> <laughs> I want him in there with Steamboat because I saw a picture of uh, him talking to Steamboat backstage and I was like, mm. yeah, we know Steamboat could go like 15 years ago. Oh, yeah. So he can probably still go, he even though it's it, been man. like 15 years. He needs um, to get a 10-minute ma- ten yeah. match with Osprey. Yeah. Go on. I just don't want to hear any more legends trying to tell us what and what isn't good wrestling because they if it's don't not watch, got they guns don't watch in it, it. They there's don't no want This is the first Osprey match they've seen. Shut up, man, bro, dog. No, no, that's why I thought. Really. <laughs> he wasn't even there. No, he wasn't there contractually. Um, Samoa Joe defeats Paige and Strickland to retain the AW World Championship because the other two were just too distracted by their hatred for each other. Simple story. That's the way it should have gone, and that is the way it was gone. Yes, that is the way it was gone. <laughs> Although, <I> really... <laughs> sorry, carry on. No, I was just going to say, big fan of Hangman's entrance, just setting that stall up there because he was just. Mm effing and blinding towards Swerve all the way down. That's how obsessed he was. Um, it was a straight three-way for the opening stretch of the match where each man was just as good as the last. Mm. Then all of a sudden, Swerve and Hangman, they do the double power bomb where they didn't mean to help each other, but they do on Joe. Mm-hmm. Then when they're slowly rising up, they realize, oh, I've just helped you, but I don't like you. And then they just started doing it, and it was on like Donkey Kong. Yes. Yeah, like the pressure uh, that you could feel building throughout the match, I think, was there. It got palpable at certain points with you know Hangman just really... Uh, like throwing things out the way in mm. order to 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 get what he wants, and and I think yeah, more of this, please. Um, I think I'm lower than you two on this match. I'm the really uh, yeah. I was always looking for the story in it because like I like the moment where Swerve like clearly knocks out Joe with the house call kick. Yeah, and Joe's out there. He's done the SmackDown too. Like yeah, he's like, completely gone. He's gone. He could pin him, but he doesn't. He goes straight for Hangman, which obviously bit him on the arse. Mm-hmm. Joe was down for ages. He would have won if he went for Joe, but he didn't, and it bit him on the arse. Hangman didn't just bump the ref. He beat him down. But then he if, he beat, if he beat Joe, it would have been, you'd never beat me. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, the, so many the layers. Thing, the, the, stuff that took, <laughs> ah, the stuff that took me out of it was, I've just punched the desk. I was so angry about this. Um, the, there was one or two instances where they were like late to break up the pinfall, mm. and you saw the ref going like, <laughs> the levitating hat. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Still good. Like, I'm saying. should just shoot count three. I'm teaching him a lesson. <laughs> I'm saying that. Where is that referee? <laughs> I'm saying that I didn't like it that much, but it, it's once again worth saying that this was a really good show. So it just 
compared in the context of the show, yeah. there were other matches probably better. But the story, Jack. Oh no, the story was good. Yeah, Hatman used good. the title trying to win, then Swerve was offered by Nana. Oh, the crown. Yeah, and, and he, he just he said no, 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 no. Big pressure, I apply. <laughs> But I really enjoyed Hangman smashing Bryce in the face. Yes. I've not really got anything against Bryce Oh, many of us do in this Andrew office. hates him, doesn't he, on the pictures? <laughs> I really? think it's Owen. It's Owen I hate yeah. him. But yeah, I've not really got... But <laughs> seeing him do that was them. really satisfying. Imagine both of them bullying poor Bryce. <laughs> Yeah, and when Owen gets that little sly smile, he does go. go. Have you ever seen yeah. a sadistic? Oh, yeah, I get yeah. all the time. Sadistic, you must know yeah. sly smile. You've got it yourself. No, well, you're, yeah. you're, in, you're part of the clique, aren't yeah. you, you Joe? But Owen no, does no, a proper, no. like, without teeth. Like, oh. <laughs> can't do it. Yeah, that's horrible. The pop. <laughs> it's just, a, I think only Merseyside people can do it properly, but yeah. The pop for Swerve's buckshot on Hangman at the end was fantastic. Mm. Mm. Um, and I like the fact that Joe stealed it, stealed it, stole it. He, uh, he stole it. Um, that was a brilliant end of the match. Brilliant. It was a good. It was a good ending, to be fair. It, it means the story continues, which yes. I'm in favour of. And then the main event, man, which uh, it was myself, Joel, and Pierce who were in here. What did you guys? But Pierce was definitely watching it. Were you? Able yeah, to I hardly saw any of this. I was editing. You were busy editing yeah, when it was happening. Yeah, yeah. So me and Pierce were like in awe of what was going on. Uh, the main event is Sting's retirement match. He and Darby Allen beat the Young Bucks in a chaotic tornado tag to retain the AW tag team titles. <clears throat> Sting gives a farewell speech afterwards, which is unfortunately cut off by the end of the pay-per-view broadcast. But that's just telling the part. That's just the bones of what happened here. There was so many things. The entrance with, with the two the sons. sons uh, the, oh, I've forgotten, isn't it? The, the video gaming son. The one that was yes. surface sting. Garrett. Garrett. Yeah. He looked unbelievable. Mm. The other one looked unbelievable as well, but Garrett especially just looked like Sting. Yeah. Sting. Apparently he'd taken time <laughs> off from his gaming YouTube channel to get in the gym because he wanted to look good for this. Yeah. And it paid off. He was cutting because he, he, I watched the video he did where he was just like, oh, by the way, over the weekend I helped my dad. And it just turns out my dad's <laughs> Sting. <laughs> <laughs> and he sat there. Because um, he's on about like, apparently hit the muscles that he had didn't look too good on TV. So he had to cut. Slimmed out, yeah. Slimmed, yeah right. Which yeah. is fair get, play to get him. Get popping. <laughs> um, shame on AEW, though, right? Just for oh. one part. Because everyone was saying, like, where's the WCW footage? Does everyone just jump to the conclusion that WWE were asked but didn't give it? Apparently, WWE weren't even asked. So why aren't AEW asking the question? Or should WWE, WWE give it up? And just say, hey, we see what's happening there. Should we just, yeah? I don't think they would have done that. Yeah. No, no, I think they, they're the type of company you need to go and ask them, and they need to have the control over the situation. I've and really a very big thanks to WWE. F on them the then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, there was that bit as well at the start where Sting sat in the empty cinema. Oh, it was emotional. It was. Um, it's Showtime and all that. It was like Fre there was a promo package with Freddie Blassie, I think it was, where he's watching footage of himself. Oh man, that's one of the best Mania openers ever. Which yeah. one's that again? So is it seventies? It might be seventy. Yeah, he sat remember. and it's, it's it's all black and white. And it, yeah. or maybe it's not black and white, but he's. I in think his... by the time he stands yeah. up at the end, it's in color. It reminds me a bit of the Johnny Cash Hurt video for yeah. some reason. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think, mm. yeah, it's just oh man. Um, obviously Sting's son's getting in the ring his wolf pack son especially has one hell of a Stinger splash in him <laughs> well, not he's, proper he's a tight end for some university <laughs> isn't he so. He was saying as well that he used to have long hair, then he cut it off, and then they had to give him a wig for that entrance. Oh, really? What a nightmare. Um, the sons uh, help just beat the Bucks up for a bit. All the Bucks rain for confetti was business cards. Yeah. That was a good little touch. I like the commentary just being like, that's a waste of company resources. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting um, on board with them now, you know. Yeah, me too now. Yeah, yeah starting to. <laughs> um, still CM Punk. For, sorry, <laughs> Phil, because he watches, obviously, and monitors who's still a loyal <laughs> fan of his. Um... Then uh, the, the sons got involved in everything. I mean, there's, I don't know where to begin. There were so many things. Sting took a bump off the stage with the, the suplex by Matthew. Yeah, because yeah. they did it to Derby on the other side. And I thought, well, then, then it cut to the other side with Sting. And I thought, well, they're not going to do that to Sting. And well, they did. did do Bloody Sting. did do it. Might as well. It's his last match. But yeah. suplex off. Um, really enjoyed Ric Flair's appearance. <laughs> yep. So the Bucks go, <laughs> to, use, when he's, <laughs> the Bucks go to use the belt. The Bucks go to use the belt. And um, Ricky Steamboat's like, I'm an ultra baby face. This, this can't happen. Yeah. Uh, starts to beat them up in karate fashion, but then they beat him up. So Flair <laughs> <laughs> shields his boy Steve yeah. and lies on top of him in the missionary position. But he's gently caressing his head yeah, as well. Yeah, it's tender. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and then the Bucks boot him in the... <laughs> 
and essentially see him off because he just lays <laughs> under he the does, bottom turnbuckle. He does what I motionless. Call, he does what I call the Jack the Jobber cell. Because when Damo sent on me, you thought I was really hurt because I saw it like that. I just <laughs> laid under the bottom rope. Perfectly road. still. Just wondering what my life had come to. Um, he looked dead. Yeah, like, yeah it was bad. <laughs> and, then, and I don't think we saw. Him I did cackle slowly. like the second he started touching his face. I just cackled. We I'm sure when getting... Sting's got in the pro at the end, though, Rick's still on the floor, but in the other corner, he's he goes, like, Whoa, he goes, goes, "Where is he?" he? Goes, I want to thank, thank Ric Flair. Is he gone? I don't even know if he's still out here. <laughs> um, that bit was good, I suppose. Um, <laughs> that was fantastic. Well, he was already a really deep shade of pearl before he got kicked. <laughs> Um, Steamboat took another one off the apron just to show off I'm still in really good I can still yeah. do this um, they, the big ladder right the big ladder comes out it's massive and and they lay the pane of glass on the outside in between some very chairs very delicately real glass yeah and Darby well it's a tactical error in the match isn't it because <laughs> the Jackson moves out the way whichever oh, one it was Nick I think yeah. it was so out the way. Nicholas, sorry. Darby has clearly what he's done right is he's taken a, a a back bump from the top of this huge ladder on the floor on the outside through glass and chair. But he and grabbed so his head on the way down, so he would have protected his neck. Oh well, so that makes oh, it completely br- brilliant. I've seen a lot of fallout on mm. Twitter about this, like the safety of the wrestlers, and I'm wondering when this started and if it's just been started just to bash what was otherwise an all-time pay-per-view. Well, I believe. There's a question in the mailbag that delves a bit more into that, so we'll wait until yeah. the mailbag Whoa, time. Oh, might as well mention it now. We'll wait until the mailbag. Oh. Yeah, or, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, fair um, so, yeah. Um, and his back's a mess. That camera shot yeah. where it's lingering on his back, uh, and you just see the blood then start appearing oh, through the... It's like hamburger it, meat eventually. It looked like he played for St. Helens. Are they the ones with the red and white? Yeah. The horizontal stripe? Yeah, I think, yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, red and white. Cool. Yeah. Big V. Rugby league. You're I think so. You're from that bit of the world. I just know they're not cool. Wigan, and so unimportant. Right. <laughs> um, and then, and then there's all that. Derby's out for a while. Apparently, they. I think this might have been Fightful report this. Apparently, they had a like a backup pl- like a backup plan in place in case Derby was knackered from the spot. Because Derby did say he wanted to. Oh, I forget the, the phrase he used, but basically like do a big thing. Yeah. For Sting's final match, and he a bit did. A, a bit more severe than that, but he he certainly did. did. I I. I if the timing was a bit better, I would have been like, but I, 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 you I, can't pick fault at that. You can't pick fault at that at all. But I see some people being like, but he's moved out the way. Why would you even throw yourself through it? And I'm like, just suspend the disbelief. I didn't even notice just, that he moved too nah, early. Me neither. Just, I was just it was like, when nah. it cut out to the wise. Right. And they, there was nobody there. And I was like, I, uh, and you don't, unless you see the side angle, you see him get up and physically, I think they show that in the replay. But when it cuts out to the wide, you've just seen him lying on the glass. Okay. It goes up, and then it cuts to the ramp, and he's just gone. Right. So it's okay. just Darby falling through like. Last down the live director. That got used better camera yeah. angles to help yeah. with the facade, yeah. don't they? But I, I, either way, man, it was like a hell of a spot. Mm, really Unreal. was good. Yeah. Um, then the books start to take control, uh, and this is where we get like all the teasers that they're actually going to win, which were really effective. I mm. thought. Um, they do the WrestleMania 24 spot, but they say, we're not sorry, we hate you. <laughs> Sting nose tells it like this. Does that for a bit? <laughs> and then batters them for a bit. I laughed a lot for some reason at the spot where they just cart him through the glass in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> it was really funny. Let us know if you're in the front row for that spot, because that glass went oh. more so flying than Darby's did. Yeah. yeah I saw everybody kind of go. Mm, real Straight glass. Up. But apparently they are told. So they sat there <laughs> knowing what was coming. I'm telling you, bear mace. Imagine <laughs> that. Glass and bear mace. Um, I went to a deathmatch tournament once with Adam Pacitti and Matthew Botchamania. And the thing that freaked me out the most was not the shards, but the, mm. the glass dust. Oh, the yeah, way, yeah. The, 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 like oh, the vapor. Yeah, the, I didn't like that. Yeah. I thought that's going to get in my lung. Oh, yeah. Um, then uh, there were the, several near falls. Belt shot. The belt shot. Mm. After the old lads had been hoofed. Uh, the double super kick spot. Well, I think that's what you were just talking about there. The, yeah. uh, the great camera work there, I thought, just being like right tight in on Sting. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just, it was everything that needed to be. I yeah. hate the fact that Dury have conditioned us to think, oh, because it's the last match they need to lose, because that's the way the yeah. wrestling was being for so many years. I think in some instances you blame it works. WWE for that, though, either. Well, they uh, carried on the tradition. Carried on the tradition. AEW yeah. was a brave new world, apparently, where the retiree gets to win the final. All match. I'd say is that it's kind of good to have somebody new beat a retiring star. That's all. 
I don't mind. But Sting picked the books for this match, and they're not new. I don't mind. In this instance, in this yeah. instance, it I think works. if it was like a younger star, then it's got to be the younger star wins. I don't mind the retiring one losing in some situations. Like if he'd never come back, uh, yeah. Austin losing to The Rock was mm-hmm. a good example. Like it can work in the story. So Ric Flair losing would, was was a good idea and everything. But in this case, uh, yeah, Sting had to win. Yeah. Um, especially because the books were so smug, they hit the EVP trigger. It kicks out. He kicks out. They do it again. He kicks out one, <laughs> and then. Darby comes back, pushes one of them through a table. Mm-hmm. Sting, oh, because it's Matt Jackson, he's, he's Hulk Hogan, isn't he? He's got to kick out. So Sting hits the Scorpion death drop. Matt kicks out. Sting, coffin drop. Sting locks in the thing, and then, oh. It was everything it wanted oh. to be. I'm glad they did it, because obviously the WWE send-off he got as well, Sting, was bollocks. Yeah. yeah. No one cared about the Monday Night War come 2015. <laughs> no, but WWE still won it. <laughs> yeah. And they had to remind us at WrestleMania, yeah. it's Sting's expense. So I'm glad he got everything he should have got from the other company. Down yeah. with them. Up the <laughs> AEW. Oh, we're back on I uh, we're flip-flopping. Yeah, so we're we... not allowed to like both at the same time. We've got to pick one and then hate the other one at the same time. Yeah, we should go back and chronicle, but no, we shouldn't. What am I talking about? Um, no, yeah, it was. And I've, oh God, I've said it before and it's come back to bite me throughout his AEW run that Sting's the wrestler that I never got, really. Because I wasn't watching WCW at the time or obviously his earlier days in WCW when he was more work ready. But this AEW run's just been everything it should have been and ended in the perfect way. So... Fair play. Oh, he's the reason I'm sat here. That VHS I got when I was eight, him and Goldberg. Oh. The journey through the NWO saga. That's me. Rest- I'm going to. this. It's a wrestling tattoo on my shin. Can you see the scorpion? Oh, That's as close as I'm getting to getting a wrestling tattoo, I've got, Sam. I've got Brett <laughs> tattooed on my shin. Uh, oh. it's, it's, I, I get, though, where you're coming oh, from with it because for a while, like, <laughs> for a while, Sting becomes this sort of vague threat on mm. the horizon for, like, months and months and months and then when you do finally see him in action if you've not been accustomed to sting beforehand yeah. it's a different sting if you do know who he is and then by the time you get around to it it's just a bit like eh. uh, but it, it's like if you'd been i guess if you were a kid watching that yeah. and he comes down to save oh, the God, yeah, yeah. yeah it's weird because that vhs starts off with a, like a shoot interview like he's just no makeup he's oh. like oh i'm steve borden and you may know me as sting and i'm from omaha nebraska <laughs> that's how it starts <laughs> <laughs> so then, then mm. i see the nwo stuff and yeah just it was unbelievable uh, yes, very good stuff. When do we want to? Should we plow we'll on the a break? Now. A little break oh, now, yeah, if you want. Yeah. Yeah. Break now. Yeah, break Thanks now. Thanks for watching, good. guys. We'll be back in a little, <laughs> in a little bit. Ah, oh. ah, oh. Monday Night Raw. Cody Rhodes opens the show and talks about The Rock's challenge of a tag team match as well as his attempt to derail Cody's title shot in the first place. Oh, he convinced me. He, oh, I was fooled. Seth Rollins arrives and Cody says he understands if Seth is too busy with Drew to have his back against the bloodline. Seth says, I came into WWE 10 years ago with Roman Reigns and we wanted absolute power. But now with the rock in the bloodline, Roman is dangerously close to actually achieving that. So taking them down is the biggest thing he and Cody can do. He then calls the rock Diarrhea Dwayne. I, it's that line where it's like, well, you know, we were in the pursuit of absolute power. And since Roman is so close to getting it, and I'm not. I think that's quite <laughs> voluntary, though. Like, I think that is quite, it does kind of work. I loved it. Uh, I didn't like Diarrhea Dwayne. You can no, see he's dying Diarrhea behind the Dwayne eyes because, like, shortly just after that, he's like, oh, The Rock's not been cool in 20 years. Diarrhea <laughs> yeah. It's the it's double why he's wearing such big glasses to hide mm, the, the, yeah. just the, the pain. Very suffering sucker chest. A suffering sucker chest. Mm. Apparently, I think I might pa- go back and put Harold's eyes over the entire scene. <laughs> just see. Uh, <laughs> what the hell? The sad no. <laughs> the meme. The guy. Yeah, the hide uh, the pain, Harold. I think Pat lets out a jeez when he calls him diarrhea. Diarrhea <laughs> Dwayne for the first time. Bloody mm. alcohol. Talk. Uh, Rollins reveals that he's been medically cleared to compete now, and he'll be with uh, he'll be with Cody on SmackDown to give their answer to the Bloodline. Give the answer now. Although Rock said. Meet us next week on SmackDown, mm. didn't he? So, yeah. yeah, and he says, uh, do you have my back, Cody? Then Cody goes, well, uh, challenges, uh, uh, changes the subject to a message for The Rock mm-hmm. while Rollins looks on angrily behind oh. him. Then he sort of says, like, oh, yeah, Rollins, I'll be there with you. So then I guess he goes back to stand with him after all. If Rollins does do something dodgy, a turn on Cody in night one, then does that make Drew the babyface on night two? I, I guess, yeah. I don't know. He is the vigilante. <laughs> he is, yeah. Um, <laughs> Brian Key. No, the bounty hunter. Um, Sting. Gunter wins a non-title match against Domi Dom Mysterio. And on commentary, they actually reference Sting's retirement match. Mm. Yeah, nice message by Cole. And then Pat's like, absolutely awesome match last night. It was an amazing night. match. Yeah. 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 Not too much, Pat. Everybody should check it out. Get Triller. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it was 
sick. It was better than this. <laughs> rap. No, Gun to Dom was a fun dynamic, I thought. He slapped the tits off him, and Dom sold the tits very well, whether he wanted to or not, because he was just taking bumps <laughs> towards the end. I liked Pat, his role in the match, kissing Gunter's arse mm -hmm. after their little interaction before the Jey Uso match a couple of weeks ago. Um, I liked Dom starting the match with a chop. Yeah, yeah. Take that, you big I, I bastard. Never, I never want Gunter at the end. I, I, want him to be, I want him to be world champion one day, but like I don't want him to have to get rid of the eye. Like, it's just been such a nice build. There's it one just, or two so boys neat. that I would accept Gunter losing to. Mm -hmm. I think Chad, the Chaddy Daddy, is oh, one yeah. of them. Yeah. No, no, he's called. That's, I, don't think, I don't think I invented that. Oh, I don't know now. It sounded like a thing. Well, no, it's, it's a whole thing with his daughter, right? Because he's. Like, what? No, I, I mean, no, I've like, been in the sex way. Oh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's a daddy. I thought you were referring to the fact that was it Gunter sort of. He wants related for him. his daughter. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Sammy. Sammy Wawa. Wow, wow. Sammy Wawa. Wow, wow. <laughs> Friend of Chad. Mm -hmm. And Seamus as well, maybe. And and Bron Breaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bron, I think, should just come in and win the big belt. Just go have Maybe. a Roman. Maybe. Cody gets it, beats beats Cody straight away. Oh, shut up, off. Sam. <laughs> takes it off. Be quiet. Sends Cody packing back to the, like the, the said, minor leagues. It's like when he said Goldberg beating The Fiend was a good idea. Oh, I remember that. It was a good idea. Oh, God. It was a phenomenal idea. Um, Adam Pearce finds damage control. <laughs> he, he spots damage control backstage and says, what are you doing here as Raw? And they say, well, we're the tag team champions, so we were on both brands. And I think I, I agree with them. Um, also, they're scouting the competition. You could say they're scouting four girls. They are. Uh, Elvis is not dead. No, no. And um, other songs in the same tune. She's so lovely. I hate them. No. They are the worst. She's so lovely. Um, Shinsuke interrupts and wants to talk about the IC Championship. Pierce says he'll have an announcement about the title picture very soon. Similar to what Aldis was saying. And, mm. Yeah. Mm, Listen, mm. Shin. I'm never Shin. getting used to that. I'll never get yeah. used to it. Well, um, Michael Cole used to say that before he was beloved. Yes. Oh, my friend Shin. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, oh, da no. Damage Control are ringside for Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark versus the Cowie Girls. Afterwards, oh, uh, uh, Shayna and Zoe win. <laughs> I've just gone afterwards. <laughs> well, the Cowies want to go straight to WrestleMania to challenge for the titles. That was their promo just before the match there. So that was interesting to see after this yeah. result. Yeah. Vintage Shayna, I've written down, going straight for the arm. Yeah. Nice to see. They misstepped a little bit on a double team move at the heels. I guess they are heels, Zoe and Shayna. Yeah, uh, but true. that was fine. Uh, the double Spanish fly from the Cowies off the top was sick. Mm -hmm. A different kind of double drop by them. <laughs> that's the first time I've seen the Cowies not nail the actual real double drop finisher. But that's a yeah. miracle considering how difficult it is. Um, and, and they party so hard it was going to happen. Yeah, soon, they are just saying double all the yeah. time, aren't they? I guess it played into the finish as well, which is quite nice. And now we're going to get to Zoe and Shayna having a match with the tag team champions next week. Yes. Uh, afterwards, Dakota Kai brags that once they've defended the belts on NXT, of course, the Kabuki Warriors will give Shayna and Zoe a title shot next week. Uh, backstage, the rest of the Judgment Day check on Dirty Dom. Rhea says to him, what were you thinking? <laughs> Are you were never going to be him. <laughs> Priest says that he and Bala will make things right with Imperium. And JD, you better make things right with Gunter. And this has JD worried. And also Andrade just pops in and goes, hello. <laughs> what was that? It was really awkward. Really and then Dominic, See you soon. Was, was it Dominic says he's like, well, he, he, he could be helpful to us yeah. down the line. Sam did a swear. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I thought this was a very interesting segment, though, because I don't know if you noticed, but the Spanish lads were speaking Spanish to each other. Well, the Spanish speaking lads were doing Spanish Damien words. and Dom. And uh, JD didn't know Spanish. Mm. Finn does know Spanish, but I don't think the Spanish speaking lads know that Finn knows Spanish. Finn knows Spanish. He's his lady. He's a good lady. Yes. So are we starting the slow breakup of the JD with the Hispanic lads going one oh, way? Oh, maybe. I, thought, I just thought it was interesting that JD was like, what? And while Dom and, <laughs> Dom and Priest are speaking a different language to Irish to them. Maybe. Mm. <laughs> they speak Irish. <laughs> um... Becky Lynch loses to Nia Jax via DQ after Nia is attacked by Liv Morgan. Liv and Becky argue after the bell, which gives Nia the chance to beat both of them down. They're still keeping Nia strong. I, I was saying this last week to Tom and Matthew. I don't think lots of people are right to have the conversation that Nia's good these days. I know, yeah. Because she did a second rope, a Brett's rope leg drop here, and nailed it without mm. killing Becky Lynch. She was the perfect base for Becky in this match. I think Becky sort of just used her as a climbing frame. And it was just a very good match between the pair once again. Saying that, I think she did nearly kill Becky during the beatdown. <laughs> she like, <laughs> threw her into the ring post or like, passed it narrowly or something. Uh, I yeah. that. Oh, she did like maybe a like a four-way slam or something. 
and just sort of walked off and Becky's legs and then he clipped the... But that's a minor quibble. But Nia is doing probably the best work of her career. That being said, though, there was a bit where Becky does the drop kick off the ropes and then Nia has to take like 17 steps backwards and then fall through the ropes, which looked mm. awful. Mm. But that's the only blip. Well, the se- maybe the second blip in otherwise a clear sheet for Nia Jax. Oh, yeah, Nia's doing, <laughs> Nia's doing good stuff. As you mentioned earlier on, Liv is still sort of in the picture. Well, last week, Becky got involved in Liv's match with Nia, so this week, Liv got involved with Becky match. And Becky, Becky was Maddow. proper outraged by it. That's tit she's for got, tat. Yeah, she's got no right. That's another thing I like to hear Becky say. Tit, tit for tat. Tit for tat. Tit for tat. Tit for tat. I take your chocolate, you come and take my Irish chocolate. I was just going to say, what do you think <laughs> Becky snacked on after the match? <laughs> a lovely bar of Irish chocolate. This is a she's new thing we do. Yeah, it's a new thing. She, uh... <laughs> I thought falsely initially claimed dairy milk to be Irish chocolate. But it turns out, thanks to the, the listeners who pointed out, that they do indeed have a factory in Ireland. So technically it is Irish chocolate. Yeah, they don't make it in England anymore, do they, at all? It's Birmingham, is it not? No, I think it's when Kraft bought... No! Kraft, of course he would know this. Kraft bought, <laughs> Kraft bought Cadbury's, didn't they? they? And Kraft? moved it to... Who make the cheese? <laughs> and then they moved it to, to Poland, didn't they? No! I swear that Cadbury's is made on the continent now. We haven't even got English chocolate anymore. <laughs> Take it on chocolate. The Irish, <laughs> the Irish chocolate's the closest chocolate we've got access to. Oh god, I can't believe it. Really? I think so. Yeah. Oh. I swear there was a load of like fluff pieces in the mail going, "They're taking the chocolate away from well, you." I didn't vote for Chexis, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh no! What was I gonna? Oh, did anyone see Becky and Seth on Truth or Dab? I haven't no. watched it yet. It is on the feed. Um, yeah. Or oh, is it Truth or Dab? It's some sort of version. Hot ones, yeah. There's like a, a skills round where Seth goes, you once studied as... He's reading off the card. Becky, you once studied as a clown, which she did. T- demonstrate to us now one of the skills you learned in clown college. And she goes, didn't really learn any skills. <clears throat> it was all about developing your clown persona. <laughs> then she tries to juggle and fails. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. So that's day one. <clears throat> I know you'd think so. Juggle and... <laughs> no, she said she learned... She's... She gets further than I would with the juggling, but she um, says her dad taught her not the not clown college. So, yeah. Um, there's also one of Seth's things he has to do is say three nice things about CM Punk, and he doesn't, and he eats the wing instead. Wow, they go that deep. He says, "Oh, I guess it is kind of case." He okay. says, "I probably could think of three nice things to say about CM Punk, but I think he would. Eat, we're both men of conviction, and he wouldn't want me to do that." So, yeah, case mm. His dog. Um, his tattoos, not his wrestling, <laughs> and his promos. There you go. Okay, what would you've you say? done it. What would you say? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you would struggle to stop it. Through. <laughs> <laughs> He's the best. Say the, three bad things about CM Punk. He seems quite uncompromising. <laughs> um, he's getting a bit injury prone, unfortunately, and uh, I don't think he would like me. If we met, I think he would, wouldn't have the time of day for me. There we go. I've said three things. Sam's three indifferent things about CM Punk. <laughs> all right. It's taste in music. It's all right, but I don't think it's as He's good as people on. make He's it straight out. Away. Yeah. straight away. Straight in. Yeah. I think it's, you know, I think that uh, his, his, his run in the MMA world was a bit middling. Oh. Middling? Yeah. yeah, he was zero, one, and one. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, he uh, maybe one day he has another run at it. You know, <sighs> people get into that at about, you know, in their well, 40s. We 50s. did just learn off camera in the break that J. Paul will be fighting Mike Tyson on Netflix. Which, uh, that, yep. What? I don't know. I don't think it's... It, I, I'm glad it's on Netflix. Do you have to... I'm assuming you won't have to pay more, do you? Oh, yeah, it's going to be some sort of premium or something. It says, most valuable promotions presents a live global sports event. It doesn't say anything about extra cost. That's all right. Then. They did a, a thing recently with a tennis match. I think it was Nadal and mm. Al- Alcaraz and they just had it on Netflix randomly. It was weird. Or maybe it hasn't happened yet. It's just becoming know. TV now. Yeah. With extra steps. Raw in 2025 <laughs> and all that. Um, right. Where are we? Up Ricochet here? and yes. Pierce. Yes. Mm. Backstage, Ricochet wants a shot at Gunter. Uh, Pierce asks Ricochet just to trust him and says, his idea for the IC title match at Mania will please everyone. Ricochet leaves. The Judgment Day arrive and demand that Pierce gives JD a shot at Gunter. Um, but this plan's gonna. My my brain went into overdrive, going, "It's the plan I want, and that's the the, the crazy ladder match. Let's do another IC ladder match. Let's Gunter, go mental. Though. Yeah, we're Gunter. But Gunter's with everybody. Based matches have been Does excellent it? recently. Yeah, but put him on a ladder. What's he like on a ladder? Not as good. Ah, I don't know, evens the field a bit. 
Yeah. Ricochet can, you can walk around on a ladder, no bother. I was um, re-watching the build to the Boneyard match recently. <laughs> and did you know the Boneyard stipulation was AJ's idea? Really? Marty Michelle? Not, that's, not, that's not a stipulation that's going to favour him. <laughs> the Boneyard? Marty Sound Michelle? Him? Tell yeah. you what, Undertaker, I'll, I'll wrestle you in your signature yeah. style of Ace match. Ace is an ace, though. <laughs> well, was, he wasn't in there. Was he not? I don't think so. Was he not in for a little bit? He was around Did it. he tease for a little oh, I'm, I'm sure I'm trying this. I can picture him. As when he had the swept over beard. Well, the swept over hair. Swept the beard. over beard. No way. <laughs> <laughs> Sweeps in the opposite direction of the hair. So. I would have challenged him to like an Iron Man match or something if I was AJ. Yeah. Three hour long. Yeah, really draw it out. Yeah. Um, anyway, that was me. Oh, I've just reused a joke for a video that isn't out yet. There you go. I'll say that in the video and I'll probably try and make it sound spontaneous in the video as well. No, no, I'm a fraud. Like, so you're a fraud. Like, like Matthew, Matthew yeah. as well. Bloody <laughs> um, yeah. Right. Uh, Becky and Liv argue. They continue their argument backstage. Liv accuses Becky of hypocrisy. Becky wants a match next week. Liv accepts. Rhea walks past uh, and goes, ha, ha, ha. And but, if you listen closely, Becky goes, you won't be laughing in a few weeks. That is what happened. I've got nothing else to add. Mm. It's no. just what happened. Liv, Liv comes in and uh, I think what Becky's argument to it is basically, well, I, I wasn't going after you. I was trying to send a message to Naya and like, you come in well, and, so and you've Liv. done this and blah. It was in the middle of Liv's match though, Becky. Yeah. yeah. Ah, she can't take it. She can give it, but she mm. can't take it. I find yeah. Liv really charismatic and funny and good. I think she's great. <laughs> I don't know about this gimmick of her finishing second. Have you noticed this? Second in the Rumble, second in the Chamber. Oh. Yeah, I know. I don't know if that was deliberate <laughs> or just a coincidence, but I thought the fact that she even outlasted Bianca was quite strange. Mm. Anyway. Um, she's going to get out of WrestleMania, surely. She's, she's got to have some Be sort of Becky got her there in the chamber as well, didn't she? Not to that match. With the shoot hurricane rock. Uh, the shoot man handle slam, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Mm, maybe, I think, again, maybe the feud after Mania. Oh, no, because Becky's going to lose. Rhea's got to win. Mm -hmm. Surely. Although she did beat Shayna that year mm. when Shayna had just ran was through the elimination chamber. Yeah. Mm. Adam Pearce announces that next week we will see a six-man gauntlet match to determine Gunter's challenger at WrestleMania. <sighs> the entrants are Sami Zayn, Ricochet, Shinsuke Nakamura, Bronson Reed, JD McDonough, and Chad Gable for his daughter. Prediction. The Chad. final two will be Sami and Chad <sighs> and something will happen that makes it a three-way at WrestleMania. Ooh, That's I my would, early lock -in. I'd like to see any of those Possible permutations against Gunter. I think that would be very good. I would love to see Chad Gable upend him. Yeah. And, and take, like, that would feel like a real seal of approval. But it's it's about what you run with after that, I guess. Yeah. I'd like to see Ross's idea of the triple threat. Mm. I'd also like to see Sammy maybe come up short because then I think they might have, like, a big surprise in store for him at Mania because he's said even in this promo and stuff, he's be, I think he says it later on, he says, this is my last, this is my only path now. And if mm. that gets taken away, then what what's going to happen? He's just going to get... More and more Aggie. Just yeah. being a cheerleader for Kev while he takes on Logan. Yeah. Um, Andrade wins a singles match against Apollo Crews. Apollo! Apollo! I mean, why, yeah. why does it sound like when he does the Apollo at the start? Is it, like, is it live every time? Is it pre-recorded? No, it's pre-recorded. I was going to say, because it sounds... It, I don't know if it's the panning of it or whatever, but it sounds like he's riding past on like a bike. He like, is. Apollo! Yeah. <laughs> like you get the Doppler effect. He's actually maybe. flying in from afar because I don't know if you knew this, Sam, but he is a superhero who can oh. see into the future. God. What? Maybe if they're firing... <laughs> it makes sense. If they're firing him out of a cannon, mm -hmm. you know, like how far away the wall was that time in WCW. Oh, yeah, old, yeah, yeah. Old, uh, and it, Apollo! And it gets louder as he lands. Yeah. And then he just That's walks out smiling. Yeah. Because um, he can predict the future. Andrade is a baby face for now. Shook hands with him at the start. Mm. Um, still love his back elbow as well. Yeah. He's great. It should be a finisher. It yeah. should be a finisher. Um, I love the fact Andrade no sold a superplex just to get the three amigos in straight away. Yeah. It was a weird place in the match for me, that one. Um, I like the history lesson from Cole mm. during his entrance that just laid it all out. I mean, especially when he put the somber mask down yeah. and then he starts talking about it. And I was like, yeah, that's really mm. cool. So, I think his uh, hammerlock DDT is called La Sombre. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yeah. The the reason I'm surprised he's a face is just because of that vignette a couple of weeks ago, which was really there was fire and like heelish. I choose my destiny. Yeah. There's I do declare. <laughs> it was also an I interesting. It's like an interesting one uh, in terms of the themes because we've got Apollo doing Apollo, mm -hmm. and then you've got just Andrade's just goes like along, just chugs along, and then it just keeps going El Idolo. It's, it's one the Repo <laughs> Man theme man. <laughs> re re then, repo Man. Then, El Idolo, after, like every five, six bars. <laughs> after the rumble, everyone kind of remembered that a lot of these themes sound a bit generic. Yeah. and Not as generic as money. There was a great <laughs> post on Reddit, which uh, broke down a lot of the current day themes. Really good post on Squared Circle. And the guy had listed like 
separate them into categories. Like these are all the ones where the name of the star is said at the start, and there were so many. Like JC, Jane, like so many of them. Tyler Bates. There's a bit in the middle of Tyler Bates where like a guitar solo breaks out, and that's been reused for somebody else's theme, and I right. can't remember whose it is. Have we got to the bottom of why Roman's theme loops back into its old self? Because it's been oh. doing my head in from day one. What but just a dead end. You just go yeah. Yeah. and then the theme starts again with like the and the choir and everything. Another thing in that post as well was that the, the conclusion the guy reached was that um, when, they, when they've got to do modern or cool, like Western music, very generic, when they've got to do something from a certain region or a certain country, mm. they nail it. Like apparently they're, they're ones that are a bit more sort of from a certain area of the world that we're yeah. perhaps not so used to hearing in a Western wrestling promotion. Apparently they absolutely nail that. So they're more of like a genre band. Right. Kind of, yeah, it's weird. Nice. Hmm. Um... Sami Zayn is interviewed backstage and talks about the corner match now being his only path to WrestleMania. But he's interrupted by Ivor and Valhalla. No, but it's now Valhalla. Oh, <laughs> Valerie Halla. She actually. just speaks. She just like speaks a with a southern drawl now. She's gone from being Viking to howdy owl. <laughs> She's that sassy <laughs> southern belle, like Nikki Cross was. <laughs> How is she? All the gay meat. Well, Daniel Bryan, want to get the gay meat? Well, game meat. <laughs> Uh, I'd love it you... just to explain to people who didn't see Smackdown back in 2019 I can't remember yeah 18 she was trying to say game meat on <laughs> Smackdown but it definitely came out gamey yeah, yeah. Uh, she <laughs> also was the nacho seller when Kane had his job mustard everywhere now, can you remember what her accent was then I think she was southern hello there was <laughs> like a hot dog <laughs> sir hi Glenn <laughs> good so to see you old friend uh, they interrupt angry that Ivar isn't getting a chance to become number one contender Sammy wants a match later on, and Ivar says yes. Aye. Ivar knows that Sammy knows that Sammy can't be Gunter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> In the locker room, Candice LeRae, she's dead stressed uh, about maybe not getting another tag title shot. I agree with her, but Indy's it, like, she's, it'll be fine. It'll be all right. It, we'll get another one. It's all right. I'm like, what? These beach going the Australians. Oh, too late, back. Yeah. Although Indy is a locker room veteran, she's a leader, as we knew in NXT. Indy tells her to relax, but then Natalia, the nosy cow, <laughs> <laughs> is eavesdropping she on the other side of the locker herself. room. And she goes, No, you know, actually, it's like when another kid at nursery has been really good, and your mom uses that as, as an example to shame you. She goes, no, I agree, actually, with Candice, Tegan. Maybe we should stop bucking our ideas up. And Tegan goes, you eliminated me from the Royal Rumble. Well, after two months, tried to. Yeah, yeah. two months of that thing being a good thing by Natalia. Now like it's a, not. Now it's a bad thing after yeah. two months. Um, <laughs> Natalia literally takes her hand like a child and leads her out of the room. <laughs> Why are they burying Tegan like this? Uh, that's not the end of the segment yet, because Maxine Dupree and Ivy Nile show up. Maxine tells Candice to stay optimistic. Candice says, I'm not going to listen to you. You're bad at wrestling. <laughs> I, am, I don't can't even lace my boots. Lace my don't need a pity party from someone who couldn't lace my boots. Oh. It's about time she showed a bit of character. First time she mm. showed character since the way days. Oh, the poison pixie is back. <laughs> we'll get in there. <laughs> Woo! Uh, she storms I'm off sorry. and Indy goes... <laughs> I that was her so... wings, by the way. <laughs> yeah, she flutters off that far off the ground. Indy says, oh, I'm so sorry about that. Yeah, but she I think really Cand apologetic. I'm, I'm team Candice. I think yeah, Candice is right. Indy's mm -hmm. in some sort of bizarro dream world at the moment. <laughs> yeah. He Opportunity just got... Opportunity's just falling into her. Yeah, it's bollocks. Yeah, it is. This isn't NXT. This is the main roster. That's right. How, well, that wouldn't happen in NXT. No, no. It's all very wins and losses in NXT. Oh, yes. Um... The next match, Balor and Priest win against uh, Imperium, Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci. This is the first time these four men have ever had this match, and I, got, I don't believe it's real. Really? On Cage Match, I searched it, and I specifically, like, you know, when he controlled an mm -hmm. F, and I put Giovanni's name in, and it's the f only one. Unless it was sure when he was Eichner. It. Yeah, it must have been. Hmm. Oh, yeah, is he Eichner now? No. No, he's Vinci now. Yeah, he's Vinci Unless now. Unless it was back when he was Eichner. But... Was he Eichner on the main roster? Oh, no, he's pro no, he was just Vinci, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Oh, it's the only time on Cage Match these four men have had a tag team match, and I cannot believe it. Maybe they've had one with Dom and JD, the, mm. the B team. B team, B team, go, go, go. Mm -hmm. Oh, I remember them. Yeah. Can't remember who these it was. These battle scars. <laughs> who was, who was it? it? It was Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel. Axel. Yeah, they were brilliant. Yeah. B team, B team, <laughs> go, 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 go. Go buy the $50 t-shirt. Also love With the social... Just a B. <laughs> also love the social outcast as well. Brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what were we doing here? See, uh, the match was going along fine. It was weird to see the JD be the baby faces by default. Yes. They were getting the cheers, so they were. Yeah. But then... Damien Priest grabs Finn Balor by the beard and he says... Strokes him. <laughs> he strokes the beard and he says, 
It's time to fly, Prince. Time to fly. Oh, Prince, does he say? <laughs> it's time to fly, Prince. My heart fluttered when he said it. Oh. And then off goes Finn Balor for a shoot tope, I think it was. It's like something from Twilight. Ah, just, yeah. We're getting all these new fans in because of the rock. It laps fans, maybe. <laughs> It's time to fly, Prince. No! Let's fly, out, man. Fly, my pretty. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, to be fair, the tits out south of heaven got a good pop. Yes. They took down the straps yes. and did south of heaven mm. did a good pop. But yeah, the match was fine. It's just that one moment. Uh, <laughs> not not in my wrestling. Lovely bit of fan fiction. <laughs> um, I bet there's some gnarly Judgment Day fan fiction out there, actually. Um, I do, well, do you remember what we used to have written about us? Yeah. When we were popular? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I remember. I used to have intercourse with Chris. The I was former editor. I always used to end up with Sam in yeah. fan fiction. I used to have to usually turn you back from being an animal. I was no, no. I, you were always open about wanting to be. Like, I was corrupting you. I was you. always hiding my yeah. sexuality, apparently. But it was always me being the corrupter. Yeah, yeah. but that's what I wanted deep down in the story. <laughs> <laughs> so God knows what Finn Balor and Damian Priest have been doing to each other in fan fiction. Yeah, multiple different authors, by the way, uh, penned the, the. It was a weird, weird time. A strange time. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Michael Cole <laughs> confirms, we talked about this before, but Michael Cole confirms that Paul Heyman will be the first one to go to the Hall of Fame. Um, Drew McIntyre is interviewed backstage and calls Seth Rollins a spotlight, ju- a spotlight junkie. <laughs> he calls him a junkie first yeah. and the crowd kind of goes a bit like, Ooh. A spotlight junkie. Big, dirty, stinking. <laughs> Hobie, uh, hopping from comeback to comeback, Cody Rhodes, Punk, The Rock. He should be focusing instead on defending his world title. And tonight he's going to continue, Drew's going to continue his own momentum by beating Jay Uso. A little bit later on, we see a promo from Jay who says he is sorry for what he's about to do to Drew tonight because Jay don't play. Yeet. 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 That, yeet. Never you didn't that. pace it at all. Yeah, you should have paced it so we could have gone yeet in between every two words. Yeah, but he, uh, did. he says it with a to lot of... Uh, I mean, every two words. I meant Jack. Oh, right, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I don't really have the rhythm of Jey Uso. Yeah. This is that video of Cody Rhodes where they're all playing 2K and up, up, down, down, and someone walks in and's like, ee, hiya, and he just goes, Ugh. That's <laughs> how he that? says hello. <laughs> Cody. <laughs> Cody. I don't know if you can find have it in the he, background, Joe. Have a look on Twitter. He's a gamer, though, yeah. isn't he? So he's probably concentrating a lot. If you have a look mm. on Twitter, it's like Cody Rhodes noise or something. You might find <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> what? Surely that'll be making him say, ah. Oh. <laughs> if there's, oh, they're all sat there. It's a video. All sat there playing up, 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 down, down. That's the one. Um, but this promo from Drew once again was very, very, very good. Um, he's. I like the fact that when it came into shot, he wasn't impressed because he was just watching Roman's man mm. getting put into the Hall of Fame. That announcement there. And then he just he says all he wants from Jay Uso is an apology. That's all he wants. That's why he hates him so much because he never forgets. Because when he came over to the, it was, that was going back to when he first transferred over to Raw. Yeah. Yes, fantastic. Drew continues to be really good. He is. He's, um, I don't think we're going to find the That's noise. It. He just he sat there at the back and was like, "Hey, hi, yeah. hey. <laughs> oh, I saw a gaming related clip of you know the old CM Punk's Mojo shoot when they sat there all cocky in the Ring of Honor one. Red hoodie. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Is that the one where he tells the homicide story? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Kojima, yeah. Larry, and uh, there's a bit where Joe talks about he shoots on AJ and says he's a terrible gamer. And that he played him once, and AJ's wife really wanted to leave, but AJ made her stay until he beat you. <laughs> <laughs> and I believe it, because if you see AJ on up, up, down, down, when he used to lose, he would be actually furious as well. Well, I mean, wrestlers are some of the most competitive people on earth I think I've ever That's met. Real, <laughs> but like, yeah, no, no. to put him in that mm. matter of honor. Um, Rhea Ripley and Io Sky bump into each other backstage. The crowd pop. It's the two champions. Rhea tells Io to stay out of my territory. Eo scoffs and walks away with the rest of her group. She's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a weird little one because Eo's done out of rear, has she? No, but stay out of my territory. Yeah. yeah, but in Breaking Bad, the other local drug dealers hadn't done anything to Heisenberg and he yeah, told you, them to stay out of his territory. You've got to let, let them know. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Because she just took the line wholesale from... Rhea wants to keep her meth. Mm -hmm. Her (laughs) blue, crystally meth. Yes. What makes it blue, I hear you ask? Nobody knows. The purity? Or do they put dye in it? It's a marketing thing, isn't it? Jesse and Walt put it in, make it blue, to make it distinct, so they know it's their meth. I don't know. I can't remember. I think it's that. Joel, you seem like you're a breaking bad guy. Yeah, I can't remember. Either. I can't it's remember. Been too long. Is it not Jesse? Is, oh, it not yeah, Jesse? Right. is it not Jesse who does it behind Walt's yeah, back? Mr. White Bird becomes a thing. I've done a bit more of a Darby Allen there. Um, yeah, Same character. Yeah, and he's like, "Why yeah. did you make it blue?" And he's like, "That's my. That's what I do." You know? yeah. yeah. They're minerals. Um, <laughs> Valhalla gives Michael Cole her antlers before Ivar's match against Sammy, and he 
He loves orgasm. it. The boyhood dream has come true, I yeah, think he says on numerous occasions. God. It's nice to see her getting involved with the joke, because if I was her, I would hate him for making me... I'm going to be this scary character, and you just reduce me to this figure of fun. Yeah. I did like when she walked out with the antlers and he realized they were there. He was just like basically saying, Sammy's buggered here. Yeah. Because the antlers are here. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's not true, though, because Sammy gets the win, but then gets beaten down afterwards by Daddy Uncle Daddy, Bronson Reed, Daddy-o. Daddy-o. He take, said it once and it was weird. Take glasses off <laughs> yeah. to put glasses back on. What's his character? Um, Can we make him like a, an office <laughs> middle manager? I think I'd really like just loads of vignettes of him really angry. You know, yeah. Having to replace Toner. That would be good. <laughs> what? He's got like a coffee stain on his shirt, comes down. Be... He's just not got any time for anybody's business today. It will be more substantial than what his character is at the minute, which I can't it's, put my yeah, finger on. Yeah, just floating. Um, Ivar again was amazing in this match. Oh, I yeah, thought. the match. I... His cartwheel and spinning world's strongest slam. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, I thought they were just, they did really good stuff with the time they were given. Uh, I'm now just on board with Ivar having the Viking stuff removed from his person. <sighs> Because it feels like it's holding them back now. It should be an ass kicker. Imagine if he had like a, a more human, well, a more, because well, they are, they're all real life Vikings, aren't they? They are real life Vikings. They are. He but... used to be, uh, his gimmick for a little while was ladies man. Yeah, sexy boy. In boring. that uh, feud with the Street Profits, which was awful. But I think you can, the... you can make him just a general, aggressive, Bear. vague character, like, kind of a, like a John Tenter-esque character were, if you had to. the top Vikings when they yeah. were just War Machine. Yeah. 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 So. Feels like it's holding God, back. I miss War Machine. Stuff. Yeah, I miss War Machine as well. Not the disgraced former MMA fighter. My God. He's called War Machine. He legally changed his name. To, he's a terrible guy. He's in prison. Right, why have I gone on this? What have I done? So Jack misses that War Machine. Does not No, care I don't about miss that War Machine. Ta war I do not. Uh, Chad Gable interrupts a Gunter interview backstage and says, next week's goal of match is the path to his redemption and winning the belt for his daughter. Gunter laughs at him. Daddy, <laughs> Daddy Chaddy, was it? Yeah. Chaddy Daddy. Yeah. Chaddy Daddy. Daddy. <clears throat> Chaddy Wow Wow. Well. I do like how Gunnar was told, like, oh, this, the field's going to be stacked. And he's like, yeah, it should be stacked because I've elevated this title to mm -hmm. Bear, Bear Heights Farm, I believe he said. <laughs> yes. Um, I'd like the fact that it just means more is the tagline. It just means more. Yes. Finish the story. I like it a lot. It just means more. Backstage, Xavier Woods, he's bloody playing 2K with the lads. Well, he's brought a co an advanced copy for them uh, with DIY, R-Truth and The Miz. Truth's no, no. Truth still thinks... De right. It's D-Generation X. That's Shawn Michaels and Triple H. Yeah. Truth still thinks that they are Shawn Michaels and Triple H, but he knows Miz is the Miz. But sometimes he thinks Kevin Owens is the Miz because they've both mm. got spiky hair. <laughs> Miz, that's true. That's real. Uh, Miz wants to join forces to win the tag titles from the Judgment Day, which I don't understand because there's two... There's already two... Uh, <sighs> well, they all throw up the X for Regeneration X and Woods goes, that's pretty awesome, actually. Yeah. <laughs> that's all he does. He goes, that is pretty cool. For this kind of segment where it is just an advert for the game, that wasn't as painful as they used to be back in the day. True. No, it true. was fine. I like when they, they were like having their plan of attacking JD with gluten, just in case they've got gluten I, issues. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think just, just Feed them bread, sorry, no. Everything should just be the Sting advert where he like, kicks the door out of the house. It should oh, just somebody, the somebody kicks the door yeah, down yeah, yeah. and like a sick guitar riff plays and they just hold up like the game and then lightning strikes. The best one. And I, then everybody remember, loves it. Do you remember the one where Kurt Angle's checking into the SmackDown <laughs> Hotel? Oh, yeah. That's an unbelievable <laughs> advert. I think it was like an extra you got on the disc. I can't. To be fair, <gasps> the new one it. for the new game where they've got all like the point of view, like you're in the ring getting a spear. Yeah, that was good. Oh, that's it a very good me of the, yeah, uh, oh, the first person stuff. Yeah. yeah. It reminded me of the Nike ones. Aye. The Chaka Benito. <laughs> or the ones after. <laughs> the one where you're the player and Ronaldo like mugs you off. The one where yeah. Eagles of Death it, Metal are playing. It reminded don't me. Don't speak to my <laughs> It reminded me of M. Dickey's Wrestling Empire because oh. you can also you can also play first person in that. <laughs> M. Dickey's The Wrestling Empire, right? Me and my mates found another game that M. Dickey had made back in the day called The U Testament. Oh, I know. It's, it's 70 pence in... and it's in my uh, it's in my car. I've not bought it yet. Oh, set in biblical times. You play as um, just a local in Nazareth or wherever. Or, uh, and uh, Jesus is one of the characters walking around. You can talk to him. It's men. Oh, I thought, <laughs> I thought that you got to make your own prophet. I think you are. You can... I think you can... Who, Montez or Angelo? <laughs> <laughs> Wrestling reference. Um... Sam Driver. Sam oh, swore again. Man. This time it was the F-bomb. It's well, like, Joel, it's it's like between, he's mocking I'm you. I'm so <laughs> sorry, Joel. Oh. This extra work, Joel. Oh, my God. <laughs> you were about to say Thoughts with The Undertaker. Yeah, Thoughts with The Undertaker this time. It's just seeing four or five lads backstage playing video games. I know. I know. The rest mm. of them thought it with you. Mm. Mark. <laughs> 
It's good that the Undertaker's name is Mark, isn't it? In the main event between Jey Uso and Drew McIntyre, Solo Sokoa tries to interfere, but Cody Rhodes evens the odds and they brawl into the crowd. Jimmy Uso arrives for a distraction, which allows Drew to win. Jimmy prepares to attack Jay with a chair, but Seth runs out to make the save, completely ignoring Drew in the process. And also proving Drew right. Yeah. This was the highlight of the match for me because Drew was like, ah, you're too focused on stuff that's not raw. And he did it. He ran straight past Drew, who was his challenger for a main event match at WrestleMania, yeah. just to get involved in bloodline stuff. He was overlooking Drew. Drew is angry about this. He blindsides Seth and beats him down, telling him he doesn't deserve the championship. The crowd chants CM Punk, and Drew says, this is bigger than CM Punk, which is a brilliant way to end the show. <laughs> Loved it. And then he later tweets a quote from CM Punk's rant about Hangman. Dumb effing, yeah. you yeah, know yeah, what, yeah. yeah. yeah good. It was a good match, I thought. It was a nice, slow one. Like, a different pace it was, because Drew just batted Jay for ages, mm -hmm. and then the delib they're very deliberate now, the interference has just laid it on thick before Cody has the same done to him, but he mm. overcomes them for once to win the title. I did like the, the jump of the barricade, and then Cody's music hits, and the camera pans, and you see tiny Cody sprinting down, mm. getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But like, you see the whole shot of Cody just going, like, all oh, the way up to the camera. Was it like oh, it Hitchcock? Was, it was quite... I don't, it just... It was... Know. The camera just turned and he was so far in the distance, I found it funny. That's so good. if it kept going back and it kept going and he was further away each time, it would have been... Have you ever seen Kung Pao enter the fist? Yeah. <laughs> There's a brilliant bit in that. Chosen one, yeah. I'm coming. And, keeps... and he's running across a field to save this girl, but then he, he keeps he keeps getting further away. It's... Yeah. All right, Kurosawa. <laughs> yeah, it's Kurosawa. <laughs> That's the one, yeah. <clears throat> oh, hold on to your hats, everyone. It's time for NXT Roadblock. Here we go. Felt like a proper pay-per-view, this at the start. Oh, hell yeah. Because we get the people's champion, Lexus King, leading a video package to introduce the show. He was in a Lamborghini. Yeah, he was in a Lambo. He's a very fancy, fancy man. He's a king. He is. And he's, it wasn't a Lexus. <laughs> oh, yeah, it should have been. Yeah, it should have been a oh, Lexus. Apparently, he does have a Lexus in real life, doesn't he? That interview with C double V. What? I, I mocked my friend for driving uh, a Lexus because he said he'd never drive one, but he ended up uh, working for Lexus, and then he w he, he can't drive you know anything a friend but who's Lexus. Got a Lexus. Yeah, he, when he worked for them, they they like drive one of the cars because obviously you go from dealership to dealership. Oh no, what a chore! But it, it was like it was like a it Aren't was like good? a yacht What's inside. Lexus, it was like yeah. massive, but I think it's because he, he saw them as boring cars. Oh. And then when you're actually in one, it's like it's like being in a command center for a Zord or something. I thought it's like uh, huge. I don't know if I've ever been in one. Weird. I remember thinking I was good because I learned to drive in a golf. Like, oh, that's, that's, yes. Yeah, that's cool. That. I learned oh. in a mini me. Whoa. Yeah. Mini Cooper, diesel. Ha <laughs> ha. Golf was a diesel as well. <laughs> you got to get the miles to the gallon, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. More economical engines. Next up, Dijak beats Joe Gacy in the opening Asylum match. There's a bit with the box, right? I'd love that this just kicked things I'd off, by the, the box, way. Right. This is NXT, Sam. There's no fannying about, you know, with, ooh, a 20-minute opening promo. Nah, just straight there into a cage. Just promo. cage. Yeah, cage match straight away. <laughs> Opens the box. Boxing glove inside on a spring. <laughs> he had to open oh. it from a specific side as well. That oh. the odds. I loved it. That jaw oh, no. is my move of the week. Oh, my. Oh, oh. oh. oh baby. The box said, do not open. And Dijak dared to open. So he got a boxing glove to the lower regions just, of his it body. It was so labored. And because he had Gacy going for it occasionally and just teasing it and then pulling it closed again. And it, 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 I was genuinely curious. I was oh, like, what is, is it going to be? Is it the spider again? <laughs> no, what have we got in the box? No, NXT, What's in the bo NXT wouldn't dare do something as bad as the spider. <laughs> but it then, yeah, just to get alone, a, wasn't just, it? He just got the nut shot. It smacked his winky. Yeah. It did it smack say? him right in the winky. Yeah. It, all it was missing was the boing noise from man getting hit by football. <laughs> I tell yes. you what, though, Gacy's <laughs> entrance to the game was upside down, Jack, which obviously blew us all away. It did. Blew mm. us all away. It's like was insane, yeah. It but was. he had a thing with a message written on for Dijak, but when he held that up, that was the right way around. It's crazy. It's <laughs> how do they, how do they think of it? So um, Dijak did a moonsault off the top of the cage. He did, and it was a kick out. This was a bit Joe, like a, Joe doesn't feel pain. Really. An osprey match, this in many ways, because <laughs> yeah. there was the obviously the moonsault off the top. Um, the I love how passionate you are about NXT. Oh, I can already, I can, I, I've heard a lot honestly, about your passion this, for NXT. This, it, it takes you back to being a wrestling fan in the nineties. Yeah. <laughs> yes, there's crap, but yes, there's also good <laughs> stuff, and it's all under one. Like wrestling's too good and too serious on Raw and AEW. 
and SmackDown. It needs to be, have fun, a bit of ridiculousness. It's Noel's fun house, Sam. <laughs> Noel's fun house. But yeah, we have the moonsault. Kick out. Then we have the go to hell's go. What does he call it? The, uh, the feast your eyes. Uh, yeah, the feast mm. your eyes, yeah. And a couple of them and he's kicking out. And I'm like, there's too many kick outs, Joe, mm. in your straight jacket. Yeah. <laughs> I like the bit where he cannonballed without arms. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I like that bit. Um, <laughs> I preferred their match... Uh, the one we watched on the live stream, the Vengeance Day Vengeance match, Day. but this mm. was still in. It was still fun. We it? had bits that they did there, like the blind the, moves by yeah, Gacy. Yeah. Like that's it's, it, that's got to be a kink now. Although in the last one, <laughs> it was oh, actually probably it was like Dijak who got um, right under, wasn't he? It was Dijak who got blinded in the last one. Oh, was one. it? Oh, I've yeah. misremembered there. Because I remember he yeah, uh, he had to take it off to make to find him. He couldn't find him for the pinfall, mm. and I'm sure we were. I, was that show as good as it? We really enjoyed it, but was that because we were on live stream? That no, that really was really actually was very good. Okay. Don't listen to Dave Meltzer on stuff like mm. that. I mean, that's just yeah. one man's opinion. Um, a curmudgeon's oh, opinion. Meltzer gave a match four and a quarter stars recently, right? And What did he give Trick and Mellow? Can't remember. At the end of Vengeance Death, I'm sure it was a three point something. There was a match in New Japan, which some people hate. I absolutely loved it, right? It was an hour long, and it was like a War Games match. There was a cage around the ring, staggered entry. It was Osprey's lads against the War Dogs. These are my mm. dogs, for real. And it was just insane. They started pulling bits of the ring out, and, oh, and he gave it four and a quarter stars. Fuming I am. Right. <laughs> Backstage, uh, Luca Crucifino, the legal eagle of the law, arrives to see Tony D and the family. Tony has, like, summoned him. Tony makes him his consigliere, saying they're going to be the most dominant force in all of NXT. Why hasn't this guy been champ since day one? Oh, you're a big fan of Tony. Massive fan. Bit mm. injury prone, Sam. Do not care. That's, that's the only reason he's not been champ. Doesn't champion. need to defend it. He's a mafia boss. He's murdered someone. Yeah. Uh, he's tried to murder more people, but they yeah. got away because the lake was and shallow. he's got a consigliere, so if you get in his way and he's injured, then he's just going to probably murder you and you're not going to be a Do you threat think, anymore. Because he's doing a De Niro, mm -hmm. he's, probably got, he's probably had a few... From Rizzo. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I mean, they can do what they want. Did that happen in The Godfather, did it? The shootout? No, it's just because he's doing a De Niro oh, impression. Right. I, get, I get more Gandalf, uh, Gandolfini. I get more Tony Sopranos. Soprano, yeah. I want to see a Pine Barrens match. I've never seen it. What does that mean? Well, a Pine Barrens is like a, a God tier episode where they, they take somebody upstate to get rid of the body and get rid of him, but he gets out and they've got to find him, but they're oh. in the middle of nowhere. So they've got um, to find him. But I'm that, but as a gimmick, both of them arrive, proper dizzy, do some donuts, open the boot, I hear kick you. him into the woods. I hear you. I, I hear you. I, I, honestly, <laughs> they may have actually done it before. Like, it wouldn't be out of the realms of possibility <laughs> that they would do that. Um, so now he's got a consigliere, like the bloke from The Godfather, I can't remember his name. Uh, Tom, Sam, Jack, Tom. Oh, it's Tom Fink. Tom, oh, the, do you know the one from yeah, The Godfather? Their bloke yeah. is like, the yeah. Do they use his full name? They always call him like, you're Tom Smith or something. I can't remember. Yeah. It's not Smith. Tom Thumb. Aye. Fallon Henley is talking to Riley Osborne backstage. Riley's skull tattoo yeah. took me out of it. Mm. I'm like, he's actually a bad boy. Because he plays the part, Sam, of a <laughs> virgin from Cumbria. <laughs> yeah. He hasn't spoken to a lady before. He's currently yeah. seeing a lady who hasn't spoken to a boy Just before. Just call it Bria because there's no coming going on. <laughs> Um, but yeah, the, the the two people who haven't you know dabbled with the other yeah. Uh, what am I, oh, I'm, with so, the other? What I'm so it? glad to be here in NXT. I yeah, can't that, wait that's, to that's take Theo on a date. He's like super cheery, like super chipper. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I think that w with him being from Cumbria, though, it could all be an act, and actually, it's part of like a Wicker Man style cult. It could be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, maybe that'll it explain is. the tattoo. Wicker Man style in cult for the bingo <laughs> sheets. He gets, he gets like a mysterious Cumbrian tag partner who has the same tattoo in the same place, and it'll be like, oh, Chase U is a bit cult esque as yeah. well, so. <sighs> Um, Fallon talks to Riley, tells him, hey, don't worry. Well, she says, thank you for talking to Thea. So I went back and looked at the week I'd missed. That's off camera. That's all I'm off camera. Yeah, yeah. Like oh. a battle in Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. um, and then she goes, thank you for talking to her, though, because I did tell you that she still likes you. She's just given you, she was given some bad advice. Yeah, because he, he goes on about saying that she she used to be a little firework. She was in more fact, than that. She was, <laughs> she, <laughs> she was better than that. She was a little pocket rocket. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Oh. Oh. And Fallon's got to be like, oh, yeah. Oh. That's, how, that's how people speak. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh. she's been taken. So JC Jane's an evil, 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 <laughs> fabulous Moolah type. Right. right. And I don't yeah. use that. 
She's okay. been getting these ladies to have like calendars made of them to pay off the debt of the university. Now she thinks she owns the university, but she doesn't. She's evil, pure evil. Last week, she was taken to one side by the business bitch, oh. Kiana James, and her friend Izzy Dame. It is now what we it find is. Ourselves here. It is what it is, Izzy Dame. Um, so now that's where we find ourselves oh. now. And this, this evil lady's been given Thea Hale, who has energy I'm issues. Sweating. Is it energy issues? Thea Hill. She's just, just got she's too, too high much. of a man, yeah. She's, Pocket yeah. rocket. <laughs> <laughs> she, um, oh, she's lovely. Uh, she's yeah. she's now taking advice off this evil lady and trying to be a bad bitch She was herself. trying to play hard to get <laughs> right. to Riley. They went on a Valentine's <laughs> went Day Went too date. hard with it. Yeah, she was too much. And they, and they sort of blamed it on her, saying, no, she does take advice too literally sometimes. But it's not her fault. Mm. It's JC Jane's fault. And JC's new, cooler friend that she's replaced Thea with, Jasmine Nix. Jasmine Nix with yeah, a Y. With a Y. Like Leonard Skinner. Um, so that's what's going on. Blair Davenport interrupts and tells Fallon to stay out of other people's business, which is immediately what she's doing. So yeah. That, yeah. Mm. And she says, besides, Thea isn't even Riley's type, which is a joke for those who know. I was going to say, it's dramatic irony when someone on the screen doesn't know, but we know. Yeah. What's it, is it still yeah. dramatic irony when we know, but they don't know? I think that is dramatic irony. Yeah, that one is dramatic. I remember media Indian. studies. <laughs> so we know... <laughs> we need like a referee in the corner to be like, yeah. We know that Blair and Riley are a shoot couple in real life. Engaged? But the ca- Really? He but, slapped a ring on it. But the characters don't know. So that is dramatic irony, I believe, yes. Or does it even count? It's not even real in their world, in their fake world. True, it's yeah. not even <laughs> real. Maybe it doesn't count. It's like a weird meta. It's post-dramatic irony. This, all, this was all telling me, though, a fair angle. Well, I thought so, but then later on... She transitioned away into a feud with Fallon, so uh, mm-hmm. I don't know, or whoever got involved, I can't yeah. remember. When Maybe. she when she was saying, "How would she? How would you know what Riley's type is?" When Fallon said that to Blair, I was just like, "Wow, yeah, that's one of them." Because he's got a skull tattoo, and I'm a goth. The writing, mm. sensational. Lyra Valkyria and Tatum Paxley are getting ready for their tag match. Tatum says they have to win so they can be forever intertwined. She'll do anything to win. Tatum goes on a deranged rant about making their opponents suffer. And Lyra's a bit creeped out. It's like 2002 Victoria, but creepier. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. I like the bit at the start where she says, after today, we're going to be more than just friends. Mm. That most viewed OSW title flashed up in my yeah, eyes. Yeah. Can we say that today? I don't know. Well, the pollen. The lesbian hay fever. They call it, yeah, they say, <laughs> basically in wrestling, I think they, OSW was saying, because the writers are so lazy, or mm. were back in the day, that any two women in an angle have to become attracted to each other. <laughs> But Tatum definitely fancies Lyra, but Lyra doesn't fancy Tatum. Tatum is obsessed with Lyra, but I don't know if it's on a romantic level. Eh? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. She was saying some things last week about them being together, and it just that was mm, yeah. Okay. It's like Stan. The yeah, Eminem it is. Yeah. Song, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. She was giving me like hyper violent vibes. It's weird because her character used to be enjoys going to the gym, right? And now she's a goth and mad. And Ooh. a stalker. And a What's stalker? in the water down in Florida? Oh, so many gimmicks. It's gimmick factory. <laughs> Um, the Wolf Dogs oh! retain the NXT tag team titles oh! by beating Chase U, though. Uh, after the match, JC Jane is a member of Seth Rollins and the Rock's weird little stable. Mm. She goes like that. Could calls, you imagine? Calls Thea a loser. Thea runs away. Or st- well, not she doesn't run away, she storms off very angrily. Mm. I don't know why JC did that to Thea. Thea hadn't done anything. Well, last week she was calling Mr. Chice and Dull, sorry, Duke, losers. Mm. And then she was calling Thea a loser because they just lost as okay. well, I guess, because Thea wants to be with Chase U. Yeah. Uh, but JC Jane's evil. I do slightly regret now using Moolah's name in the same sentence. <laughs> but just, I think a little, <laughs> just a tiny bit. Uh, yeah. Um, first and <clears> foremost, <throat> though, they've mashed the Wolf Dogs themes together and they fit perfectly. It, it, perfectly. I need to go back and listen. I can't. It's yeah, really good. Not good. But they play... Bit of barons and a bit of bronze and a bit of but that sort of like. Okay. Or oh, was it like when they? Do you remember when was it 2017? There was that spate of well, we've made them into a team. Yeah. Play the first bit of Dolphs and then do a record scratch and then just play the other yeah. theme. Bobby Roode, yeah. the Dirty Dogs. But this one actually just, works. The Awful. Dirty Dogs. Oh uh, man. Yes. But Baron Corbin again, he's on the run of his career in ring wise. I'd say he's just doing stuff that is as- astonishing. Mm-hmm. He uh, seems to be having a great time. He is. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. He's just having all the bands with the little dog. The little dog himself, Baron, 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 Baron,
Uh, there was assisted gust, gut buster from the dogs, which was gnarly. Uh, the shoot fans in the arena need to know their role. The ones opposite the hard car. And who boo chase you. Yeah, yeah. Shut up, man. Yeah. Stop making it about you and just, you know, sit down, take your education that you've paid for. for I'm interested too. why they made JC Jane legitimately save the you, the you in storyline, only to then turn heel after. Yeah, that's, that's weird. bizarre. It's like they don't really know what they're doing. It's a bait and switch. Oh, <laughs> it's an actual bait and switch. NXT often do bait and baits. Right. Which are when something is implied that it might happen and then does. <laughs> um, whereas the fed herring yeah. which I've called it is their version of a fred herring um, who should be backstage Sam you'll never guess it's our it's mine and Ross and Matthew's favourite interviewer Rancid Kelly Clancid yeah, where, I saw the notes where does Rancid <laughs> Kelly Clancid come from because her name's Kelly Kincaid right because yeah, I, I forgot yeah. <laughs> Ross, <laughs> Ross, thought, Ross thought she was called Kelly Clancid and I added the <laughs> nickname what a surname Clancid the Rancid be. one she's engaged to one of Pretty Deadly Ah. Or with one of them. I don't know if they're engaged. I don't know if they're engaged, yeah. She's with the prince. Elton. Fly, prince, fly. Mm. <laughs> fly. It's time to fly, prince. <laughs> uh, Rancid Kenny Clancid interviews Carmelo Hayes, who is flanked by a team of private security. He says he's got them to make sure that you know nothing can interfere tonight. Says that the NXT title is reserved for the biggest star in NXT himself. Yeah, bit meh promo, wasn't it? Yeah. I yeah. like that they've masked up the, uh, the security guards now, so when we come to like a year or two's time and they're on the main event scene, We'll not look back and go, oh, look, it's him. Even though oh, we're still seeing it on the It's going to make it a bit harder, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Sean Spears wins a really quick match against Finley's son, Uriah Connors. Mm. Um, Sean cuts a promo afterwards and says that unlike Ridge Holland, he isn't ashamed of who he is. Uh, Ridge interrupts and beats down Spears, who does like the Bray Wyatt thing in the feud with Cena, like he wants him to unleash the hatred on him and encourages him to use the chair, but officials arrive and stop Ridge before he can do so. Picks it up and he he, he like raises it above his head Sam, as if he's gonna. Well, his hand, yeah. He's a wrestler who doesn't like to be violent. He's a wrestler who's done some violent things against some people who were very violent towards him. So these people deserved it. But when he does the violence back, he doesn't like himself because that's not me. That's not what I do. I'm a nice guy. But didn't it, they do this with Billy Kidman? They've done it with so, uh, <laughs> several, several, several. It's, it's a it's, terrible trope. <laughs> yeah, I I guess are we leaning into the the, the injury stuff? Well, they were. They were. Right. But then changed it. Because I was going to say it's a bit near the knuckle. They did it. Oh, they did a whole thing where yeah. he had a match with Ilya Dragunov and injured him. It's like, if you do it properly, like that, I think kind well, of warrants it. Then they backed the, out straight away. Yeah, but if they backed out of it. And then they went, they changed it from him feeling bad about injuring people to him feeling bad because he'd been injured. Yeah. He's like, oh, I was on the shelf. And then he was like, in my hands, a chair becomes a weapon. I'm like, in any wrestler's hands, <laughs> a chair becomes a weapon. Anyway. On, on Sean Spears, though, I thought it was interesting that he was just pretty much AEW, but with the truth stuff added on. I like him. He's such it's, a little person. Yeah, he's still in his little, little chair. Come little, out and sit, like, come out and grab his chair that's set up perfectly. Little little per. Then he, he turned into <laughs> bloody George Michael, didn't he? Careless whispering in, in Uriah mm. Rennie. Uriah Rennie. Uriah, Uriah, Uriah Rennie. <laughs> Uriah Connors as he, he is. He hated Shira him, oh, he didn't did, he? Yeah. Always sent him off. Uriah Rennie was a former Premier League referee who <laughs> unjustly sent off Alan Shearer at the start of the 99 2000 season. I told him to Villa. It's in James's Park where we lost 1 0. Wow. Wow. <laughs> it's like an infamous match then in Newcastle. No, it's just I remember it. I had that season VHS, you know, the reviews mm. they would do. I watched I watched that thing to death. I hate Uriah Rennie because of it. But no, Uriah oh. Connors was here, not Uriah Rennie. I had one where Sunderland got promoted from, it must have been around the same sort of time when we got promoted from the old Division 1. And there was goal music at the stadium like that season. So every goal. James Brown's I Feel Good would play. So it's like Kevin Phillips knocks one in. I feel good. It just took away a lot. It's, yeah, rugby, of it, like rugby leagues, a lot like that. That's when more you're of not a ready, jovial. But yeah, like when when I'm like a little kid and I wasn't mm. ready for it. And mm. all of a sudden, every single time there's points, it's just <laughs> over the tunnel. Mm. It's like, whoa. Um, right. Where are we up to? Billy J and JB. Right, backstage, Josh Briggs confronts Brooks Jensen about his challenge to Oberfemi and says, this isn't a good idea, BJ. BJ says, no, no, I'm ready to become the North American champion. JB wishes him good luck and leaves. Uh, oh, no, BJ leaves. And then Dijak appears and says to Briggs, BJ's a dead man and you know it. Yeah, like, he's, he, he, he is. So what's going to happen is, Sam, BJ is going to have a match now with Dijak, and Dijak is going to capture BJ, but because BJ is doing what JB wanted him to do, JB is going to be made to feel very guilty because his friend is going to be humanly prisoned. I think humanly Ooh. prisoned, yeah, <laughs> falsely imprisoned, falsely imprisoned. in his human Trafficked, form. You yeah. might say. <laughs> I think that um, that this made no sense. The writing in this one, it didn't, because BJ has gone. I'm going to have a match with Obafemi. 
JB's gone, that's a bad idea. Then he's left and Dijak's gone, you know, that's a bad idea. Mm. I'm like, yeah, that's what he said. Yeah. And also JB wanted this from BJ. He wanted him to be a man, Hulk. Yeah, yeah he did. Hmm. <laughs> Very strange. The Kelster, she's back. She interviews Ilya Dragunov, who is ready for whoever wins the number one contenders match later on. Stax and Luca Crucifino interrupt and warn Dijak that his standing deliver opponent will be Tony because he's going to win. What could it mean? <laughs> and then he's dragging off just like, oh, I just can't wait for the match. And yeah. it stands really chipperly. Even when he's casual, he still talks very theatrically. And I know Ross has thoughts about it. In the well, he's, he's turned it down ever since I did my <clears throat> bit on this podcast about how he, knew. he was in the ring with Mellow and Trick one week and like Mellow and Trick are effortlessly cool. Like just got all, yeah. the, all the charisma in the world and he comes and hug me, you fool! <laughs> and he does all that sort of stuff. Oh, it's like Damien, it's like Time to Fly, Prince. Yeah, he could do that. Pretty much. <laughs> and it's just, ever since then, though, he has toned it down a bit. But it is still, but I guess that, that's what makes him him. I still can't get but what is, to fly, Prince. <laughs> <laughs> what is Stax going to do to make sure Tony goes to stand and deliver? That's what we're going to need to ask after that segment. All there. the other opponents, mm. crowbar around the back of the legs. <laughs> Wait, what do then? Oh, we'll get to it anyway. That car park's a minefield. Oh, God, it is. It's getting safer, though. <laughs> You've made it sound like the council of putting some, <laughs> put oh, some speed, speed bumps in. Um, the Kabuki Warrior. Oh, I had the rarest of occasions the other day. I had a taxi driver mm -hmm. who said something nice about the council. Couldn't really? Believe. They've taken all those bollards out of Jasmine where they've blocked oh, up all yeah. the streets. Are they still leaving them in Heaton, though? Well, that's what we were talking about. Hope they're bloody doing it in Heaton. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. a nightmare. The Kabuki Warriors <laughs> retain the tag team titles after a miscommunication between Lyra and Paxley. Roxanne Perez attacks Lara afterwards and pulls her arm through the ropes and stomps on it and deliberately mm. injures it. Um, after the break, we see Lyra being loaded into an ambulance with Shawn Michaels and Ava watching on. I didn't realize Kyrie Sane was such a creep. They were doing the creepy stuff with Tatum and Kyrie in the ring at the same time. Kyrie was like patting her behind and then I, Tatum was on all fours. And... She just enjoys a bit of banter, doesn't she? <laughs> she Kyrie's just a bit of fun. Uh, I guess that's a kind yeah. of banter. Uh, Tatum, though, she got over waist lock with a sick backflip. Ever seen that done before? <laughs> I guess that's a kind of thing. <laughs> weird is, I, I really, I don't know what my logic was there, but you, you're right. It is a kind of banner. Tatum did a backflip, you say? He did. She did. I. She was in a waist lock and then flipped back over the person. Uh, oh, the, she's good. Yeah, she's very good. Oh, she's good. In the diamond mine. Uh, what we're doing here? <laughs> Thea and the business lady. We're backstage. <laughs> Kiana James. Kiana James. <laughs> Uh, at the in the middle of this match, yeah. which obviously has ties to last week, where What's Keanu going on walked there? away with JC Jane. Mm. So yeah, Thea and her are gonna have a match. It looks like, and then obviously we get to the final bit of the match where Lyra mistakenly kicks Tatum. Hopefully Tatum's heart was not broken too much. Yeah, yeah. And she realizes it was a mistake. I think she'll realize it was a mistake. Yeah, and <sighs> I just love the fact that Roxanne can't get over that shower. Can't what? She can't get over the shower she had. The shower? She was having a shower when the open challenge happened. Oh, when yes. uh, Shotzi she got injured. Out, she came out in a... She was like, well, I missed it. <laughs> it, was really good. it was really good. That's why she's so angry, Sam, because no, she was having a shower. Open <laughs> there was an open challenge. She was already annoyed about not getting a rematch. And then she comes out of the shower in the locker room and goes, what? The match is happening. <laughs> it's brilliant. I love that. <laughs> yeah, it was good. But the human element. Yeah, it was yeah. actually good. Um, so that's what I did, we didn't do a news video, did we, about a heel turn? It's not like... That. Did we do a news about I did one with Tom where we talked about the heel yeah. turn. All right. I can think oh. about now is the main roster stars all have right, assistants that keep them in because she'd already turned here. Yeah, it's not really well, a turn, is I it? I did sort of introduce that element on the story, uh, on the news video. So uh, don't worry. I think Hopefully people are yeah, taking yeah. the title at face value. Uh, well, <laughs> Honestly, we're good people. <clears throat> yeah. Um, <laughs> Fallon Henley beats Blair Davenport after interference from the returning Sol Rupert. Calabonga! Yeah, and then I put, because I forgot that Matthew was off, so I thought I was writing these notes for him. And I made him say, yeah, it's going to be all right. Yeah, because I try and get Matthew. I'd, Fallon Henley's theme is my favorite current theme in WWE. Right. Get on that horse. <laughs> it, was, so good. it was very. Uh, going to ride. It, Everything going to be all right. It reminded me of some of Jimmy Hart's final work. Yeah. Yeah. Wrestlelicious. <laughs> I watched Fallon's entrance to see how she interacted with the song. And I wasn't disappointed because mm. at the end of the bit, before it just cuts off, it's the it's going to be all right. Yeah. Saddle up, saddle up, and she does like gunshots when it says saddle up. Did I she, love Fallon Henley. She threw her, uh, she threw her jacket down. I think it caught somebody. She was oh, she's sorry. Like, sorry. That was just her being a charismatic baby face. Yeah, the, yeah. she's got a good sassy head whip. She's Fallon unreal, Henley. man. She's so good. If you want a sassy head whip, go to Fallon Henley. It's that little, 
Yeah. I can't do it, but she yeah. does it very well. Yeah, I can't, yeah. <laughs> 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 You're right. <laughs> you I like realised a... I couldn't do it, and then just thought, like an episode, <laughs> you did like a sort of Quasimodo kind of. Um... Don't use that as the clip this week. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, Sol Rucker threatened her appearance last week by writing roadblock on the. Oh, sorry. Mm. Um, I'm coming on the beach in the sand yeah, yeah. with the roadblock uh, logo. So yeah, and uh, she did a cool move. It was like a cartwheel DDT off the guardrail. Yeah. Or the, not the guardrail. Whenever I hear guardrail, I think of the narrow bars. This, this was Barrier. a proud barricade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. barricade. Because apparently she lost a year of her career to Blair. Yeah, it's been that long. And I can't remember that angle at all or whatever happened there. She was one of the people that Blair attacked, wasn't she, when Blair was the mysterious. Oh, the only yeah. mystery. We've solved all the mysteries. Blair was the attacker. Uh, scripts was Reggie. And now all we need to know is who NXT Anonymous is. That's the one there. Joe Gacy. What? Was that it? bit when he was filming last week and he was filming oh, the quite very anonymous y that was. Mm. <laughs> it sort of lines up with his prior. Oh, I don't think they're actually gonna ever reveal oh, it. Oh no, no, they're no, no, they're no not. But he's just the only westler who's filmed somebody from afar and ran up to them and then attacked them. The one time there was footage of NXT. The only one. There was <laughs> that's, a, his, <laughs> that's his key sales point. There was one of those segments once where there's like a real fight in the performance center and yeah. someone's like stormed in and they've had a fight. And it was there was the normal footage of it. Then there was NXT Anonymous footage of it. Yeah. And I tried to cross, I tried to line up to see on the normal footage if we could see the angle that the NXT, and I thought it was a woman, but Ooh. then it never got, never got. They probably just got a last to film it at yeah. the time. JC Jane tells off Andre and Duke for wasting the tag title shot that she got them. A flustered Thea Hale arrives and says she's just had a confrontation or a fight with Keanu James and Izzy Dame. It is what it is. So they have a tag team match next week, she thinks. She's like, I guess we'll have a tag match. Um, they say, who's your partner going to be? She says, I thought JC. JC says, I'm busy. And she leaves with that Jezebel, Jasmine Nix. In fairness, mm -hmm. if you're going to get yourself into trouble, don't just count on JC to be there. To, 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 to... Oh, JC's evil. I know JC's she's evil, evil yeah, but you can't yeah. just count on her to be there. She's had a master plan, Sam, to take the whole university out of the hands of Andre Chase. And now she's trying to actually do it, but it's not going to work. I've written down here, Thea What's Hale has gonna... a drug issue, and I don't know why. <laughs> Is it because she was particularly like oh, she frenetic? Came on the yeah. yeah, she was like, the like genetic ge no, <laughs> like follow Henry when she's doing her yeah. Head to her. But so are we eventually going to have like Chase U versus Jace U? Like what's it? What's oh, oh Jace, he's Sam. done it! He's <laughs> call the oh my God. call the podcast <laughs> off. It's over. Jesus. Thank how you for listening, never, everybody. How have we never? Thank you for what? listening. We have how been have we Ross, never? Jack, and Sam. We'll see you next week. <laughs> we need to ring Matthew. We need to ring him. I know he's in Deutschland. We need to ring him now. Jace U. He got oh. his number. We'll get him on the podcast. I don't know. I, I don't know if I do. Is, is everything all right? <laughs> we've Jace how have we never? Chase we've genuinely you? never. Oh, no, I don't know. I was just like, of course, it's all she is. Of course Jace she's gonna Chase. No, you're yeah. right. She, you've solved it. Uh, but then you have a rival academic institution. And then you've got, yeah, then you've got sorority styles merch you can sell to the, the audience. And you what? have people in what different doing? colors I doing that you logos. nailed it. You were doing so no? well. <laughs> you know how you have, like, they've got Chase U in red. Oh, right. Yeah, you'd have uh, Jace U with a different black. color. Uh, basically, the exact same design, different name. <gasps> And then you sell them to the audience and you I make them pick sides. The sorority stuff was a bit like adult for the wrestling, wasn't it? The, the page? Oh, the submission sorority. Yeah. Was already the name of I it. meant more like just general college <laughs> sorority um, team mentality, I, just I guess. Can't, I just can't believe that you've actually solved what they're going to do. Yeah. I've done nothing How this we, podcast. No, you have. But, <laughs> but now, but that, now I've made a mark. That's, that's, forget all the... Editing you've ever done. This is your this biggest is this is the yeah. biggest moment. I can't believe that. JCU. Yeah, Matthew's you. not going to believe it. It writes itself. How have we never... You know what he's going to do? I'm going to predict... He's he'll, uh... he'll do that thing where he goes... <laughs> yeah, I thought you were going to say he was going to he was going to pretend that he already knew that. Yeah. Well, yeah, of course. I obviously... I don't think Matthew would pretend. I think if he genuinely already knew that, he would have... Yeah. Yeah. He, but no, I didn't have a clue. That shock thing he does when he's... <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> he's a character isn't he right god I can't get over that Ava <laughs> informs Gigi Dolan that Ariana Grace has refused to have a match with her she says she'll run away if they have a match Ariana interrupts though and she agrees to the match on the condition that if Gigi loses Ariana can teach her how to be a true lady and Gigi accepts because she wants to beat her up it needs to happen. Gigi is the I worst guess... written character on TV. Yeah. So any change is good, and her becoming like Ariana Grace's little 
Princess Project. I can see the vignettes already. The pageant they write themselves. Princess, this, they? Is, this is so NXT. Mm. They recently did one where before Tiffy left to go to the main roster. Yeah. She turned the doorbell. Um, she lost a match to Fallon Henley and then I had to do a day's work on her ranch. Right. And you'll never guess how it ended, right? She fell in a bit of water. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, not just a bit of water. A horse's trough. Yes. Wait, you, you brought up Miss Congeniality earlier. Mm. And it's just that. It, it is just, just that. It falls right oh, into that. It's just that. All no, as in, like, as in like it's a really interesting oh, little thing they can run All for the, a few weeks. It could be the song Popular from Wicked. No. Never seen it. Never seen it. It's the one about a witch. I've never seen it, but my first ever girlfriend had the CD and would oh, play it in the car all the, t- all the time. So I know the song. Okay. It's called Popular. It's about, I'm gonna, you're going to be popular. I'll teach you the proper poise when you talk to boys. I recognize that, that from the reels. Little ways to flirt yeah. and flounce. Yeah. It's always like someone's got a video of their dog, a weird little dog, and it's oh. like, this is why you're going to be popular. Okay. Yeah, the you chorus of that, yeah. Popular. <laughs> you're going to be popular. Um, but it's good though, Sam, because Ariana Grace is a wrestler who doesn't want to fight, but she's also a beauty pageant queen. Yeah. So that works for her like it doesn't work for Rich Holland. Yeah. She's uh, Santino Morello's daughter. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. She's really got the charisma as well. Yeah. She's definitely inherited it. I was going to say, like, I, I think, yeah, it, it's... With Gigi, has, has there been any real so sort of development with her beyond... Toxic Attraction fell apart. Yeah. JC obviously started plotting but to she... start JCU, as you've said. <laughs> Gigi, her character became... Wank. I, I had a bad childhood. <laughs> yeah. And that's it. That's kind yeah. of it. It felt like it? Gigi, because I wasn't really actively watching, like, I'm trying to just stay on yeah. top of matches. Yeah. When yeah. Shame on you. Stuff. <laughs> but, like, I've got, I was editing the golden age. I was stuck in 1982 mentally. Mm. Uh, but, like, it, it, essentially, it felt like they just tried to continue on with what she was doing, but they never really gave it much thought anyway. She was and a just face, sort of went, but yeah, it didn't... And just sort of tried to float her <laughs> without yeah, any never, help. She never had anything to do. It's, it's, not, it's not her fault. No, no. <clears throat> her character's been woe as me. Up until yeah. last week, where she's like, um, I was with the general manager first. My meeting goes before <laughs> yours. <Yes. laughs> it's just crap. We need middle manager Bronson Reader, so I don't know. Yeah. Uh, the rancid one interviews Sean Spears in the car park and suggests that Ridge Holland will, he might want to match with you next week now. Sean says, I hope so, so I can bring out his inner rage. Mm. What's he going to do? Just lie down? Same as he was in the... Yeah, yeah. like, yeah. This just... time he hands him a sledgehammer. Go on, do I it. I think something like that, yeah, yeah. genuinely. Whisper yeah. in his ear, become a tag team. Mm. I love you, Ridge. <laughs> time to fly. <laughs> the No Quarter Catch Crew celebrate Charlie Dempsey's Heritage Cup win. Sorry, they're all of their win. Mm-hmm. It's they the catch re- clause. They reveal that due to the catch clause, they're all champions together, and any of them can defend it. Drew Gulak says that the group are also entering themselves into the tag team tournament, which Ava made earlier, which we've not heard about. No. <laughs> it's <laughs> Why do they not write this show like normal people? But it's what gives it its charm. It is, yeah. Uh, <laughs> William Regal interrupts, and we notice that his entrance music is excellent for interruptions. Mm. Dun, dun. Um, and he hopes that Charlie and the crowd chant, that's your father. Yeah. We'll defend Sorry, the, Joe. We'll defend the Heritage <laughs> Cup. We'll defend the Heritage Cup with honour because it represents all the, you know, the bollocks. All the European say. lads who went over and did the all, wrestling who means so much to the, Billy Regal. You defend that, all the, all the ladies and men <laughs> <laughs> who've come before me. And I'm thinking, how long is the Heritage Cup? And he doesn't mean the actual lineage of the cup itself. He just means well, the what it represents. European yeah. wrestling. Les Thatcher. Charlie says, I'll defend it better than you ever could. Now, this had me thinking. I know Regal's had a lot of health issues. Oh my god, he can't wrestle. Are they? Are they? Because he sort of goes like, mm. <laughs> he does, doesn't he? Yeah. And he's like, fee fi fo thumb. I oh, smell the blood of an Englishman, so you'll have to draw the blood out of his own son. Is his son an Englishman, or does he mean his own blood? Well, oh, I, yeah, is I, his son an Englishman? I, I figured. Like, well, he'll have the blood of an Englishman, though. Yeah. He's got Regal's blood. Yeah. Was it? Him kind of this recognizing that his son like, yeah, is, is, is like an English is, an Englishman, maybe, or maybe yeah. just saying like, "Oh, aren't you hard?" Ooh. There was a line on the commentary <laughs> where I forget, it, but obviously it was going to be Vickers. Well, for you, five four four. Yeah, it was like that. It was literally what yeah. it was. Yeah, Booker would have said this because like he's um, he he could still put Charlie across his knee. Was the line on commentary? Oh, that does imply a match of so sorts. Unless he is actually going to like physically spank him. <laughs> Every time he loses, well, <laughs> Dustin took the Cody in that match, and it, it didn't harm the match. Uh, but this would be weird. But did <laughs> it have a lasting effect on Cody? No, it didn't. No one remembers that. Uh. Yeah, uh, might have left a bit of a handprint for a while. Oh, it was his belt? I can't remember. Noam Dar's a broken man after losing that Heritage Cup, but um, he's fine instantly. I'm fine. He's <laughs> all Lash Legend. 
He did. <laughs> he gets over it instantly and looks forward to the meta future. The brighter and better things. They really are on their way to brighter and better so things. So can you explain uh, the metaphor? Metaphor for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Easy. Yeah. Dar, <laughs> right? Dar's the leader. Yeah. He's yeah. the brains behind the operation. Yeah. Supernova. Uh -huh. Cocaine references. <laughs> right. Oasis references. Uh -huh. Scottish. Uh -huh. Football, sometimes football, football references. Football references as well, yeah. And you got the main man, Oromensa, who is the right hand man to. That's my main man. Main man, man Oromensa. Who's a Jamaic Jamaican? I thought he was. Oh, I don't know. He's I, from the Caribbean was, somewhere. Because he speaks <laughs> like, you know, like that. Oh, I thought he had like an African accent. But oh, I don't he's know. not just, man. Is just, he? Oh, the, just the Just him brushing it off, I was immediately just like, oh. Dar's been I, I love obsessed this. with that cup for <laughs> yeah. like a year. Mm. And it's really it's funny. Like that he's, he's got just, the, the thousand yard yeah. stare. And then all it takes is the hat I'm just getting flipped a little bit. Lash Legend used to lead a tribe of zombies, but she now had she's. Cult. She, mm. she had a talk show. A chat show in a basement. Weird. And they would she would go like, hello, and they'd go like, <laughs> it was to try and make her come across as like popular and cool. Okay. Didn't, didn't come across right. well. But now she's like the heavy of the group. She's really tall. She's 94 Diesel. Yeah, she's okay. actually yeah. good as well. She's really improved in the ring. And then Jakara Jackson was initially there, I think, just so Noam could go, I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. But now she's like the sassy one. Yeah. Yeah. She's on uh, Booker T's. <clears throat> oh, you missed this last week. Oh. His biscotti list. Oh, no. He's got a biscotti oh, list. A biscotti list. Oh, no. So when Booker T sees an attractive oh, no. lady, he does this on air. When he sees someone he fancies, he goes, Biscotti! <laughs> and last week, when Jakara Jackson was wrestling, whoever she was wrestling, because I've forgotten, he was on about his biscotti He's list. Got a list of them. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Yeah. Where? <laughs> why, why is it biscotti? I don't know. Don't know. Just what he says. Yeah, so that's what he does. God like damn. Taz used to say that thing about the pigeons or whatever, or the doves. Yeah. He, Booker says biscotti. Lola says puppies. Booker says biscotti. No, oh, it's it's a step up from puppies, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's more acceptable, certainly. Or is it though? Or am I just? It's giving... still a list, isn't it? <laughs> it's a list. That you probably shouldn't have as a color commentator on a wrestling show. <laughs> yeah. But your gimmick's got nothing to do with. Fancy uh, ladies. What if it's to... just Biscotti getting delivered to him? Well, he did. He <laughs> and did it's random. Caught, he did get caught on DoorDash. <laughs> That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, true. He was ordering a palm that fateful eve, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. A chicken palm. Um, what was I going to... Oh, yeah, the, so the metaphor. Yeah. And there's four of them. So and they're meta. Metaphor. Uh, uh, well, they're not really, though. They're not meta at all. And they get the, uh, the naked it's attraction weird. entrance. They've got the naked attraction like pods. Those. And then they just go... <laughs> Sometimes they so they're like a BBC Kids Saturday morning TV show. No, 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 no. Sometimes they dress up. They like dressing up. They're dressed as the Scooby Doo gang. <laughs> Wait, you described them coming out of tubes at the same time. No, the that? tubes like um, it's like yeah, no. I don't really know. They're, they're just balls of charisma. They're, they're all just... supernovas in their own right. Yeah, throttling through this galaxy. I'm here for it. They just sort of take the piss. Yeah, yeah. they just do take the piss. Yeah. Oh. But I got, no, obviously, he, when he lost the Heritage Cup the first time, he then had to mm. go to Horton House to get it back. Because right. Akira oh, Tozawa stole it. Yeah. Oh. Um, and he had to go and find that it back. That was yeah. stupid, that one. Was I wasn't great. a fan of that. <laughs> Robert Tozawa through a lot, didn't Robert they? Stone's on his tablet. He's brought that to the arena. He's angrily watching a, a Lexus King digital exclusive promo. Make aimed, sure you do check out the digital exclusives, yeah, everybody. Course. And uh, that's aimed directly at him, so he's, he's angry about it. I've just spat on the mic. Von Wagner arrives and says he's going to smash Lexus for Robert, yeah. but Stone wants to take care of it himself. And he says, Von, let me take care of this alone. And Von says, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good on come for seven to one side to let Mr. Stone fight his own battles. Yeah, it, must, yeah. it must be tempting when you are a man the size of Terry Spunk <laughs> to where uh, <laughs> that's his hardcore persona. That's when it's a hardcore saying. match, it's Terry Spunk. But come Tuesday, when you are that size, it must be tempting to fight Mr. Stone's battles for him. Yeah, it must be. Um, um, but he stepped aside because Mr. King, uh, Mr. Sorry, Mr. Stone claims he is not only a man, but a father and a husband. So I've got a horrible conspiracy theory about Von Wagner, right? We've all been confused why it's taken this long for him to get over. And every time they have a feud with him, when he's starting to do something cool, like he's starting to table people, then it he loses or he gets humiliated or something stupid happens or he becomes like a comedy Lothario who wants to get with the therapist that he's going to. And I think <laughs> that Robert Stone is actually holding him back deliberately to advance his own career. Because all of these... A are conspiracy. Be yeah, conspiracy, yeah. <laughs> Because all of these have just... Come stoner -sy. They've all been excuses for Rob to show off his pretty good acting skills. Yeah. Mm. And it hasn't helped Vaughn at all. And Rob knows that if Vaughn is allowed to fly, Prince, then he's on his own. Mm. And I think he's doing this deliberately. 
It's like yeah. a nurse ratchet situation. Like he's keeping it, he's keeping him. Yeah. If Robert didn't have right. that hair, it's it's Robert's hair. Robert's got the hair of like I don't know what period uh, Beauty and the Beast is set in. Oh right, but you're yeah. allowed to wear the black shoes with the heel and the socks to the he's knee. Got the... He's got that going on with a ribbon in the back. You could imagine, couldn't you? I thought it was very just because he had a past. His past gimmick was like a Jersey Shore boy. It's just a very untrustworthy haircut. Oh, it is untrustworthy. Yeah, <laughs> very untrustworthy haircut. No, it is true. Um. Mello and Tony. Thank you, the main event, of course. <laughs> Tony D'Angelo beats Carmelo Hayes to become number one contender after Mello is distracted by not the presence of, but the entrance music of Trick Williams. After the match, Tony says, I'm a generous Don, and he's got Carmelo a present. Trick runs in, but from the crowd to avoid Mello's security team and attacks his former friend. Security try to help, but if Trick takes care of a few of them, Mello bails to the ramp. And I'm really looking forward to their inevitable match. Hope it's at Stand and Deliver. Yeah. Tony's got less gimmicky, but also much more bland music now, which is a yeah, massive shame. I like the... Yeah, yeah the just it set him apart. It was distinctive is the word. I miss... Uh, I just miss Enzo and Cassidy music a lot, actually. <laughs> that <laughs> theme <laughs> was <laughs> banging. It was, amazing, it was it? so good. Yeah. Up the CFO dollar signs. That song reminds me of... I can't believe of, a day has uh, come where I pine for CFO. They were, they were better than you remember. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. the Mill Glorious, 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 yeah. Glorious, 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 Glorious Nakamura. Oh, man. Yeah, Nakamura. Maybe they were There's probably, a tier list I'm so sorry, Z Fox. Yeah. I'm behind, so sorry. They were behind <laughs> Sami Zayn's probably. Ooh. Probably, yeah. Yeah. And the, yeah. all those themes don't start with like Sami Zayn. No, I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but it was just a good competitive good match. match this yeah, one, yeah, yeah. Which is good for Tony Tone, because Mello's obviously one of the better well, probably is the, is he the best wrestler? I reckon in the right world. Now. In NXT, <laughs> in, in NXT. In NXT yeah. He probably it, him it is good. It probably, it's probably Mellow, yeah. But I mm. Tony he went he went toe for toe with uh, Big Mellow, so he did. But it was all about the big return of the man, the Canadian tuxedo. I've just seen the time. We need to. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> what is the time? It's twenty five to five. Oh, AW Dynam, a great episode of NXT as per usual. Oh yeah, AW Dynamite. Tony Schiavone interviews Swerve in the ring. Condon tunnels, by the way. They're back. Yeah. New, look, like, new logo. They look like con- condoms. I'm a big fan condoms. of the new AEW. Like, well, it's not so much. Is it the new company logo? They've got rid of the yeah, weathering. They've cleaner. got rid of the weathering. It's cleaner. They've got rid of the box. It's just boom, boom, boom. Oh. I like it. Simple, straightforward. Good marketing. The A looks like it's a bit too far forward compared to the other two letters, but it's just oh, because I've the E has a bit cut off now. it. But you'll not be able to unsee it. I know after we'll that. be able to unsee it. No. How would you do that, sir? Because I see it, so everybody else should have to no. see it as well. <laughs> Up the Mikey Ruckus as well, which sounds like an innuendo, but it's not. <laughs> um, it the does. new theme's good as well. Yes. I see, I couldn't uh, make out the theme. I was too busy sort of notes and mm. editing and watching. I, I can't remember it actually, but I have to listen to it again. Tony Tone, no, that was Tony D, you called him before. Tony Schiavone interviews Swerve in the ring. Swerve admits that he's standing here with no title and thinks maybe this is karma for all the bad things he's done in the past. I've done some bad stuff in AW, bro. He broke he into said. Hangman's house and threatened his baby, <laughs> which is pretty bad. But the fans have stopped Swerve from doubting himself, and he's determined to go after Samoa Joe again. Joe arrives and brags about still being the champion. Swerve says, oh, you beat Hangman, not me, and he wants a rematch tonight. He's interrupted by the finest heel stable in the land, the Undisputed Kingdom, we love them, including the new number one contender, Wardlow. Adam Cole says Joe is only the champion because they let it happen. And six months from now, Swerve's hype will have died down. Wardlow is the next AW World Champion. Swerve says, Adam, I love your new manager role. <laughs> and he also says he's got Britt Baker's number in his pocket. Oh, Second number. Oh, hey. a secret one. The Five look stars. on his face. The look on Adam Cole's mm. little face. This provokes Cole into suggesting a match. Taven and Bennett versus Swerve and Joe for next week. Swerve says, let's just do it tonight instead. Cole disagrees. Shivani interrupts and says, Tony Khan actually, yeah, he wants it now. Interesting <clears throat> tag team match to set up there because I was like, why would they team up together? Well, I said, taking down a common enemy, aren't they? Yeah. In a way. Um, I thought Swerve's promo at the start was fantastic. Uh, the fact he still got doubts is very human. <laughs> he didn't get the job done. What? It was just good enough. It, was just very, it sounded very sensible. <laughs> yeah. It's just after NXT, it's always jarring to go back yeah. to the... I like <clears throat> that they're still doing the Wardlow will win the title and give it to Cole stuff because Cole pointed his face Cole's and said, you'll bring it home. idiot. Because, yeah, that'll, it's an obvious for you just to kick off when that does happen. Um, and, yeah, that's all I've got written down about that open set. It was, it was, it was good. Yeah, I've got... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sam? Um, Any thoughts, Sam? I, well, I, it's, it's sort of... Yeah. It's, 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 it served its purpose. <laughs> it did. You know? It was functional. I, it, wasn't like, it wasn't like it was the greatest segment of all time. It, no. it did its job and did it well. Yeah. It was up there, though, one of the greatest segments of all time. Swerve and Joe win the tag match, which happens straight away, but they stare each other down afterwards. Wardlow then comes back out and distracts Swerve, which allows Joe to, to choke Swerve out. 
Uh, we then learn that Wardlow will get his title shot at big business. That is next week. Yeah. Right. Samoa Joe's a silly boy because he wouldn't tag Swerve in at the start and the UK were wearing him down, beating him down ahead of a title defense. That's a silly tactic. That is silly. From Samoa Joe. I was about to say, ah, oh, he's not a silly boy. He's a proud boy. Then I remembered. <laughs> 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 Uh, but when Swerve <laughs> did eventually tag himself in, he was on fire. Yeah, that thing he was. does where his opponent, I forget who it was in this match, is like face down, and he goes, Wee! And rolls them. You know your lad off uh, Small Soldiers, the blue boy who goes, Woo! Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, it's like him. Yeah. I forgot his name. Well, how how would you remember his name? I don't know. We only know, I know Chip Archer, Hazard. And... Archer of the Gorg- uh, the Emissary of the Gorgonites. Yeah, yeah. Um... Alan Abernathy's <laughs> the main boy, isn't he? <laughs> But like the blue one that spins around, that's what Swear was like. It's, a, it's incredible athlet- athleticism. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the UK are cooked, I'd say, as the I kids know, like to say. There's, just, there's not really much about them, is there? It's a shame, but the, the Cole injury has just not helped anything. It's, it's not his fault, but just no. let him... Let, Tony doesn't need him... He doesn't need to be on TV all the time. Just let him recover. Yeah. I don't know. But I, I guess they, I don't know. Like, it, it's, it's one of those... Tony where, loves it, Adam Cole. Like, if, if there wasn't so much factional stuff going on, mm. would it be as bad? I get that him not being front and actually active is really hampering it, but we've there's so seen, much factional we've stuff. We've seen bad factional stuff in AW before, and yeah. I don't think any of it's been as bad as this. I, I think this yeah. is the worst, maybe, just because it's so nothing. Oh, it's not as bad as the Nightmare Collective. Oh, God, the Nightmare <laughs> Collective, yeah. Whoa, Mel was <laughs> no, come on. Okay, that was yeah. I wish Mel got another chance though. I quite like Mel. Um, backstage, Chris Jericho tells Hook he remembers wrestling his dad in ECW. The leech is here. Getting, <laughs> yeah, he dropped me on my head, but I always felt like we had a connection. And oh, you're his son. And now that you're popular, we've got a connection as well. If you need to lay it out like that and explain it so, like, I, basically, he's sat you, there. Know, you know you're reaching. Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, he we prays, don't need you all the time, Chris. He prays we do. Hook. And when he's not present, we need to be asking where he is. <laughs> he praises Hook for his performance at Revolution and says, maybe, maybe you're the real deal, kid. Elsewhere, Matthew and Nicholas Jackson do Tony Khan's announcement. It was very I, good. They did an announcement for an announcement. <laughs> And also forgot they had a second do announcement. Think, <laughs> do you think they told Tony they were going to do this? I hope they just did it. Uh, yeah. And I bet Tony didn't get it. I didn't get it when I first saw it. But then having watched it back, it's really good. Yeah. Oh, hey, everyone. <laughs> it's the big smile. <laughs> now back to the action. Just the use of guys, isn't it? Hey, oh, guys. thanks, guys. Yeah. It's just the right amount of like yeah, stunted as well. A huge announcement. Now back to the action. Very good. Um, Hook retains the FTW Championship, beating Brian Cage. The Gates of Agony beat him down afterwards, but oh, Chris is there. Chris Jericho's there to make the save. <sighs> what could this mean for Hook's future? He's going to be under the wing of the well, Ocho. Get that rocket strapped on, baby, because he's the going... Right way up, oh, yeah. not the right... What if Jericho mm. only wants to associate with popular stars so he can do all of their music for them? Maybe, yeah, Everybody yeah, yeah. ends up with a Fozzie theme. So he does... Hook walking out of <laughs> Fozzie, yeah, imagine. <laughs> He just he's gives like, everybody fuzzy themes. He's and he's like, like, trust me, kid, this is going to get you really famous. I really like Hook's action bronze. Oh, me too. Oh, but I think it'd know. be funny if Jericho's doing all this string pulling and we're like, what God. is it? And it, one show, everybody changes to fuzzy. I would fuzzy. hate it if that was the case. <laughs> what did we think of the match? Gimmicky, but fun? Yeah. Nice. It made me want the FTW belt to be like the hardcore division of the yeah. olden days. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. It just was fun. It was a fantastic moment in the match where Brian Cage... He's, he's aiming for Hook, but runs through the barricade because Hook moves, but you never see Hook in shot. Mm. So it just looks like Brian Cage just runs through the barricade yeah. for no reason. That was, yeah. <laughs> I guess we can we can guess. Yeah, that's what happened. but it's, again, yeah. it's a camera thing we were talking about with Darby Allen, right? Yeah. Where it's like maybe a slightly different angle. Yeah. Uh, Hook popped his hips lovely. Lily, Lily. Oh, it's what he does. Uh, when he put the, the, the barricade spot in the ring when they brought the barricade in. Um, and I thought it was bad ass from Hook not to let go of the red room, even though he was like back first in the tax yeah with cage on top of him. it um it was a good it was a well thought out finish and fair play to brian for doing the job but if i was them i don't know it might just be us our bias against jericho maybe if i was hook i'd just be like i don't want your help and just have them have the match soon <laughs> what um, hook wins <laughs> well I, I don't know if he's had a choice in the matter i think this might be a jericho storyline where it feels like <clears> in the end hook goes you are really cool chris and but i do as, want your music yeah, yeah you're as cool as me i'll cut my hair I like you chris I, yeah can i get an emirates jacket <sighs> We get a video package announcing a tag team tournament to decide the new champions. Renee interviews the best friends backstage, and they're all just fun lads. Uh, Chuck Taylor says he still isn't clear to wrestle, but he thinks that Trent and Cassidy should enter the tournament and win the gold, and they go, yeah. And then Trent goes like... Win the big one. That is that a bit? 
Weird. It's like he's about to roll some dice. Oh, oh Robin De Niro's <laughs> on the corner. <laughs> <laughs> dirty Rob, dirty Robbie. <laughs> Jesus. Christ. Oh God. Um, so yeah, that's that's tag team tournaments happening. <clears throat> but that, to be fair, this tournament's fine. This isn't. This is a this tournament that's needed. Yeah, because the belt's got vacated. Yes. Yeah. With Christian Cage on guest commentary, Killswitch wins a quick match against Matt Menard. He continues the attack after the bell. Daniel Garcia tries to make the save, but Nick Wayne helps Killswitch beat him down. The Patriarch all pose on the ramp, and I was fooled. I thought that was the end of the segment. But then Copeland's back. Adam Copeland, he runs out and attacks, throws one of them off the stage, and there's a weapon chair. Wonderful camera work running all the way through the arena to the, the uh-huh. parking lot outside where Christian commandeers a car that's not his. He, steal, he stole a car he, to drive away. Car? Yeah. They yeah. captured that nice, like, frenetic energy you got in, like, 0102. It wasn't too yeah. much. It wasn't, like, a whole clear backstage area like you see with WWE sometimes. No, there's where, people there. Like, and, it felt yeah. like it was alive. There it wasn't too like many cuts, like, where you can tell, oh, yeah. Yeah. we'll do that bit, and then we'll shoot that bit, and then we'll put them all together. And yeah. then him nicking the car was just golden. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then Edge turning around and just being... <laughs> Right in there, right he in the camera. He throws out a challenge for the Toronto edition of Dynamite. Yeah. March the 20th. I him, quit. Him versus Christian, I quit. The third Cub Cage match, he said. Cub Cage. Cub yeah. Cage. He's wants that hashtag in there. Um, um, I was a bit disappointed with the Kill Switch and Daddy Magic match, just off yeah. what they did at the weekend. I thought there'd be a bit more to the match. But I thought there'd be more Daddy. Yeah. More, much more, more Daddy. More Magic as well. Um, Garcia, I'm a little bit worried about as well because he's just sort of he's forgotten about now. He's lost the match at the pay per view, and now yeah. co- the Cope is back for the Cope Cage match. How like they always try and keep Garcia like bubbling away, but how long? How long can that last before people are like, when are they ever going to? Like the John, the John Silver sort of. Is he ever going to lose the, the fan support though? Maybe it's one of those things with it's Garcia. Not, I think it's, it's rolling so heavy now that I think especially that they now don't. That especially now that he's got good at promos. Yeah, he's really good at promos now. But um, I just for his sake as well. I just want him to be rewarded mm. for his good work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I hope he's not forgotten about. Mm-hmm. Kyle O'Reilly is interviewed backstage and says he's grateful to even be cleared to wrestle again, but he feels like he's fallen so far down the mountain he doesn't know which path to take back up. He says he could go the easy route and team up with his friends, but maybe this time he should go it alone. Because he got a second chance. Mm-hmm. Babyface Kyle. Babyface Kyle. I'd I'd like to see a Kyle solo run that maybe isn't quite as denim steeped as... Yeah. (laughs) Oh, cool. Now now he's on the same roster as Orange Cassidy. You can't really do that. Oh, yeah. Uh, Yeah, cool Kyle wasn't a good time. No. In NXT. Um, Heel Kyle is better, but... I just miss seeing him in ring. This is interesting, though. Yeah, yeah. Him and Roddy, is is it... Oh, what's it called? Uh, Dynasty? Is that the next one? The next pay per view, yeah. yeah. Him versus Roddy there seems like a thing that should happen. Oh, that feels quite soon though. Oh, actually, when is it? Also, should April? we not be calling oh, it? Yeah, should, should we not be calling it Dynasty? No, no, annoying, Dynasty. Annoying audience. No, Dynasty. That's what they call it. <laughs> like in midwifery. America. Midwifery. Yeah. That always baffles me. That <laughs> midwifery. Midwifery. <laughs> midwifery. Surely. I am a midwif. <laughs> um, the books head out to the ring and oh, this segment, man. Not in a bad way. It sounded like I was slagging it off there. All right, Matthew. No, I know. I, <laughs> Matthew's they, got really anti AEW recently. So, I, so see, Tom. I, I'd got. I'd got Although pretty, uh, apparently he did ask Fraser how he was on their live stream, and he did enjoy. It was a good show. I got. I got pretty sort of burnt out. Oh, and, and we all did. And then we all did. And then I got really sick of the books. Now we're back. It's been slowly just bubbling back. The revolution's here. back, everyone. But because of revolution, it was a, a few weeks that not too far gone where you'd mentioned just AEW. I'd be like, ha, no people at the shows. Ha, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> He was he was he was instantly sick of CM Punk as soon as he came out of WWE. He was like, "Oh, Punk comes out and do a promo." Oh, he's the best promo in the world. I feel bad for saying it when he's not here, but still. It's no, no, we've said it to his face. We've said it. We've said it to his face. We absolutely his face. We need to we need to ring him. I've, I've started calling him a little bitch. He oh, has, that's, a new, that's a new gimmick. He's such lost. a bitch, Matthew. Yeah, he goes, "You're such a bitch." And Matthew goes, "Ha." Um, <laughs> We need to ring Matthew for two reasons now. JSU, which <laughs> was your excellent call. And Ross says you're a bitch. And, what are you going to do about and, it? Um, and we've been slagging you off. off. <laughs> Not to your face. Um, the, books, yeah, the books are <laughs> head of the ring and accused Sting and Darby of cheating at Revolution <laughs> because they brought they have this, their yeah, six Sting foot Sting. eight, 305 yeah. pound sons out. <laughs> but they're going to end the tag tournament and win the titles back anyway, so it's fine. Now on to their big announcements. The first announcement is that due to his actions at Revolution, so they don't come across as biased, unfortunately, they are forced to suspend Hangman Page indefinitely from the Elite without pay. From the Elite? What yeah, the Elite. Mean? So the Elite has a payroll. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and due to not making any of his agreed dates recently, can you make us fired? <laughs> fired from the Elite? Though. From the Elite, from the Elite. Yeah. So he's fired from the NWO, but he's still in WCW. Eddie Kingston interrupts, <laughs> yes, and preemptively pays a fine because he's got some things to get off his chest. Uh, they get into a brawl, though, 
And because the Bucks want him to be quiet, and he's like, no, and then they, it turns into a scuffle. The Bucks set him up for the EVP trigger, but ching ling here comes Kazuchi. That was the wrong word. noise, wasn't it? Ka-ching! <laughs> it's the sound of the rude boy. Yeah, <laughs> rude boy. <laughs> Next time you get a scratch what card. A show off. Tesco, if you I get two quid, you need to stand there and you need to go ching a ling. <laughs> no. Ari sha 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 sha. Yeah, we need to stop and talk about ka ching because I love that. That was such a good show, man. <laughs> so it's DJ in his bedroom. Was it DJ in his bedroom? No, he was a. Oh, is this CBC? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a young entrepreneur. Yeah. What was he selling? Dealing. Ringtones. Yeah. What? Ringtones. Oh, ringtones. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ringtones, they go. <laughs> don't <laughs> don't tea tea cakes. <laughs> no, no, ringtones. I'm just so I'm just so um I'm just so ashen and apparently ringtone. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh he's selling phone ringtones, yeah. Just used to that when I was like at home in the school holidays, me grand. Oh ringtones are at the door, you know. <laughs> Get out. I want some chocolate tea cakes and coffee. <laughs> no, um Taj was selling ringtones, yeah. And um, Carisha obviously was there. Carisha, sha, sha, Tamsin, sha. Tamsin, Tamsin. Yeah, she's now married to she uh, popped up on the Simon. Between. She was wearing Simon yeah. in between there. God, what a program. <laughs> wow, there was Danny, I think, the funny in me. I remember like the set like that, which was very realistic. I, I I can't really remember much. Could you take talk, don't stop, ka ching. I remember more of my parents are aliens. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> what time is it? Right. Um, <laughs> So how, yeah. The Bucks are out there, uh, Omega's fired. They're in a brawl with Eddie Kingston now. Set him up for the EVP, tri- EV- EVP trigger, but ka-ching, here comes Kazuchiko Carter to save the day. Ching-a-ling. He gets in the <laughs> ring and hits Eddie with the Raymaker. Yeah. What? And the Bucks announce that Okada is the newest member of the Elite. This is inspired. This is wrong. No, it's right. The Elite are technically Bullet Club, are they not? Okada's oh, a, I don't Okada's care about New yeah. Japan. Okada's against everything Bullet Club stands for. <laughs> Wait, you're right, yeah. No, I don't think they count as Bullet Club No, anymore, they don't count, right? but at the same time, but it's yeah, still a bit odd. Why would he come in and just... Suck? Although they are paying him millions. Yeah, millions. Yeah, it's like that. Phil Collins in the Tarzan soundtrack. <laughs> I do. I'm enjoying... Two worlds. <laughs> oh, right, yeah. But yeah. one family. I'm enjoying mm. that the books are like... It, they feel like they're going to work at their dad's office and their dad's not there and they're just kind of going, we're going to make these big sweeping changes and decisions. That's very and much, And we're going to yeah. do like ridiculous things. And it's and as Ross said, I agree with him. I am now coming around to it. Yeah. When they first were doing it, I was like, oh, now it's pretty good. I think it happened to Okada because you expect like, oh, the generic sort of baby face run then yeah. something will happen, like a title shot or something. Having him coming straight away as the corporate sort of champion, mm-hmm. if you want, of the piece mm-hmm. is fantastic. Yes, right. Uh, I've seen people suggest that this is going to lead to Kingston versus Okada as his first big match. And which Okada is just which is a brilliant match. Like, kicks him into the seventh row. Well, yeah, Okada will probably win. So I wonder if it'll be non-title because Eddie's got that continental championship. But yes. Um, Stody Hathaway tries to get Chris Statlander to use a chain in her match against Rio. Uh, but she refuses and Rio wins. Later backstage, Renee informs Stokely and Willow Nightingale that Willow will have a match against Rio next. Willow, she just knows she can beat her if she just... Tries hard enough and believes in herself. And then she's coming for Julia Hart's TBS title. I need to take a breath. Yeah, Stokely said that uh, Statlander was a favorite. I've not written down who he said a fav- his favorite was. Uh, he said, Chris is brilliant. She's my favorite. Yeah. And Willow goes, what right. the hell? Yeah, but they've been doing that for a long time. Yeah, I guess they have. Yeah. Uh, in the match itself, though, I thought it was just like your classic big versus little. Um, not a single misstep in the entire match. I mm. thought I thought Willow not being at ringside, like because they did the bit on collision with the good angel and the bad, like the devil on the shoulder sort of thing. Yep. I thought with the good angel not being there, that Chris would do it, but she didn't. No, she didn't still. No. She's virtuous. Yes. This is surely going to lead to Willow getting the title shot and then maybe Chris will be jealous. Yes. And, and then she'll cheat to take the title from Willow. Oh, very good. Wow! Ren- Sorry. <clears throat> Renee <laughs> interviews Timeless Tony Storm, who says that on collision, she'll, present- she'll be presenting the first ever Tony Award. A with Tony an with an R, yeah. So they don't get seen. <laughs> she plugs Mariah May's first T-shirt, which is just a knockoff Tony Storm T-shirt. Enjoyed the start of the segment where Mariah stood there dressed as Tony, and she's like, ha-ha! Yes. Fooled you again. Fooled you again. <laughs> <laughs> One time on Football Manager on the stream, I was doing like a tactical change and I didn't tell Owen what I was doing because I thought he'd just pick up on it and he did and he went you can't fool me I don't know why <laughs> and uh, I just Joel liked that because it's his boy <laughs> making it good yeah. <laughs> Tony Schiavone brings out Darby Allen, who talks about doing everything to ensure that Sting retired with the respect he deserves and he did do that Yes. next week he's got the switchblade Jay White and then he's climbing Mount Everest at the end of the month <laughs> she said at the end of the month he thanks the fans for all the opportunities they've given him and leaves the tag belts in the ring but guns up He's interrupted by the Bang Bang Gang. 
Jay congratulates Derby on the win of Revolution, but says, you are stupid, you almost cost Sting the match, with your big stupid swans on. Now that Sting's gone, and Derby's all banged up, he wouldn't blame him if he wanted to pull out of their match next week. Derby points out that Jay has main event at the Tokyo Dome twice, and look how far you've fallen since then. <laughs> Which is a bit too close to the bone. Yeah, it's very uh, near the knuckle. Yeah, it is. He wonders if Jay will leave his henchman in the back next week, maybe. And Jay turns to whisper something to the lads, and then when he turns back, the bat's under his chin, like like what Sting would have done. He would have the done. The stinger. Mm. The bat has been passed. Yes, it has. God, that's weird to say when you don't say torch. <laughs> but it's um, true. <laughs> <laughs> it was up until he goes, I've got a flight and I'm going to climb Everest. You think, oh, it's all right. That's what you come sort of expect from this promo. But then he starts like thanking everybody for giving him his dream, the yeah. pro- like Tony mm. Khan and the fans and whatnot. It this felt, is my last match. It felt really eerie, like he's actually saying goodbye. Yeah. Which, he, well, he's, he's even said, like, you know, five years ago, I was homeless, like, across the way from here. Yeah, and he like, he, yeah, yeah it was yeah, like a retirement speech, yeah. Yeah. So hopefully hopefully they just stop him from going. <laughs> he did He did say, look, there is a possibility that I, I you know, it, it doesn't uh, go well. But I, 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 think, I watched a YouTube video about Everest, and apparently they've, like, they get 13-year-olds up there now. I've, I've, I've heard that it's just like joining a big queue once you get past yeah, a certain yeah, point, but I it's the that. getting to that point that is the really dangerous bit. I literally bit. couldn't <laughs> and wouldn't do it. So, nah. I, I, you know, he's also always a, he's a, he's a skinny fellow. It'd be cold. Yeah, he's got a big Burkhouse, so big mirror peak. He's got lots of big coats. He wears them for his entrances. Oh, yes, he does. But it was was really eerie. I don't know what... I don't know what they were going for there, but I was just a bit like, uh, should somebody not check on him? He's yeah, all, it is. It he's was, not all right. <laughs> it was strange. Um, but Jay White as well, he came out cutting a heel promo, even though I'm sure he's a baby face. Oh, does, no. it, does it not matter in AEW? He's meant to be a baby he's face. He's cutting the heel promo, and then he's trying to get out the match like he's a cowardly heel. I'm just confused there. I thought the promo from Jay White was back to what he was doing with MJF. Yeah. So just like using Darby's good things as insults, even though they're not. Yeah. Um, but then Darby obviously murdered them at the end there with the line about fallen as far as he has done. <laughs> Playing with cardboard cutouts. Way. Yeah, that's what he said, yeah. Um, Julia Hart and Sky Blue cut a promo. Well, Julia does. I don't know if Sky says anything. Julia announces basically an open challenge for <laughs> Rampage. It was very much Prince Fly now. Because she's like, I'm Julia Hart, the princess of the Black Throne, the, key- <laughs> yeah. the keeper of secrets. <laughs> <laughs> It was proper even. Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> it was good. Um, the keeper of secrets. What's Malachi telling her? No, she's just. My like, contract's really up in five <laughs> years. Then <laughs> she runs off to a different set because she's part of the House of Black interview, which is right, right next. Mm. The House of Black swear revenge on Mark Briscoe and say they'll literally set him on fire. This is really good. Renee interviews Mark, who announces an Atlanta street fight on Collision, and says, "I don't even need any partners." But then Jay Lethal interrupts and says, "I'll help you. We've got history. I respect you." Mark says, all right, but I don't want Jeff Jarrett involved. And Jay says, why not? He's a low-down, dirty bastard, <laughs> which can only help in a street fight. Yeah. And Mark goes, Fair yeah, enough, yeah, which isn't going to go well. <laughs> uh, first and foremost, just the, all the references to setting you ablaze, fight fire with fire. Mm. Um, Julius th- sings Ring of Fire. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Brody King asks whether they should dig one grave for, I assume, Mark on his own or three for them. Why did he say I that? I don't know why three for them. Are they the, gonna... Before they knew the partners? Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, hopefully someone gets set on fire safely, of course. Oh, I guess he's saying if you get partners, then we'll have three great. Oh, yeah, that right, makes sense. Okay. Yeah, sorry, AW. And it was a good line mm. from uh, Jay saying, Oh, yeah, you don't want Jeff Jarrett, but he is an asshole, yeah, so you would want him yeah. on your side. Um, yeah, good stuff, and I'm sure it'll be a hellacious match. Um, I saw a tweet that was like, Finally, Jeff Jarrett's going to show the House of Black how to get over. <laughs> <laughs> In the main event, Will Ospreay defeats his stablemate, Carl Fletcher. They check on each other after the match, but then in pant-wettingly exciting fashion, Brian Danielson interrupts, and that's the implied future match at the end of the show. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, yes. It, uh, AEW mid Whiffery in April. Yes. That lovely pay-per-view they've got. Dynasty. Uh, <laughs> Dynasty. It's a dream match. It is a dream match. It's a bloody dream. I'm glad that's all they did, just walked around each other like a a couple of cats in an alleyway. Yes. There's so many carrots to dangle. Osprey is just a dream match machine now. So it's like, I mean... But this is the dreamiest of all. Oh, yeah. Possibly. But like, man, and you know they're going to have a series. You know they can't possibly stop at one. I don't know, because Brian's winding down. Oh, I don't know. Bernie B wants him home at the end of this year. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, what do we think of the Fletcher match? As I said earlier, like the, we got to the bit where we had a poison runner off Brett's rope, followed by the not hidden blade, the, the 
the, the flashing one. Yes. Um, and then there's a kick out. Then there was a few more spots after that where there was kickouts, and you're thinking, come on, yeah. this is a bit too thick on the old ice and for an Osprey match. But I let out a mass. I was just watching at home, just let out a massive F off for the finish. You yeah. know, when someone hits someone really hard, you just go, F off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was one of those. It was a fantastic finish. Uh, I thought Will made a conscious effort to make Kyle look really good. It's his boy. Yeah, because mm. Kyle yeah. was on top for a long old time, and he looked the part while doing so as well. I like the bit where Will, they were chopping each other, and Will was like, go on then, hit me in the Bristol City. <laughs> <laughs> and then Kyle kicked him in the head instead. Yes. That was really good. It was good. But it was it maybe a little bit thick on the false finishes, but apart from that, you can't complain, can you? Yeah, it, was, you? it was good. Um, I don't really have any more to say. Really looking forward as well to Osprey versus Brian, if and when it does happen. And that was, oh, a very long week in wrestling. Very, very long. Very long. Let's have a rummage in our mail bags. <laughs> <laughs> let's have a rummage in the mailbag um, what is this first one hi lads imagine how funny it would be if they remade the movie Goal but starring Joel and called it Joel tee hee hee XOXOXO thank you Jack Coyle Jack Coyle thank you <laughs> thoughts Joel uh, yeah it's a, it's a great observation yeah. <laughs> it's really good would you still want Santiago Santiago Munez yeah would you still want him in there oh uh, yeah 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 remember when you scored that goal against Fulham no not really that's my <laughs> That's my song. Oh, that's a great film. Yeah. There's like three of them. Yeah. yeah. I've not seen the third one when he's... I think he goes to the world... He goes to Real Madrid in the second one. Yeah. World Cup in the third one, but I've not seen I've the third I've seen one. bits of the third one and I don't know what happened, but they ran out of money or something because oh. Santiago's not even the main character. Is it Gavin? No, it becomes, about, <laughs> it becomes about two random England players who are playing for England in the World Cup and one of them dies. Spoilers. And... <laughs> And Santiago's playing for Mexico, and he's, a lot of it's just him sat in like a box watching their match, going like, come on, you guys. Oh. Strange. Hello, Diddlers. Hello. Mm. Sam, you're All a right. <laughs> I'm going to keep the fanboying to a minimum, as I also have trouble accepting compliments. Just know that you're, you being good at your jobs makes my job as an overnight factory worker immeasurably more bearable. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, especially your longer episodes, because it makes it that much easier to zone out into your conversations. Thank what you. qualifies as a short episode now? I know. Under four. I don't on, think we do them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> on to my question. Given the recent allegations levied against Vince McMahon and Brock Lesnar, it would make sense for WWE to further distance themselves from both. As challenging uh, as that will be, one issue one issue is glaring that I haven't heard anyone bring up yet. The youngest WWE champion ever is Brock Lesnar at 25, and the oldest is Vince McMahon at 54. Who in the wide wrestling world would you book to replace both of these records? I have no idea on the younger side, but the oldest should be a 55-year-old William Regal through heel authority, pure sports entertainment bollocks, and he can drop the belt back to the babyface shortly after in what could double as a proper retirement match for Regal. It's a good idea. Lots of love, you guys. Sincerely, Seattle Sounders FC midfielder Jack Imhoff, a.k.a. John from Oklahoma. Thank you, John. Cheers, John. Thank you very much. I'm trying to find Obafemi's age. Me and Fraser were doing this before. I can't find it. Fraser was very confident. I was like, I think he's too old. And Fraser went, he's 22. And then we could. There was a thing on we Instagram where well, his, his, his mom was claiming that he was a different age. Oh yes, there was a whole like sort of footballer esque scandal, wasn't yeah. there? Yeah. Um, so the youngest will go for first. I I couldn't. I, I honestly did a bit of research because I read this beforehand, and and I was on like the NXT roster page and stuff. Bron Break is twenty six. I know. Like, there's so <laughs> many more than like. Even I was like, oh, even bloody. Let's go for Pillman Junior. No, he's thirty. Um, what? Or like about there? Yeah. There's a young champion with priors. And it's Nicholas. Oh. Nicholas. There's a good answer. <laughs> oh, I've got one for you. Owen Owens. Oh, yeah. Owen Steen, give him his real name. He's Big lad. Si six He's, foot yeah, seven at 16. Lad. Have him come in. Oh, uh, Nathan Fraser was like 25 even, maybe. Oh, Luca Crucifino was born in the year 2000. I know that. Wow. The league legal of the law. I'll go for him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going Owen Steen. Sam? Uh, I'm going for hey, Nicholas. Nicholas, yeah. Yeah. Nicholas um, Joel? Um, oh, to put them on the spot here. Sorry, Joel. Riley Osborne. <laughs> <laughs> how old he is? I think I checked him. Surely under twenty-five. He speaks like he's twelve. Oh god. No, I don't know how old he is. He might be under. He's not famous enough yet, unfortunately. <laughs> um, Josh Morell is that a shoot name? Is it? Uh, if uh, nicknames Turbo. <laughs> if if Uber is under twenty-five, then I'll go for Uber. Um, oldest. So I was everyone I could think of is too young. Ray's forty nine. Yeah. Seamus is about the same. Yeah. Punk's forty six or something. Punk's a bit older than that, is he not? I think he's forty six. I think I checked that before. Oh. Mm. 
Ooh. I'll go Shamu, Seamus. Yeah, I think Shamu. Just, I so. still... Oh, You'll it's... be in that... By that point, you'll still be massive. Yeah. And the most realistic one that pops out is probably Rock, right? Rock's got to be the right age, and he can oh, probably realistically yeah. get a hold of it. But I want Scott Steiner. You did the JCU thing, and, and he's that. a boss as Wait, well. Wait, you've ruined it. Sorry, what? Well, why wouldn't you want Scott Steiner? Oh. <laughs> just as problematic... But, well, not just as problematic, but problematic. problematic. Who? Problematic <laughs> in the sense that you can't trust him with a live mic. Um, but you make him the champion. Oh, my freaks. Yeah. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, every belt match has got to be contended for by weightlifting and stuff. <laughs> It'd be great. Wee, 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 wee. But no, I think Rock's probably the most okay, right, yeah. open shout in it. I hope he doesn't, though. Not not this people would hate him so yeah, much. They, were, they, they could use it, right? A couple of years time, fine. Uh, thank you for the question, John. Next up, greetings, gents. By the time you read this, it'll be my 39th birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Leading Happy up birthday. to the Feliz de Cumpleaños of your boy, I've been thinking of some of my favorite birthday memories, like the time I won a Spider-Man lunchbox at Dave & Buster's after making it rain tickets at the prize counter, or when I got hustled into buying a Jamaican rapper's CD on beautiful Venice Beach in Los Angeles. <laughs> These are some of your favorite birthday memories. I'm happy to say that I appear to be aging quite gracefully. Sure, I might have some grey hairs in my beard and my knees crack like your knuckles right before a good old wank. <laughs> what? But, but black don't crack and I'm thankful for that. I hope you actually are black because that's not okay to say <laughs> if you're not. Do you have any favourite memories of birthday celebrations in your lives? If so, I'd love to hear them. Thank you for the countless days, months, years and beyond you spend covering the wacky world of wrestling we all love slash hate so much. Honestly, just listening to you three shoot the poo is something I look forward to each week. I hope you pat. I hope you patties continue to, to stay chatty and remember to keep your passion as it's brought you such a magnificent way. Thank you. Sincerely, former Denver Broncos cornerback Darren Watt, Darren Williams, a.k.a. Aaron Kelly from Denver, Colorado. P.S. I'm going to jump off a ladder through a pane of glass to make myself feel young again. <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> Favorite birthday memories? Thank you, by the way. Uh, well, Aaron, thank you very much. Thank for you very the, much. 2005, I was 13. Mm -hmm. I've got an August birthday, so a month or two before, went to a cricket match at Durham, and from a pal, whoops, my pal's birthday at the time, and to get there, we had the whole like Hummer limo hired, oh, yeah. and I had such a great time in there. I was like, "Ma'am, for my birthday, can I have a Hummer limo?" And she's like, "Yes, Ross. Yes, of course you can." Hmm. So it comes to the fateful day, everyone, you know, fifteen. What's gonna happen? Yeah. Fifteen-ish <laughs> people come round to my house. We're all stood oh, on the main road of my estate, waiting for this <laughs> Hummer limo <laughs> to come round the corner. And what arrived around the corner was essentially a porn bus. <laughs> what? 15, 13-year-old lads all on the side of the road. And what comes around the corner is, it's sort of the same color as my T-shirt, like, like a ready maroon color. It's got the Playboy Bunny logo <laughs> splattered everywhere. It's got like silhouettes of ladies on there. And there's a picture of me and my face is just like, as everyone else just starts <laughs> laughing, then eventually I start laughing. <laughs> Inside, it's nice, but then you sat there wondering, what has gone down on these seats? <laughs> so yeah, when I was 13, and the best thing was, man was like, the neighbours have seen this. <laughs> Every <didn't> neighbour. <laughs> huh? She didn't realise. Well, no, what she ordered was the oh. Hummer limo. The bit that made me lose it there was that you said the same colour as your shirt. <laughs> just imagine that colour. <laughs> yeah, oh, this colour, it was like, not even like a Hummer, it was like a sort of a minibus, but it just been like oh. bedazzled with like Man. sparkly it's bits of most, Playboy it's bunnies. Like the most Phoenix Knights thing yeah. ever. <laughs> proper, proper. That's really good oh, story. horrible, but fantastic at the same oh. time. Oh, <laughs> that's, <laughs> just, that's a really, really good story. Oh. Uh, all my birthdays are pretty boring. Why didn't he go last? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <It's like laughs> oh. um, I, I just, it was really, my last birthday um, was a nice one because it was a like, nice variety of stuff. So, some of us met up earlier in the day and watched the football in the pub. And it was the match when Liverpool got screwed by the Lino, oh, by the VAR. Yeah, yeah. Good process, that, yeah. boys. Uh, and fair play to Owen and, and Joel and the other Liverpool fans. They still tried to enjoy my birthday through gritted teeth, but they'd just been absolutely robbed. Um, then went to Filthies, mm. which bit live music and that. You yeah. were there. Yeah, yeah. Get a rise, right? There's a bit, I'm really drunk by this point, but I'm taking a bit of a break to like, so like get, yeah. to keep the night going. Sam in the queue starts to like organize everybody into like Groups. getting guest lists yeah. and stuff and entry and plus ones and stuff, but he's battered. So it's going badly. Yeah. I'm kind of, <laughs> kind of like, well, God, I'm trying to explain. He's like walking like, up and down yeah. the queue and Fraser says, apparently I was stood there just like, 
<laughs> because I wanted to try and sort it out. But I couldn't because then there'd be two of us sorting it out. So I was just like trying to not be sick and try to just get into this <laughs> like nightclub and also try and like let you sort it out. But I knew that you were too drunk too as well. So yeah. I was just like, oh no, it's a nightmare. <laughs> Miraculously, we all get in. Everyone's coming in in drips and drabs, and we all there's that moment where you've all made it in the nightclub. You all meet up on the on the D floor, mm. and then we're looking around like, "Where's Sam Driver?" And then we look at the DJ. Oh booth. yeah, I was. It's DJ gone. Sam Driver behind the <laughs> decks. Yeah. There he is. I was, it was wasted. It was the chorus of uh, "Living on a Prayer," or, wasn't it? Or you give love a bad name. You it was bon Jovi, it was definitely. Me and Ash, I just remember I was like hanging off his arm, drunk ass, and it, it was, just looked like Sam was yeah. the DJ. It was, <laughs> it was unreal. Obviously not like not my. Best ever birthday moment, but certainly top three. Really good. I like <laughs> my favorite birthday, I think, is probably where we did Durham, where we did day drinks, and oh, it was just a really long, drawn God. out day of joy. No, because that lad came back. Oh, and yeah, that was, that, was, that was weird, actually. <laughs> Maybe then no, it's, it my favorite birthday funny. is probably the one where I woke up and I had nothing to do, and so I. Uh, I, I looked what was on at the cinema and Amelie happened to be on and it's my favourite film. You do like that film. So I went along and saw that on 35 mil and I've got pretty boring birthdays to be no, honest. No, that's fair. That's, that's it. And uh, if you're listening still, lad who hijacked, who left his own night out to come on ours and ended up sleeping <laughs> with our housemate, <laughs> I hope you had a good night. Um, sounds like you did. I had the well, he sacked, off his, so. he sacked <laughs> off his social to, uh, to, to come out to Newcastle, didn't he? Yeah, he was the social secretary. He was the leader yeah. of the group as well. You can't be doing that. Nah. I hope he got reprimanded at uni for it. Yeah, but it was worth it for him, wasn't it? Got laid. Probably, got yeah. laid. That's the abuse of power. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? He's the social secretary guy. He's the fun time. Fun yeah, but time, he yeah. got with our house, mate. It wasn't anything to do. Oh, is in just abandoning his night out? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know, yeah. Yeah. He was just such a big fan of the channel. <laughs> oh, God, I can't breathe after your maroon bus, poor bus <laughs> I've tried to Google it then, and I couldn't find a picture. <laughs> I looked over and I just saw you searching <laughs> North s- East Playboy bus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you can't find it. I think I'd work myself. Right. Hi, lads. What's happening? What's happened to wrestling fans? This is the one yeah. that we nearly talked about earlier. What's all this discourse about the safety of wrestlers coming out of vodka revs at the weekend? Revolution, right? Darby Allen would have asked about this. Darby Allen would have asked about that spot, had that spot cleared, probably done some kind of run through of the spot, and then did what he intended to do by the time the pay per view came around. Was this kind of chat always happening between fans? And just because Twitter wasn't around, we didn't get exposed to it? It feels like a very recent thing. I think the wrestlers to be safe, I like the wrestlers to be safe, but a lot of the fallout about that spot in particular feels like people are reaching for a stick to bash all involved with. I don't want to read this last bit. What's the crack? Uh, all the best, former living person, now dead, Terry Venables, no relation to John. <laughs> <laughs> Why read it? <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I... <laughs> what a week it's been for the male well, fans. I think I think um in terms of this argument, I think that as a kid I was a bloodthirsty little monster mm-hmm. and I liked seeing chair shots and I liked seeing blood and glass and violence and I still do. I, I really do. I I've, I've got a soft spot for ultra violent wrestling. Uh wrestling often in, you know, speech bubbles when it comes to that end of the spectrum. But it I think over time, especially with the events that have happened through the 2000s, we've been made aware more about how much of a toll wrestling actually takes on people. Mm-hmm. I think that's simply it. Mm-hmm. And more talk about concussions, CTE, things like that. It becomes, is it really worth the risk? And for me, it's still like, oh my God, his back's bleeding. Look at that, it's amazing. But I, I understand it. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I, I do think that sometimes people make these criticisms, not that they aren't valid criticisms, mm. but I think even though a chunk of people will genuinely care, yeah. a lot of them are just trying to point score off the other promotion and that weird tribalism thing that's going on online. The fact we got to a point where cage match has had to just sort of lay it out and say, I'm sick of the, the, the back and forth yeah, review yeah. bombing everybody's shows. Like, yeah. what's the point? I don't know. I agree with the email because does that is a thing that's, that caught my eye this week. It's just the heightened chat about safety and it's like that spot would have been yeah, it's not cleared. It would have been run through. I think, they, I think you mentioned it. You had a, a different outcome for the match. How do you not be yeah. able to, yeah, They yeah, did yeah. a dry run of it earlier in the day as well. Didn't yeah, they? right. I think no, without obviously the, but yeah. I, I'm sure they said there was a rehearsal run of something. Because we all want them to be as safe as they possibly can yeah. be. But if someone like Darby wants to do that spot because you know his pals retiring and whatnot, he yeah. wants to make it memorable and it's safe to do so. I think they had a stunt coordinator in as well to, to go through all Apparently of that. Apparently so, yeah. So if if all that's fine, I don't think fans. 
there's obviously a right to be concerned, but not so concerned that you question, like, oh, it's not safe. The promotion shouldn't be doing that sort of But thing. the hangman injury is a big one for me where it was like the, the big reveal of, of the that. Lariat. When it when it was the the other day when we had Jerry Lynn come out and just be like, Oh, you know, right, like yeah, it'd be yeah, nice yeah, to have yeah. been able to have had that as the surprise. Yeah, yeah. And I think that there's there's too much discourse around it and I get it, because people do just want to know if people are all right. Yeah. But it, it's sort of like you revealing too much of, of, of like it's mm. weird because it's already a fully exposed business right there's no, nothing left to reveal uh, but like it still feels like it's just a bit like you can't have nice things like that because people are just too concerned I, I will say as well it, it was particularly strange the discourse around this spot because mm. it was a, a case where the match totally it was justified it was a big enough occasion for it whereas yeah. if it's a match that's like a nothing throwaway match you often see people say like what's the point in yeah. ruining your body for this match on a house show or whatever but in this case it as Darby said it was like a massive match and Sting was retiring and everything so yeah it's an interesting one mm. yeah. it's very interesting um, we do have one more but that is the next segment so thank you very much for your emails in the mailbag uh, you can send those in at uh, mailbag, mailbag at com, and uh, it's on to the next segment Piss. <laughs> That's what he calls it. Ah, uh, ah, oh, uh, wrist piss. Uh, it's time for Reese's pieces uh, with a PDF uh, attached. So, hello, Joel and friends. Hello. So it's also hello. from the very recent vault. I should point it up. Okay. Yeah, I should point out. Not going to bore you with a preamble of how great you all are, as I'm sure you're already aware of the fact, especially Joel. During the holidays, Mister the Jobber, that's <laughs> Mister the Jobber, that's me, uh, released a weirdest episodes episode pertaining to Raw in 2008, I believe. In this episode, Jack praised the theme song at the time, To Be Loved by Papa Roach, whoa, uh, as a banger, which I agree with. But it got me to thinking, what is the greatest theme song for a wrestling show of all time? Well, who better decide than the three greatest diddlers who ever diddled in the history of diddling? Attached is a good old-fashioned tournament bracket for you three to declare a winner. The top four seeds have a buy into the next round. Good luck and hope you have a good PLA weekend, because it's from the vault room. Uh, Matt from Arizona, PS to Jack, I was driving around and saw someone with a Sunderland AFC license plate cover which read Hawaii the Lads, and it popped me, not going to lie. Thank you, Matt. Was this in America? In, in, in the Arizona? That would be mad. Yeah. Crazy. It is the meth capital. Of, well. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you very much, Matt from Arizona. Thank you. Um, right, so Joel has the bracket, I believe. PDF time, Joel. So across the nation has been given a bye. Rightly so. Oh, yeah. Be, yeah. Me and Ross are worried that we won't know all of these. Off the okay. Title of I, a to I don't recognise, but I recognise the majority. We've got Burn It to the Ground Raw. Nickelback, that is. Yeah. Ah, I'll burn it to the ground. Hey. Eh? Yeah. And Bodies, WWECW. Which is Drowning Pool. Yeah. Oh, I thought yeah, it was the, the Bodies hit the <laughs> floor. <laughs> <laughs> da, da, dum, dum. Uh, that's just bo Bodies. Is yeah. Bodies better? Yeah, yeah, Bodies is better than, I don't, better than Burn It to the Ground. Is. Yeah, the Nickelback one's a bit. It it fits, hey. but it's a bit too right. We've got chipper bodies, and that's going to be taken on across, across. the name. Okay, um, scroll down, please, Joe. Well, no, no, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What's the round one? So centuries by SmackDown. Centuries. The it Fall is Out that Boy song. Oh, it was okay. used for the fifteenth anniversary. I've been led to believe. Hey. Because uh, I didn't know what that was, and then Kayla googled it because she loves Fallout. Fair Boy. enough. <laughs> uh, and legendary role. Uh, legendary, legendary. bow. Whoa ho ho! Whoa ho ho! Whoa ho! No, I don't like either. Me neither. Nah. I would probably go centuries, <sighs> just by default. Yeah, I guess so. There's a theme I know oh, you do to like. See what yeah. it's taking on? <laughs> well, it's not going to last much longer, I'm afraid, because oh, it's the best song ever. Uh, oh, that's making. Oh. I'm having a heart attack. The texture. Uh, cross the line, TNA. I can't think of how it goes. Mm. And say cheese. NXT. Say cheese by NX. Oh, it's Poppy. Poppy. And Poppy. Ooh, well, she's getting through for me. Yeah, Poppy all day. Poppy. I think yeah, across the line is just generic. All right. Oh, that's taken on. That's taken on to be loved though. Ooh. Oh, Thunder Kiss. Thunder Kiss. Down south all NXT. Hang all on. Day. Thunder Kiss. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That one gets through. That gets through. Uh, but no, but down south is the NXT 2.0 theme song. No, I don't mind. It's not that good, is it? Yeah. <laughs> you think, no, it's, it's, a one, it's the one... The colours are better than the song. Yes. Uh, so the, Wait, can I just go down and see what Thunderkiss is going to be taking on in the next round, please? Oh, oh. beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. But he, yeah, but he's been, he's been Rob proper, Zombie versus Marilyn Manson. But he's been proper cancelled, though, so... But it's still a good song. 
It's a hell of a song. Yeah, like the main event of WrestleMania 20 is still good, isn't it? <laughs> no, like, I'm not being sarcastic. Like, <laughs> when, when do you separate the art from the art? Um, right, we've got Across the Nation. The drugs, the money! Um, versus, oh God, I got really excited. Versus Bodies. It's Across the Nation. It's Across the Nation, across the nation dear. Get out, Bodies. Next up. Light the, I guess that's the original. Light the fuse, Light the fuse bring, bring the boom. boom. Dynamite. Dynamite. Nim, 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 nim. Rise up. What's drown, and, drown and pool. Now I won't be the man. Oh, I, I never liked oh, that wow. one. But all I've got left is Dynamite. 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 Oh, rise up all day. Dynamite. Uh, Dynamite. Like, oh, You're actually Smackdown. going for that? Oh, yeah. Big no, song. Dynamite's won. I've lost. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> know Your Enemy, Green Day, which... I'm a ma- they're my favorite band. I don't like that song. Yeah. Uh, Saturday Night's Alright for Fighting by Big Elton. Elton. Elton, Elton wins. Elton, Elton wins. I'm getting confused by the bracket already. What's that going to face? The winner of the next? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, so, uh, Saturday Night, I'll just put Elton. And that's going to take on the winner of Centuries or <laughs> the original NXT game show theme tune by American Bang, a song I'd recommend to anyone who hasn't heard it, Wild and Young, <laughs> which is an unbelievable track. You've been singing the praises of this theme for yeah, as long as I've seven, known eight you, basically. Yeah, I've <laughs> tried to get in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> oh, I'll go for that one. You move a little too fair. Just because I don't like the other song as much. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's the name <laughs> of the Still game. Still not really taken by Wild and Young, but you Centuries know. is out. <laughs> Centuries is out, and... Oh, no, Wild and Young's going to have to go against Elton. To be loved, Papa Roach versus uh, Say Poppy. Cheese, Say yeah. cheese, yeah. I'll go to be loved. I think. Yeah, to be loved. To be loved. Yeah. Sorry, Poppy. Um, Ooh, heavy. That's gonna take on oh, the winner. Of... Coed and Cambria is welcome home. Is that? Yeah. God damn it! Yeah. <laughs> Seven <laughs> minutes long. <laughs> this is extreme. Uh, ECW. <laughs> Dirt. And it's like extreme like the original ECW. championship. Um, is it good? Oh, it's good, yeah. yeah. Oh, Better oh. than Welcome Home. Oh, right, that one then. I've seen Coheed live. Coheed? I only like one Coheed song. Bye-bye. Bye bye, bye, you know. I'd, like I'd still say that, that yeah, it's better than oh, What's the song Welcome called? Home. Oh, bollocks. Was the Suffering was the big one. The Suffering, that's yeah. the song. Yeah. Be, 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 that what one. a happy-go-lucky um, song. Yeah, you seen the video for it? <laughs> no. It's like, it's like weird mystical mermaids and giants and stuff. It's got it's lovely hair, the singer, man. Claudio, yeah. yeah. Good old Claudio. Yeah, yeah. Very high voice. Almost all like a lady. All of the songs <laughs> are a big story. Bye-bye. Yeah, I saw that. It's all about some sci-fi yeah i've got i've got the comics um and they're like comics so this this the original set are very rare but yeah they do comics okay (laughs) the lore of coding camera seems very deep it is um enemies verse no wait enemies is shine down yeah okay enemies are you ready which one was are you? Are you ready, ready for, for a good, good time? It's going to be a good enemy. Yeah. Just because Jordy Bryan's singing no. the show. Oh, God. Put it through. I think I'm going enemies. I'm just going to say enemies as well. Yeah. As you, a huge ACDC fan. You pair of <laughs> charlatans. Are you ready is not a good ACDC song. <laughs> no, it's surely. not. Um, and that's going to be taken on beautiful people. No, it's not. The winner of... Right, okay. Uh, are we done with that part? No. I'm going to piss my pants for a second here. <laughs> Let's kiss. go. Thunder Kiss versus The Beautiful People. Oh, oh, oh. It's which, The Beautiful People. I know it is, but I don't want it to be. It's The Beautiful it People. Yeah, okay, fine. Marilyn's bloody We were sad to you praising Benoit in the Royal Rumble bracket, weren't we? Yeah, we were. It happens. And the link between... Not as a man, Trump. though. Not as yeah, a man. Not as a man. Right. It was actually the father of the air bracket we were doing at the time. <laughs> it was. <laughs> it's, it's time for Across the Nation versus... Light the fuse, bring the boom. Oh, across the across nation. nation. Across the nation, yes, All correct. Day. Oh, damn it. It's uh, it's Saturday Night's Rifle Fighting versus Wild and Young. Elton! It's Wild Elton. and Young. Yeah. 2-1. Elton. Elton. Get out. It's got to be Elton. Get out. I can't believe he's done this. <laughs> well, he did only go up another round and get beaten by something Since else. Since when was Elton more of like a musical legend than American Bang? Come on now, right. <laughs> Just Glastonbury um, last year. Yeah. That's when it started. Um... I'm still standing, lads, don't worry. American Bang doing <laughs> Princess Diana's Memorial. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> like a... What a candle in... And they said like a violet in the wind. To be loved versus Cody and Cam... Like Cam- a petrol lamp in the stage. Oh, wait, stables. it wasn't Cody and Cam in the Gosford, was it? It was This it Is was, Extreme. Uh, this Is Extreme. To be loved versus This Extreme. I'm going Papa Roach. This Is Extreme. This Is Extreme. No! Yeah. Oh, it's deep. Bum, ba, da, ba. Extreme. 
Um, and Marlon Manson versus Enemies. Beautiful Manson. people. Manson. Yeah. Uh, it is as well. Yeah, you're right. It's unanimous. Right, semi-final time. Across the Nation versus Elton. Ooh. Across the Nation. Across the Nation. Cross the nation. Yeah. 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 By Elton. For what it means to the business. <laughs> 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 Extreme versus beautiful people. Oh, no, oh beautiful, people. beautiful people, probably. It's, it's yeah. the battle of 2002. Either. In fairness, American Bank could have stopped this. Oh, no, they're in the other half. Slam bracket. Jam isn't here, and that should be winning. Thorn in your eye. Thorn in your eye should be. Oh, Thorn oh, in your oh, eye is oh, the oh. best they ever did. Yeah, yeah, actually, that's not there. And finally, uh, the final. It's a real heel versus babyface contest. <laughs> it's across the nation versus beautiful people. It's across the nation. It is it's across, across the, yeah. the nation. Yeah. I need a piss desperately. Right. Cheers. There we go. Is that the end of the segment? Yes. You can mailbag your wrist piss mailbag in. Mailbag at cultaholic.com. The drugs, the money. It's Cultaholics. The question. And finally, the big question. Uh, this time we're going for something a little bit controversial. <laughs> going to get the comments going. <laughs> Careful in the comments. It's a minefield down there. With the peasants down there. Uh, do star... <laughs> what well, Tom Segura, what? what? What about the producers? Oh, the producers, I They're not peasants. <laughs> They're lovely, lovely boys. <laughs> Thank you very much to our producers. Jesus. I remembered who it was anyway. Reno2200, Ace from the Future. Come on, Sam, get involved. Yeah. 2200. <laughs> zero, zero. That's the year he was born. Noah Anderson. 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 And a man we've all met in real life, apart from Joel, Tear of Grace. Oh, oh Grace. Tear of Grace. Yeah, Big, Tear of Grace. dirty Brett. You dirty boy. <laughs> his real name. <laughs> He's telling me about his, uh, his room of cats last week. They've got loads of cats. Ten. Mm. Jesus. Ten. Ten. How do you keep track of which one's been fed? And, I don't whoa. know. That's Brett's cats, not mine. That's crazy. Though. <laughs> wow. Wow, <laughs> he's got a cat room. We took uh, we took Chutney to the vets last week. Really? He's all right. He was just he's been it's he's acting like he's got fleas, but he doesn't. Right. So he's licking himself a lot, and his back legs and his ass, his hair's all thinny uh, and stuff. Right. Um, but he's been given an injection and it seems to be doing all right. But when he got injected, he's such a lovely boy, and it's the first time I've ever seen him hiss. It was horrible. Cooper's like that with the vet. If the vet has to hold his still, that's a lovely lad. He'll just <laughs> he's a you. lovely boy. <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> um, you've got to gain his trust first before he lets you do that as Big, with all cats as with most Chutney's naive to the ways of the world I worry that if he was out in the wild he'd, he'd not do well you get pregnant yes <laughs> <laughs> The big question, of course, <laughs> is, is do star ratings matter? <laughs> Which has nothing to do with what we've been doing. Thank you for reminding me about the producers, Joel. That's well. all right. Um, yeah, do star ratings matter? Because we thought, what's like kind of a one that we've never asked before? And it was your suggestion there. Yeah. What's provoked that? John Cena mm. has been speaking about the old Melter star rating thing. And he basically, well, I'm watching the whole video here, but 22 seconds in, we get the picture. He just said the, the reaction of the audience as a whole matters a bit more than one man and his ratings. I think it's the gist. I don't think that Melter's opinion is worth more than anyone else's opinion necessarily. I just think. He he shouldn't get hate for his star ratings, which seems to be. A, it's not a, his fault that people have weaponized yeah, 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 his yeah. ratings by using them in arguments, which is I don't think how that should be used at all. No, I think what should possibly happen if the if the online wrestling community really cares about this is they should broaden their net and start taking other critics' ratings into account more. Yeah, but no one else does. The only rating that anyone ever cares about is Meltzer's. Yeah, because if you start doing star ratings, then you just oh, you Meltzer rip off, aren't you? I'll just do. Jack, Graded. Jack Ray. Coming soon to the Cold Hall <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wrestling Show. But, um, <laughs> I, I yeah. think, like, just the longevity of Meltzer, like, how long he's been doing it. Uh, I, I've never looked at it as, like, a, oh, like, this is definitively, like, this is the best thing. No, I thing disagree ever. with him all the time. So I, I think it's one of those things where, for me, I've always seen it as, like, a grading curve. Mm -hmm. So, like, I know that if Meltzer's given it a five, I'm kind of like, oh, I'll probably check that out. But, like, it his five doesn't necessarily mean it's a five for me. Okay. But it's just because he's been doing it so long and he's been grading stuff so long, you can kind of ballpark how good something is on average, mm. I find. I, I tend to do that his, more, his with, ratings. more with Cage Match than with Melter because mm. it's more of an, it's an aggregate score yeah. than just one man's thing. I do think that sometimes, <clears throat> I, like the, the one that sticks out for me is when uh, the first Omega Okada match and it made news because that got six stars and everyone went, oh, we've yeah. got to watch this match. And in that instance, they did matter because it actually boosted the profile of the match. Mm. Um, but by and large, I don't... 
I don't think they necessarily matter. I just don't get why people hate use it against weaponize it, as you say, like I use it against him so much. You, you shouldn't use another person's opinion in an argument. It's like, Unless it's a scientist. But we've we've put we've put, <laughs> all the opinion, power, more than, we've yeah. put all the power into the stars, as he said. So it's it's like it is Ooh. like we're getting fly priest fly. fly. We're, yeah. we're getting <laughs> we're getting like uh you know, we're getting angry at him because we see him his ratings as being more important than even he sees them. So I d- he doesn't. He's admitted that it's just his. Yeah, yeah it's his, his opinion. Own, yeah. So I, I, for me, it's I, I just. I think it shows you know. that it, often wrestling as a medium or a, fa- a thing with a huge online fan base mm. is often like way behind other forms of media. In the you know when fans go like, not all fans obviously, but sometimes they'll like say to like Sean Ross Apple or Melter or someone like, "Well, who's your source then?" Well, no one in any other medium would. Expect a journalist. Sure, let me yeah. tell you my sources. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and that's another example of it where like, yeah, you get debate over other critics' scores of things and everything like that, but it's never taken as seriously, it feels like, as much. Yeah. It's more just like if someone does a crap review, people kind of go, well, it's just a bit of a crap I was opinion. always I was always taught like when you did like criticism and, and studies aspect and theory of like, did you study film? Um Take your own notebook to the cinema. You're the guy who oh. knows your own tastes, right? Stop. So you 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 know, Sorry. but you make note of the things you liked and the things you didn't, mm. and you keep track of your own taste. Mm. And I feel that's all Melter does. But we've all been kind of looking at it, going like he's this mm. herald <laughs> because he has been, I, I guess, for some really important matches and that. But like, I think we, I do think again. he's lost the plot slightly because there was just like seven five star matches for the whole of the two thousands. Yeah, that was like rare that there's a, a month that goes by without a handful. He's just enjoying wrestling he too just much. Loves it. We need to make him not enjoy wrestling <laughs> as much. <laughs> yeah. Well, he likes what he likes, doesn't he? Like, he, wouldn't, yeah. he wouldn't dare give an NXT match a five star, would he? Even when you know, well, you could argue Trick versus Mello at the very recent Vengeance Day. Mm. Oh, sorry, Trick versus uh, two and a half. Two yeah. and a half. Oh, that's basically what he did. It was so annoying. But yeah, mm. to use him as a TV guy and go, oh, he's given them that. He's a respected voice, and why? Well, I guess he was respected. It feels like he's not as respected anymore, but Big Dave. Yeah, it seems to have coincided with the tribalism yeah, around um, the WWE. But if he's given it that, I'll check it out. Don't then go, oh, because he said it's that, that means you're wrong for thinking it's yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I did see somebody go after him the other day because he reported that there were racist chants at a show and the person was like, oh, you're just saying stuff now because you've not got any sources. And it's like, that's news. Like, you yeah, shouldn't be racist chants at a yeah, show. I, yeah. Like, that shouldn't be happening. That's Strange. to be reported on. Like, yeah. <laughs> Well, racist chanting. What better way to end <laughs> the Colorado Wrestling <laughs> Podcast? Thank you very much for watching. Ross, what have you got in the pipeline for us? Uh, myself and little Andrew Dingle did a, one of those quiz things that the Stash Bros have made a thing on the YouTube, so thank you to them for not getting mad for us basically nicking their concepts. Okay. <laughs> um, there's a tier list with me and Tom, which is an hour of absolute bollocks. But I can't thank wait you. For it. Thank you to Wade Barrett, who actually sent us a video, asked him for the definition of. Uh, Meet planet, and he re- <laughs> he replied with four um, criteria? Par- criteria parameters to make it a meat planet. To me and Tom speak about the historical meat planets that's in the excellent. world of wrestling. Um, so that's the two things I've got. Yeah, Sam. Uh, I'm just working away at content ahead of WrestleMania, so you'll oh, see yeah. everything I'm on Mania week. Um, I'm in the middle of a bumper length weirdest episodes. I've shot half of it. Luke's editing that, and I'm about to shoot the second half of that next week. It's about a WrestleMania, a weird one. Nice. So that'll be out in the run up to are Mania. You, are you going to do a costume change in the middle? Yeah, I was going to like not. It's just going to be a different, probably black t shirt. Nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, also, uh, matches of the month. I'm recording that shoot now after this podcast, and that'll be out sometime soon as well, which is going to be my match of the month for February, where I talk about big uh, matches that grab the headlines like Osprey versus Oku. I'll go into my opinion of that more and many others as well, including Elimination Chamber. Uh, and Joel? Um, no, I've got nothing to plug. Cool. Halfway right. Halfway through editing that Meat Planet video, so... Oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> I have a great out. time to <laughs> it's, it's a lot it's of fun. A- Bollocks, isn't it? Yeah, it goes long as well. An hour of bollocks. <laughs> Over an hour of bollocks. <laughs> nah, it's good fun. Um that's that's all that's all she wrote. So thank you very much for that's a weird way of it. Thanks very much for watching. I've been Jack from Cult the This has been Ross, this has been Sam, this has been Joel. Uh if you've got any votes for the Hall of Fame or anything, patreon.com forward slash cult the Mailbag and Reese's Pieces is at uh, uh <laughs> oh. mailbag at coldaholic.com. It's not as easy as Matthew makes it look. And uh that's all. That's all. Thank you for watching. And as always, oh, we'll, we'll point at the thing. That's we'll all she thing. wrote. We'll point at the thing and we'll shout "Porn bus." Here we go. <laughs> Three, two, one. Porn, Porn bus. bus.